Well, a very good morning and a warm welcome to Cross Country Day here in the Netherlands. It is Bukalo International Horse Trials and we have got 112 combinations ready to head out of the start box throughout the day to tackle Adrian Ditcham's Cross Country Track. It is an overcast day, but it is dry. There is a stiff enough breeze out there as well. Fairly good conditions for cross-country performances. Now, in terms of the competition, how is it shaping up? Well, we've had two brilliant days of dressage and it is uh, Germany's Yulia Krajewski, a winner here back in 2018 with Samurai Dutto, who leads the way at the moment. Nickel 21, owned by Sophia Russell, 23.6. She has three seconds in hand on the cross-country ahead of second place, uh, American rider Hallie Kuhn and Cute Girl 25.0. Nicolas Toussaint, Diablo Month for France, 25.4 in third. Kevin McNabb, Lara de Lida Kakamaya rounding out the top five. But it is an unbelievably tight leaderboard. Any second over the time cross country is certainly going to play its part. And let's get underway with the Australian Nations Cup Pathfinder. This is uh, Ryan Wood and uh, Cooley Flight. Ryan, who uh, is based over in the US now, comes forward on a score of 39.0. That left him in 101st place before the cross country. Uh, news just coming in that actually Christopher Cease and Totem de Brassi for the French team, who had a 36.1 dressage yesterday, have withdrawn before the cross country, so they will not be coming forward to Adrian Ditcham's cross country track. Now, what is in store? Well, we have got 30 numbered fences. Optimum time, 10 minutes and six seconds. 5,750 metres, the total distance of the track. And uh, I'm absolutely uh, sure that we'll be looking at a few of these early combinations to give us an insight into that time. The Australian team in the Nations Cup in fourth at the moment. Ryan Wood, Cooley Flight, actually the drop score as things stand. They're counting scores from Bill Levitt, Sammy Birch and Kevin McNabb. But... A good fast clear early on with that feedback coming to the team is, I'm sure, going to be massively appreciated. Ryan, who's based, as I say, over in the US now, relocated from his uh, native Australia a good few years ago, comes to uh, the first real question on course, the fallen tree combination at 5 A and B. They're relatively straightforward. They're big fences with a big ditch underneath, but horses of this level actually just take them out of their stride. So he's just under two minutes into the track at this stage. And actually, we're going to get a good opportunity to see Ryan around a good part of the course because the next combination not due out for another six minutes. So a bit of a gap to enable us to really get a feel for the flow of the course. Riders just making their uh, preparations this morning. A few horses, no doubt, coming out for a little bit of a leg stretch early on. Germany lead the Nations Cup standings in terms of the team competition here. That is uh, James Alliston and Karma. They'll be the first combination to head out on course for the US team. And I, I would say a very warm welcome to anybody who has tuned in from the west coast of America, where it, I imagine, is about one o'clock in the morning, maybe not even quite one o'clock in the morning. So uh, massive dedication. Delighted to have you with us. No doubt you'll be uh, cheering James on very, very loudly from home. Good to have him back here over in Bukalo once again. And this is a horse actually that won her last four star long outing. Right, this is one of the first big questions. The first water 
taking the left-handed direct route, Ryan Wood. And that corner at the final element is a real accuracy question. Ryan made that look very, very straightforward. And it is certainly uh, the fence that I think has been causing the most head scratching amongst the riders. So Ryan Wood will have given a lot of confidence to those washing in the riders tent he's through the jokes water over the uh, timber trailer at nine now he'd be about 10 seconds down on the clock which is really interesting at this stage he doesn't look like he's really pushing for the time but he's not hanging around this is the sunken road the step up one stride athletically clear of the white rails and he'll go on to the open ditch brush. Ryan just carrying those 39 penalties from the dressage. Pathfinder for the Australian Nations Cup team. There's a big ditch in front of that brush. It looks straightforward from our camera shot, but actually it's a, a meaty enough fence. So, Ryan Wood, our pathfinder here in Bukalo, making light work of the early part of uh, Adrian Ditcham's track. Weather conditions are dry, quite overcast. So, good conditions, as I said, for the cross country. And the crowds will build and build and build here. It's about half past nine local time, just gone half nine local time. But as the day progresses, it will get busier and busier. So next to go will be the first combination we see out on course for the French Nations Cup team who are currently in the bronze medal position. Jean-Louis Bigot and Utrello uh, de Halage come forward on 38.5. The first two combinations heading out of the start box with a little bit more time, actually, because uh, just being spaced out at six minute intervals and then it'll get much more fast and furious as uh, they'll go at three minute intervals. Jean-Louis Bigot, former European champion, has been uh, around the very, very uh, upper echelons of French eventing for a, a good number of years. And Dutrillo du Halage, a horse that he really thinks a lot of, has been a, a very, very good horse for him at the upper levels. And he's just preparing to go under starter's orders, so the starter will have given him a minute's warning, 30 seconds, 10, and then he gets counted down and is away. So Jean-Louis Bigot on a score of 38.5 is uh, away from the start box. And actually, it should be said, Jean-Louis Bigot's uh, score is again the drop score for Team France. So, back with Ryan Wood, Cooley Flight, who are enjoying a really nice round so far. These are the two big open corners. They're on a fairly direct line, but they're meaty enough. A proper four-star question at 17A and B, and he's through there very nicely. Be very interesting to get a clock check on Ryan at some point because he doesn't look to have been going totally foot to the floor. However, he hasn't really had to take a pull. He's had a really, really easy round thus far, and that really does save a lot of time as well. He'd have uh, about three and a half minutes to get home from those open corners. So big oxer as he comes back to the water at 20. Big drop in here. And actually, Cooley Flight, such clever footwork at that middle skinny. And straight as a, you like made that look really straightforward and that part of the course as the day progresses is going to get absolutely jam-packed with crowds who will be highly enthusiastic so it is certainly going to be a real test of concentration for combinations as they come forward throughout the day 
The belt bank, one of the uh, traditional Bukalo questions that we're so used to seeing here. And uh, it's a real obstacle that you don't want to have a late lapse of concentration at. There's a big brush oxer coming in. And you come up the bank. But Ryan Wood makes that look very straightforward. Cooley Flight well on his way home now. He's uh, approaching the nine minute marker. He's just past eight minutes. That is Ros Cantor chatting to Philip Searle who manages the Nations Cup team program for Team GB. Just see Chris Bartle in the background there as well. Both just uh, passing on some final pearls of wisdom to Roz, and she will be the pathfinder for the British team in just a moment. She was pathfinder for the British team in Protoni last year when she put in an absolutely storming performance cross country. So back with, this is actually Ryan Wood. There we go, just over nine minutes on the clock as he goes through the brush wells. He's a little bit down, but not a million miles away. Here is Jean-Luc Bigot, Utrello du Halage for the French Nations Cup team. All of the team riders coming forward this morning. So we're gonna keep you abreast with all of the action there as that unfolds also. Trilogy large very easily through there. This is a horse that actually was uh, clear cross country with just a couple of seconds of time at, at Po Five Star last year. Has completed at badminton previously as well. Very experienced, been clear inside the time at the European Championships in Avanche. So this could be the first real indicator of that optimum time of 10 minutes and six seconds. And he certainly just feels like he's going up a gear to Ryan Wood, who is very nearly home. Cooley flight for the Australian team comes through the finish. Now, what is that time going to look like? Because he is home safely, clear jumping all the way for the Australian team. A great clear round in the bank for them. And he is nine seconds over the time, 3.6 time penalties. We'll get that confirmed as it comes through. We see the Australian team really quickly on hand to congratulate him. That's Jenny uh, Brannigan. We'll see her out on course a little bit later. That's Philip Dutton as well. He'll be uh, away on course with uh, Izzy. And it's so lovely to see, isn't it? Because, you know, Ryan very much part of the Australian team here, but actually his US family as well, a big, big part of his weekend here in Bukalo. And for him, I'm sure he's uh, sort of welcomed into both camps, even though he's part of the Australian team, his US friends, obviously he's based in the US, competes with those riders on a daily basis, and yet able to represent his native Australia here as well. So. Ryan Wood has got us uh, home safely as the first out on course, just confirming 3.6 time penalties. He finishes the day 42.6. That time looking pretty achievable, I would think. Ros Cantor, the newly crowned European champion. She had a, a pretty tricky trip out to Bukalo, it should be said. There were some paperwork challenges, which meant that their journey was delayed as she heads away from the start box now. Yeah, her journey was delayed, which meant that actually they arrived literally in the nick of time to trot up at the end of the first horse inspection. But they're here and uh, her round safely underway. Roz actually comes forward on a score of 28.6. So she is a counting score for Team GB. She was pathfinder for the British team out in Bretonia at the World Championships last year. As back with Jean-Luc Bigot and Utrillo du Hellage, who is absolutely flying. Looks like he's got plenty in the tank. And now coming to these big open corners. Let's watch him through here. 
One, two, three, four. Takes it on the four strides. You can just see ears correct how much he absolutely adores his job. As back with Ross Cantor, MHS 17. This is a combination that uh, only joined forces at the end of last season. Owned by uh, Deirdre Johnston and uh, Lady Milne's Coats. It was a horse that was uh, originally brought out by Sarah Bow, but then Nicola Wilson took on the ride. Forward four strides through the uh, double of fallen trees at five. Just approaching the two minute marker, Ros Cantor. And Jean Lubigo comes back to the water, second water. And this horse really easily done through there, but he showed all of his experience because there's a really big drop on that first brush into the water. And actually, he didn't launch himself in. He just very carefully dropped himself down. And um, huge shout out there to uh, one of the very hardworking members of the volunteer team, one of the fence judges who's just making sure that the footing is as good as it possibly can be. They'll keep checking that throughout the day. And that's really important because the team here leave no stone unturned, quite literally. Jean-Louis Bigot, Neutralo du Halage, very comfortably clear through the bank combination. And I think they're going to be looking to be on track for the time. We'll get a clock check on them. Brian Wood, Cooley, flight, remember our Pathfinders, 3.6 time penalties that made it look uh, pretty straightforward out there, it should be said. And it would be worth noting as well that the riders that we're seeing coming forward this morning are those riders competing in the Nations Cup. So most of them would be more experienced at this level. As, as the day progresses and we see the individual combinations a little bit later on, let's just watch Ros through the first water. Really nicely done. As the day progresses and we see those individuals uh, coming forward a little bit later on, we might see the course start to cause more troubles than perhaps it does this morning. Watch this space. So, uh, two combinations out on course. jean Lubigo, Bigot, Utrelo du Halage and Ros Cantor MS, MHS 17. Both clear at the moment. Jean Lubigo is uh, coming towards home and he is going to be comfortably inside the time. He comes through the finish flags. He's going to stop the clock about on 10 minutes exactly. So Jean Lubigo and Utrillo du Halage, a good scorer in the bank for the French team as well. He isn't counting score, but he could be now if he needs to be. His score is actually 38.5. That was the score in which he went out on, but six seconds inside the time. Utrillo du Halage looks like he's quite keen to go round again. Thoroughly enjoyed his spin round, Buccalo. As Ros Cantor, MHS 17, the first uh, rider out on course for Team GB. They're a counting score as well. Ros, who's had a phenomenal 20, 23 season took that European title of course in Harapat but won badminton by a record uh, winning margin over 15 penalties when she won there back in May on Lordship's Graffalo she also had a great win at Blenheim in the four star long format there a few weeks ago and she's got a couple of horses heading down to uh, Poe for the five star in a few weeks. So back to uh, Italy now, our latest starters. This is uh, Giovanni Galotti and uh, Billy Hennessy coming forward on 36.2 in 79th position, coming forward to the cross country. Giovanni Galotti is a 14 year old was bred by uh, Donald Barnwell of the Billy Stud by Billy Congo, the uh, prolific show jumping star, owned now by Harriet Burton. 
as such, just waiting to get her round underway. That was Nadja Minder for Switzerland that we saw briefly, taking the left-handed direct route here. Giovanni Galotti easily clear. Takes the flag, but looked okay from certainly where we're sitting. There's a right-handed option there as well, but actually as a longer alternative, there are two big brush corners to take, so it, it actually isn't much easier. And so I think we'll see the majority of riders taking the direct route, especially after the first few have jumped it so well. So Najiminda, 23 years of age, with top jobs to Lisco. Just in the background there, number 12, that is Kevin McNabb, Miss Pepperpot. They are going to be the highest placed combination that we see out early on. Look out for them shortly of the counting scores for the Australian team. But Najaminda and top jobs Jalisco are underway in 83rd position coming forward to the uh, cross country. This is also owned by Peter Attinger and uh, Martin Zack. Nadja who helps the uh, Swiss team to uh, an Olympic qualifying ticket actually in Protoni last year as Ros Cantor MHS 17 coming to the final water. Actually that slightly more hesitant jump into the water almost helped Ros set up for those skinny elements because just took the pace away it meant that she had lots of time to be able to set the horse up for the question in front. So here comes uh, Najiminda Uh, top jobs Jalisco combination that we've seen in a few Nations Cup legs so far this year. Nadja may only be 23 years of age, but she has a huge amount of experience for somebody so young. And easily clear through the combination at five. So, uh, if you're just tuning in here, we've had two horses home safely. Jean Lubigo, Utrillo du Hlarge, the first to uh, stop the clock inside the time. Exactly on 10 minutes. Ross Counter MHS 17 at the belt bank. Made that look very straightforward. Conditions underfoot, pretty good out there as well, actually. It's pretty sandy going in Buccalo and it can uh, cope with the rain if the rain comes. Thankfully the rain has seemed to stay away this year. And may that continue as here's Najaminda at the first water. First rider for the uh, Swiss team remember. Oh now that was interesting because actually you come up quite a slope up the hill to that corner. And Nadja wasn't hanging around. The horse just ran into the bottom of it slightly, but very clever. And she took the flag, but looked to be absolutely fine. Very athletically through the sunken road as well. The sunken road comes up at about three and a half minutes minute marker is just after this next uh, ditch and brush so Ros Cantor just has one fence left to go with MHS 17 as Najiminda sees an absolute flyer there and uh, is really pushing for the time so back to Ros Cantor MHS 17 she checks her watch and actually eases off slightly so this uh, looks a little bit like Roz is pretty comfortable on the time. She jumps the last and yep, she looks just an extra double check, but she uh, canters home comfortably 10 seconds inside. So Roz Canter gets the British team off to a great start. She will uh, stay on that score going forward. 28.6 is her score going forward to the jumping. and gets the first uh, clear round in the bag for the British team. Now, Nikolai Aldinger for Germany. Pathfinder for the German team who lead the way here. 
31.3 is his score, and this is a counting score for the German team. The German team collectively have six seconds in hand of the British squad in second. As uh, Giovanni Galotti, Billy Hennessy back to the final water. It's a new ride for him. Oh, he was way off that uh, penultimate part of the combination, but actually he uh, kept his body position really secure and the horse found that fifth leg and helped him out. And that is exactly what you need sometimes. So next to come forward is uh, Sam Watson, the first of the uh, Irish combinations. They'll be out of the start box in just a moment. Giovanni Glossy taking a slightly wider route. Has he run himself into bother? Oh, he got out of jail there. Giovanni Galotti just took the wider route and he looked for a moment like he might have just lost his line, but absolutely showed Billy Hennessy the flags and the horse picked up for him beautifully. Nikolai Oldinger, Timo, really easily through that first water. That would have given a lot of confidence back to the rest of the riders actually watching these first few through that water they've made it look straightforward so Balliniti Rocket Man and Sam Watson underway this horse stepping up to the four star long level for the very first time owned by Sam alongside his wife Sparkles who won best turned out at the first horse inspection hugely deserved the teams behind all of these horses do an incredible incredible job as Nikolai Oldinger and Timo. Coming to the sunken road. No problems at all through there. So Nikolai Aldinger and Timo come here having been at top 15 at Blenheim last year in their last four star long format. And back to Najiminda, top jobs at Jalisco. All clear at the moment. We've had two home inside the time. Giovanni Galotti and Billy Hennessy is safely through the finish as well. Looks like there might be some time penalties there. We'll confirm that for you in just a second. But he is uh, safely home for the Italian team. Najiminda at the final water. Big ox up on the mim clips at the top of the hill. Oh, and she actually came in with quite a lot of impulsion to that big drop in. And uh, just lost their balance slightly, but she managed to uh, sit tight and actually rides very positively on the exit. Yeah, so Giovanni Ugolotti round in uh, 10 minutes 43, 14.8 time penalties. He goes forward to the jumping on a score of 51.0. Um, but uh, one thing that would be, I'm sure, very much in the back of Giovanni's mind is a big qualifying run for the Olympics next year with this horse. So perhaps wasn't totally pushing for the time today. Who knows? But he's certainly got a clear round in the cross country under his belt. So all eyes will turn to them tomorrow in the final show jumping phase, which, of course, we will show for you on uh, Clip My Horse and FEI.TV. Sam Watson. Ali Neaty Rocketman just having a little bit of a look at that first water. But straight as a die out over the corner. Sam, who's ridden on 11 major championship teams for Ireland, actually has more top level international wins than any other Irish rider in the last 15 years as well. That was that moment, actually, for Najiminda. Top Jobs Jalisco. Top Jobs Jalisco did a very good job there. You need your horse to help you out occasionally, and he popped Nadja back in the saddle and then got himself out of a uh, tricky distance at the first part of those skinnies. So, Nikolai Oldinger, Timo, the first of the uh, German team. Germany, remember, leading the Nations Cup. 
but uh, collectively as a squad, they've only got six seconds in hand of Team GB. So certainly a fast clear from their pathfinder would set them up in good stead. Now Jaminda, top jobs, Jalisco is home. She's going to be close to the time, but she's going to stop the clock inside. So uh, Najiminda and top jobs Jalisco will go forward to the jumping on that score of uh, 36.7. Just quickly undoing her air, her air vest or her air jacket, or her vest jacket, whichever it may be. Uh, now we turn our attentions to Marlin Josefsson, the first of the Swedish uh, Nations Cup team. Marlip rides Golden Midnight, comes forward on a score of 40.0 in 106th place coming forward to the cross country. Golden Midnight owned by Karen Berglund. As Nikolai Oldinger. Timo at the second water. That distance is coming up quite interestingly, actually, for a few combinations, and the horses are really actually working hard to figure it out, but doing so very, very well. So uh, he's safely through there. Next away will be Althea Bleakman, Grand Cord, just being led round down at the start. Everybody has that sort of process that they go through down at the start. Some riders prefer to be led into the start box with their horses. That's what works for them. Others are uh, happy to go in themselves. It's all about keeping the horses calm, focused. That's Andy Heffernan there, just uh, to the right of the screen in the Dutch jacket, the chef to keep for the Dutch team. Timed to perfection. Althea Bleekman and Grand Cord underway. Pathfinders for the Dutch team here. And let's uh, just remind ourselves that where the Dutch team are. 101.0 in seventh in the team standings. And Althea Bleekman, their current drop score. So uh, we'd still like to see her home safely clear and inside the time. But it won't affect her score at the moment if she isn't. So, Nikolai Aldinger and Timo are nearly home. Sam Watson, Balinisi, Rocketman, halfway round their cross country trip. Marlin Josephson and Golden Midnight are on course. We've rejoined them now. Early ish part of their track. Adrian Ditcham, the course designer, has really made the course flow a little bit more this year. So Nikolai Oldinger, Timo, he bunches the air and he looks to be three seconds over the time cross country. We'll get that confirmed for you when it comes through. But he is home safely. That is right. 1.2 time penalties, 32.5 is uh, his score that he will take forward to the jumping tomorrow. So a good score on the uh, scorecard for the German team. And they actually have the luxury of uh, another score. Their drop score is 31.5, so they can actually go back to that if they wish to do so. Or well, they will be counting that at the moment. Sam Watson, Balinisi Rocketman. Ah, just runs past the skinny in the water. And he's going to come round very quickly onto the slightly longer route. Just uh, picking up the 20 penalties there, and then he's back on track. And safely through the rest of the combination. So Sam Watson, Balinisi, Rocketman, picking up 20 penalties out on course. As they now head towards the latter part of their round. Ooh, just left a leg almost there. Sam had to really sit tight. As uh, next to go, that is James Alliston and Karma. Pathfinders for the Land Rover US eventing team. James, who's based out on the west coast 
of America. Has a really good team of horses out there. Runs the yard alongside his wife, Helen, who herself a, a very, very good upper level event rider. And uh, he heads out of the start box. So James Alliston and Karma on their way. The US team. A little bit way uh, down the order in the nation's cup standings after the first phase. 106.2 their team score. As we go to Althea Bleakman in the first water with Grand Cord. And pops through there very neatly. Good job from Althea Bleakman through that combination. Sunken Road. Sam Watson is very nearly home with Balinese Rocketman. We've got Golden Midnight and Marlin Josephson out on course as well. Althea Bleakman just gives a grand cord a bit of a reminder after that uh, skinny ditch and brush. There's Marlin Josephson, Golden Midnight at the water. Oh, sit tight! Didn't expect to see the water for the second time. <laughs> really slammed on the brakes for a moment. And I thought Marlin was going to be caught off guard and just pop out the front. But thankfully, Golf Midnight popped her back in the saddle. Here's Sam Watson, Balinese rocket man, heading towards home. That uh, had that unfortunate 20 penalties in the uh, water. But Balinese rocket man finishing full of running. So they are home safely. And uh, we'll see the next of the Irish combinations uh, out on course a little bit later. That will be Robbie Kearns, Ballyvillane, OBOS. Next to go, Jarno Verwimp, Kyber van der Jommerheide for the Belgian team. That's Marlin Josephson at the belt. Really hugging the red flag there. Oof. And uh, used that bit of brush on top of that final element to her advantage. And here is James Alliston, Karma, the first water, taking the left handed route. There's the horse jumped really nicely out over that corner that actually won the four star long format Rebecca Farm. One of 10 horses in the field that have actually won at this level previously. easily James actually grew up in Gloucestershire in England and has lived over in the US for many 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 years now nicely through the sunken road both of those rails on MIM devices actually so far nobody's rattled them here is Kaiba van der Jommerheide, Jano Verwimp for the Belgian team. They come forward on 38.3. Belgians uh, runaway leaders in the Nations Cup standings this year. Can't be uh, overtaken in terms of the overall series here this weekend. If they can improve, well, if they can finish on the podium, they'll extend their lead as well. Oh, Althea Bleakman! runs into difficulty at the first of those open corners just ducks out to the right hand side watch her come round again and no the horse ducks out to the right once more Didn't get to see this again actually so she jumps the ox up a little bit disunited around the turn. The horse, you can actually see right eye actually already looking out the side door, but very unfortunate for them. And uh, it'll be interesting to see whether she elects to come round for a third and final attempt or whether she does elect to call it a day. 
Marlin Josefsson and Golden Midnight for the uh, Swedish uh, Nations Cup team. Quick check of the watch. And again, she's not hurrying too quickly. Goes on through the finish. And uh, looks like a round judge to perfection. Finishes dot on 10 minutes and five. So uh, on a score of 40.0. That will be a score locked in for the Swedish team as things stand at the moment. Well, if you're just tuning in to us here in Buccalo, a very warm welcome to you. Kevin McNabb next to get out of the start box with Miss Pepperpot, the highest placed accommodation that we have seen so far this morning. And uh, just getting confirmation that actually Althea Bleakman Grand Cord retiring after two refusals down at the open corners at 17. So uh, the Dutch down to three riders in their uh, Nations Cup team now. We're on the first rotation of team riders, about to start the second because Australia drawn first of the 12 nations in the uh, Nations Cup competition here this weekend. Miss Pepperpot, owned by Becky Stones, by Peppermill, the uh, wonderful sire at uh, Excel in pure show jumping with John Whitaker in the plate. It was a new ride for Kevin a couple of years ago. Uh, formerly produced by Caroline Harris as uh, James Alliston and Karma coming to the open corners in just a moment. He's just having to work quite hard to get Karma back to him and he's going to have to just watch this line. She does come back to him here. She saw the flags and was happy to go between them. They know each other so, so well, this combination. She's a really feisty little mare. And they come to the water now. Oh, big jump in. It's a big shot. That first skinny. And actually, James really made a decision there because he knew he was going to find those two strides a little bit long. So he really pushed on for them. And the mare came up for him very well. Kevin McNabb, Miss Pepperpot, at the early part of their round. This is a counting score for Australia. We're just getting confirmation. Althea Bleakman, Grand Court, who had those problems at the open corners, they actually had three refusals there. So that was elimination as opposed to two and a retirement. That's just been confirmed. Kevin McNabb positively over the fallen trees. There's some big ditches under those fallen trees. At five, there's back to uh, Jano Verwimp. Kai van der Jommerheide. Oh, really jumped up the step and actually made that one stride quite tight. But the horse was very clever with his footwork. Kai van der Jommerheide on a score of uh, 38.3. The Belgium team in sixth. And this is actually the Belgian drop score at the moment. Oh, big ditch in front of that ditch and brush. And a slightly green jump, perhaps. As James Alliston and Karma. No problems for them at the belt. So uh, they're well on their way towards the main arena now. They've got those angled uh, houses in the main arena. They're uh, just uh, approaching the nine minute marker in a second. 10 minutes and six seconds, remember that optimum time. And uh, we've certainly seen it be uh, quite achievable so far this morning. Kevin McNabb, Miss Pepperpot. No problems for them through the combination. As away goes Janelle Price, Senor Crocodillo for the New Zealand team. New Zealand just with three riders in their team. So every score must count for them. 27.6 and in an individual eighth place position coming out on the cross country for Janelle. Kevin McNabb, who was part of that individual, a part of that team silver medal, I should say, for Australia in the Tokyo Olympic Games. And this would be a horse that he would very much be targeting, I'm sure, 
at the Olympic Games in Paris next summer. James Alliston and Karma absolutely flying home. The fastest that we have seen so far. Comfortably inside the time by some 20 seconds. And they will stay on their score of 35.9 for the US team. So uh, James Alliston and Karma home safely. And a good round from the duo. It was the accounting score for the US team in terms of the Nations Cup competition. So uh, that gets locked in for the show jumping tomorrow. Jarno Verwemp, one of Belgium's brightest young talents, just 23 years of age. And actually building a good string of upper level horses. Oh, had to work. Oh, had to, I was just going to say, had to work hard to try and get his line there. The horse didn't seem to realise that there was going to be a fence and uh, didn't lock on to it. It's such a tricky obstacle to come back to because once they found that exit route, you just see here, look, the horse doesn't quite understand. They lose their balance coming around the turn slightly. And unfortunately, that looks like their day has ended. So two refusals for Jarno, Kaiba van der Jommerheide, and actually electing to call it a day. So first team rider for both the uh, Dutch and the Belgian squads have retired. Janelle Price, Senor Crocodillo. It's a horse that is owned by uh, Joe and Alex Giannamore who also own Tim Price's uh, five-star campaign of Itali, who actually was on the podium at Burley this year and last year. Next to go for the French team, Maxime Livio, Appy de la Bain. This is uh, certainly an important round for the French, an important round in terms of the individual leaderboard as well, because in ninth overnight, Maxime Livio on a score of 28.0. Appy de la Bear, another of those horses in the field to have won at this level previously. And Maxime will very much be looking to try and make his mark on uh, a potential squad selection for the uh, Olympic Games in Paris next year. Janelle Price out on course, but Maxime Livio and uh, Appy Dulibert right at the uh, early part of their round. And actually, course designer Adrian Ditcham has been quite kind at the early part of the round because he gives them a few opportunities to really settle into their rhythm. There's Janelle Price, Senor Crocodillo. Coming. to the sunken road. Easily done through that. Janelle, two horses in this field. She'll come forward as an individual with Clever Louis later. All of the individual accommodations coming forward after the team rotations of riders have been. Senor Crocodillo actually won the four-star shorts over in Kililki earlier on this summer. Went very well at Blenheim in the eight nine year old class as well. That's Kevin McNabb, Miss Pepperpot. At the final water. Oh! Now, can he pull it back? He is working out his options, and I think he is going to pick up a technical 20 penalties because he's crossed behind the fence that he was going to take, and actually, he's going to come back and jump through the direct route anyway. No, he hasn't. Okay, we'll wait for the official scoreboard to confirm. My understanding of the rules is he's crossed behind an element that he has not yet jumped and therefore will be given a technical 20 penalties. But uh, let's leave it to the officials to confirm. Um, really well recovered from a moment where he could have been going for an early bath. So, next to come forward for the British team, it is Caroline Harris and uh, D-Day. Caroline who comes forward in the Nations Cup team for Team GB. And D-Date, 
who lie in the moment in 32nd place. 31.7 is their score coming forward. They are a yep. counting. They're not a counting score, beg your pardon. They're the drop score for the British team. D-Day went so well at Blenheim in the uh, prolific eight and nine-year-old class to finish in uh, fourth place. And just getting confirmation, Kevin McNabb has been awarded 20 penalties down at the water, as we thought. And that takes him out of contention in terms of the individual standings. It's going to affect uh, Australia's score significantly as well. They're now going to be counting Ryan Wood and Cooley Flights score so we'll come on to how that looks a little bit later on as Caroline Harris and D-Day all of these hospitality areas as the day progresses will get busier and busier here in Bukalo 60,000 people expected to attend over the event and the majority of those are this weekend Kevin McNabb actually electing to take a longer route at the bank So uh, just playing it safe now, looking to get the horse home. So plenty of drama here as we go back to Maxime Livio. Happy de la Bear for the French team. France in third after the first phase in the Nations Cup competition. And this is one of their counting scores. So 28.0 as Janelle Price, Senor Crocodillo, coming to the final water. Really well ridden through there. As good as any that we've seen throughout the day. So uh, Kevin McNabb missed Pepperpot. Just the last to go. And uh, they are safely home, having that unfortunate 20 penalties, though, at the final water. He did very, very well to stay on board, but unfortunately wasn't able to regather himself in time to be able to get away without penalty. So 51.6 will now become a drop score for the Australian team. They will now count the score of Ryan Wood and Cooley Flight. So that is going to affect the Australian team standings. It actually drops them down to 10th place from 5th. Moves New Zealand up into 4th. But actually, they're going to drop out of 4th as well because Janelle Price, who has travelled beautifully with Senor Crocodillo, has just picked up 20 penalties at the Belt Bank. My goodness me. It was all going so smoothly. And then the uh, drama just keeps on coming. So in the last couple of horses, two of the top ten after dressage dropping out of contention here. Caroline Harris, D-Day. Positively through the water. It's quite a lot for the horses to look at when they jump in. Actually, there's a few just getting a little bit spooky. Maxime Livio. Happy de la Bain. At the open corners. Jumps through those. So, let's just take stock of the uh, situation because plenty of action as things stand at the moment. Caroline Harris and D-Day. The second combination out for the British team. At the sunken road. Pops through there very nicely. So, uh, Julia Kravsky, our leader after dressage, yet to come out. She's due out on course at about 11.03 local time. So, that is 10.03 British time if you're tuning in from the UK. Uh, the leader of those that has been from the top 10, uh, Roz Cantor, MHS 17, clear 10 seconds inside the time. But both Janelle Price, Senor Crocodillo, and uh, Kevin McNabb, Miss Pepperpot, picking up 20 penalties, taking them out of contention. Oh, and now, and now Maxime Livio and Appy de la Bear have run into bother at the final water as well. This is absolutely proving to be the most influential on David Adrian Ditcham's cross-country course. My goodness me, that is a blow for the French as well. So, Appy de la Bear, Maxime Livio, 
20 penalties. And actually, it looks like he's done a pop his hand up, I think, and call it a day. Let's take another look at this because he jumps in very well, actually lands quite quietly and seemed to have a pretty decent stride to the skinny. But the horse just ducked out the left-hand side. So Janelle Price, Senor Crocodillo is home, carrying 20 penalties. There's going to be some time penalties there to add as well. The second of the French riders has is not going to come through the finish flag. So uh, they will now count jean luc Bigot's score and uh, Utrillo du Halage. So who is going to benefit from that in terms of the team standings? Because France, New Zealand and Belgium have all had trouble. France still hold on to third, counting at the moment Maxime's score. So Belgium actually the team that are moving up but they've got three horses left to run and they will all count in terms of scores sweden also in a position to capitalize okay back to umberto riva our latest startup for italy with falcon sun heap z comes forward on 32.6 that left him in 43rd place after the dressage but unbelievably close to be fair because still within a rail of the top 10. That's 10 seconds on the cross country. That rattled the mim clip, the first element. You can actually keep moving to that sunken road pretty well because it's quite wide. There's a lot to aim at. As away goes Roxanne Gonfar for uh, Switzerland. Galaxier du Filiance, 38.1, their starting score in 95th place after dressage. Mm -hmm. Umberto Riva Ooh. had to work hard. The horse just had a jolly good look in the ditch at that skinny ditch brush. It's, it's a skinny fence, but actually it's kind of boxed in by the hedge on either side so a run out isn't so much of a concern but there's a few that have definitely had a good look at the ditch here's Caroline Harris D-Day at this influential final water carefully in sets up well and actually really really nicely done through there so Caroline Harris uh, clear so far with D-Day for the British team. And uh, here is Roxanne Gonfard, Galaxier de Filiard. shamelessly listening in to that uh, interview with Janelle Price at the end of her round saying she's a big fan of it. The changes but out Caroline Harris another to just run into bother at the bottom of the belt bank. Exactly the same problem that Janelle Price just had. Ducks out the right hand side and uh, picks up a late 20 penalty so we'll take another look at that again. The horse never quite locked on to it traveling quite quickly down the bank and unfortunately couldn't get the final element so Caroline Harris 20 penalties for the British team they were a drop score for the British team so at the moment the British uh, team score remains unaffected Ros Cantor MHS 17 of course the first of the team to have headed out on course she went clear inside the time they still have uh, Laura Collett and Yaz Ingham left to go So, plenty of drama here in a Bukalo. It started out relatively relaxed, one might even say. Uh, first couple out on course, no problems. Couple inside the time very comfortably. I think the time is very achievable. James Alliston, the fastest of the day with Karma 20 seconds inside. 
but certainly a bit more drama has unfolded since then. Umberto Riva coming to these uh, open corners, which have been one of the fences to cause trouble. And you really saw the difference there with that horse, actually. He had a lovely turn into the first element. The horse absolutely clocked the question, and they never looked in any doubt. Caroline Harris, D-Day, home safely. She'll be you're so frustrated with that late 20 penalty. She's going to be a couple of seconds over the time, so she was on track to make the time as well. Let's just see how the uh, team leaderboard is shaping up at the moment. So Germany, who've only had one rider out on course, did get that rider home safely. So they are sitting the most comfortably of all of the teams at the moment. Great Britain still in second. And they've got one of their uh, team riders home inside the time, Caroline Harris, who was a drop score coming into the cross country. Uh, now would be the score they would very much like to be uh, discounting. So they still have two more riders left to go. Uh, France have had Jean Lubigo Utrillo du Hillage home clear and inside the time. And unfortunately, Maxime Livio having problems and not coming home. So they again holding on to third but relying on their final two riders. Belgium move up to fourth at the moment, but they have all three of their counting scores to come. So our latest uh, starter is the very talented young German rider, Annalena Schaaf, Fairytale 39, one of the counting scores for Germany. Comes forward on 27.4. This horse 16 years of age now was bred by her grandfather out of a mare that I think her mother competed. As Umberto Riva comes to the belt bank. Just needs to uh, make sure he clocks on to this final brush, and he does. So here's Annalena Schaaf at the first water. Annalena in her first four-star long format. Really nicely done that. But she's a, a very, very talented jockey. She won the seven-year-old young horse world championships last year with the Laguna OLD. Has come up through the German junior young rider ranks. And a big moment for her, her here this weekend. Comes forward, as I say, on that score of 27.4. So she's in, or she was in seventh after dressage. Could move up the leaderboard a place or two with a fast clear inside the time. Clever little trot step there from Ferrotail 39. Umberto Riva has had an absolutely storming round and stops the clock dot on 10 minutes and six seconds with Falcon Sunheap Z. And that is another very good score for Italy. So uh, Umberto Riva will uh, take that uh, dressage score forward to tomorrow's uh, show jumping. As now we turn our attentions to the next of the Irish riders, uh, Bally Villain OBOS and uh, Robbie Cairns, 33.5. Their score coming forward, that left them in 51st place. Coming into the uh, cross country. This horse owned by Richard Ames, who's a big supporter of uh, Irish eventing, but eventing as a whole as well. Roxanne gone far. Alexier to Filiart. The water. Oh! And so unfortunate, just stumbled on landing. And uh, we'll take another look at this. Left a leg possibly, but actually just didn't get the, uh, footing the horse as she went into the second bit of water. And uh, absolutely no way that Roxanne could stay on board. The horse has very quickly been caught. They'll both be checked out by the teams on site. 
but hopefully none the worse after that tumble. Just a little bit of a soggy finish to their day. So now it is the turn of Amanda Anderson and Jersey for Sweden. Golden Midnight and Marlin Josefsson, the first combination out for Sweden, had a super clear inside at the time. So, uh, Amanda away from the start box. A couple of really nice inviting fences actually to get their round underway. Sweden have really moved up into contention here. They've moved up some three or four places on the leaderboard in terms of the team competition. They've still got three counting scores to go, but all to play for for them. So Amanda Anderson comes forward at the level for the very first time as Robbie Kearns boldly and quickly away from the first water, Bally Villain OBOS by OBOS quality. Irish Brad. Robbie really making a name for himself in Ireland. Young rider, really hungry for success. And easily through the sunken road. So very quickly away and on to this uh, ditch and uh, brush in the hedge line and does not even give that ditch a second glance. Here's Annalena Schaaf, Fairy Tale 39, coming to the open corners. and gets the really straight four strides between the two. She is clear at the moment. The second of the German team riders, their first team rider, Nikolai Aldinger and Timo, came home safely just three seconds over the time. So Germany very much in the driving seat in terms of the team competition as things stand at the moment. to just not get the landing in the water and unfortunately an early exit from the competition for the really really talented young German rider we'll take another look at it again just the mare didn't quite get a landing gear out and uh, she's very quickly up on her feet you can see her air jacket has gone off she'll again be checked out by the medics but looks to be absolutely fine as does fairy tale 39 but that is a big blow for the German team as well. They can still hold on to the top spot, I think. But we will uh, just uh, get an update. No, Great Britain go into the driving seat. Great Britain still have two to go. Germany still have two to go. But Great Britain take over at the top of the leaderboard. 84.9 to 87.6. All eyes turn to Laura Collett and Yaz Ingham a little bit later on. So, next away, Yannicka Boonschkei. I'm Special N for the Netherlands. 35.2, their score to get them underway. As here's Amanda Anderson at the water. Really well done through that. So, Sweden, remember, have... Uh, Marlin Josefsson, Golden Midnight, home safely on that score of 40. And still three more combinations to go that are on their counting score at the moment. Plenty of movement in terms of the team leaderboards here. We're uh, in the second rotation of team riders. A couple more to go. And then we'll be turning our attentions to the third team riders in a few minutes' time. So, Amanda Anderson, first run at the four-star long level. Come here having had some good results at the four-star short, though. Top 10 in Babarithko earlier this year. 
clear cross country in Jardy and Arveal in the Nations Cup competitions as Yannick Boonschgaard and I'm Special N underway. Yannick Boonschgaard, who's enjoyed a, a strong season of Nations Cup campaigns this year, actually. ACSI Champ de Tula, the horse that she uh, rode at the European Championships to help the Dutch team secure that qualifying ticket to Paris. Robbie Kearns now coming to this uh, influential water. Another to just uh, have a slightly hairy moment. Now he's taking the long route here, but actually it hasn't been much longer for him. That has not wasted any time at all. I don't know if that was a pre-planned option or a very, very quick thinking Robbie Kearns, but either way, he didn't waste a second and he recovered very well. So Robbie Kearns, Valley Villain OBOS going very, very well for Ireland. Ireland actually have uh, their first team member home, but picking up 20 penalties cross country. So uh, that wasn't a counting score, but they'd very much like to get another clear on the board. Yannick Abunshkaya. I'm special and really nicely done through the first water. That uphill corner actually jumps very well when ridden positively. And this is a really interesting question. We just see, uh, I think it's uh, actually Robbie Kearns coming to it in a moment. Through the belt combination. Yeah, it's a, a skinny brush box and then you go through the water, which isn't actually an element, but is obviously an obstacle you've got to cross through before another skinny brush box as well. That was... Uh, Henriette Anderson, Amanda Anderson even, uh, coming to the open corners. Really nicely done through there. Yannick Abunshkaya. Pops very neatly through there. So, Yannick Boonshgar on that score of 35.2 coming forward to the cross country. Of those riders that have been, Ros Cantor, MHS 17, lead the way 28.6. She's guaranteed to be seventh or better going into the show jumping tomorrow. We've had uh, some drama, three combinations in the top 10. Kevin McNabb, Maxime Livio, and Janelle Price all picking up 20 penalties as Robbie Kearns is home safely. And uh, I'm a little bit surprised that he's picked up those time penalties, actually, because every time we saw him, he looked to be going pretty quickly. But we'll get a, a clock check to confirmed in a second round in 10 minutes 35. So actually goes forward on 45.1, goes into ninth at the moment. Now, all eyes turn to this young lady because away on course it is Cassie Sanger and Fernhill Zorri, the second for the US team 35.1 their starting score Cassie who made her Nations Cup debut for the US team in Stragom earlier on this year Amanda Anderson at the water and actually pops in really nicely, but then runs into problems that the skinny just almost ran out of steam. Jumped in so carefully, had a really nice line to the skinny. And unfortunately got in a little bit close. The horse went to jump it, but just didn't quite get there. And that's a blow for the Swedish team. So she'll come round uh, to take the long route and is safely on her way. The final water certainly proving the most influential fence out on Adrian Ditcham's cross-country course. But there's been a few problems spread elsewhere as well. So, if you're just tuning in here to Bookalo, Settle down, 
try and relax because we have got quite the competition on our hands. Yannicka Boonskaya, the second rider for the Dutch team, through the open corners. Takes both flags, but is uh, safely through. We've had uh, plenty of drama so far throughout the day. The cross-country time, the optimum time of 10 minutes and 6 seconds, is proving to be pretty achievable. But we've certainly had a few high-profile jumping problems out on course. So plenty of teams now carrying jumping penalties. After the second rotation of riders have finished, we'll give you an update as to where everything is at the moment. Yana Kabunjka sat tight after that first element and actually holds the uh, three strides and uh, with a little added incentive of a, a hup, it worked and she is uh, safely on her way. So, Amanda Anderson will be uh, frustrated with 20 penalties on her debut at four-star level because otherwise it's been a really, really good round from this combination. And uh, there'll be a few time penalties to add as well. 67.2, the score they take forward to the uh, show jumping, which we will have live for you tomorrow. Do tune in for the final show jumping phase, the conclusion of uh, Bukalo 2023. As we go back to see Yannicka Boonskaya through the water again. Another to have a slightly uncomfortable jump in. Recovered very well. And sometimes cross-country riding, it's not about how it looks. It's about reacting to what's underneath you, reacting to what's happening and making it happen. So, I'm Special N coming to the belt bank. And uh, picks up for that final element there. Just perhaps looking a little bit more weary than some of the horses that we have seen thus far, but still galloping. And uh, so we've also got Yannick Boonska, I'm Special N, well on their way home, coming to these uh, tricky brush boxes just through the water in the middle there. And uh, reappearing over the other side. Lara de Lida Kakamaya is actually away on course for Team Belgium as well. That's a key round for the Belgian team. And uh, they are both the final Cassie Sanger and Lara de Lida Kakamaya. Here she is, Huni Darville. The only two horses uh, that take us to the end of the second rotation of team riders. Lara has set out like she means business. I think the instructions will be fast and clear, please. Cassie Thanger at the open corners. Really well done through there. This combination have been so impressive coming up the levels. Cassie only 19 years of age. As away from the main arena, Janneke Boonskaya and uh, I'm Special N on that score of 35.2. They're clear jumping as they come to the final fence, but the time penalties are going to clock up for them. 0.4 of a penalty for every second over the time. And she clears the last. She looks absolutely thrilled with that and will take a score of 40 through to tomorrow's show jumping phase. Big claps from the Dutch team. So, where does that leave the Dutch squad as things stand? They're on 105.8, and they still have two counting scores to come forward, and they need to count those two scores as well, because they've already had one non-completion. Cassie Zanger sitting tight. Bernhill Zorro. Very quickly through the combination at the water. As, uh, Sammy Birch is underway now for Australia. So the third combination for Australia, Utopia. The horse that she brings forward. There's a really talented nine-year-old. She was thrilled with this mare's dressage, 29.4, saw them in a top 15 position. They are a counting score for Australia, who are currently sitting in sixth 
on 104.6. Cassie Sanger. And Fan Hilzori. Coming towards that angled brush at the bottom of the belt bank. And still looking full of running this duo. First four star long for the pair. Well, so, a lovely horse, this Fern Hill Zorro is being given a lovely ride by Cassie Sanger for the Cassie United States. Cassie just setting up the best for these uh, the bank boxes. And, brush at 24. She now comes to and the goes uh, through the water there as away goes the second of the uh, three New Zealand team riders, James Avery, rides Dallas 13. This horse owned by David and Catherine Thompson, who are uh, big supporters of New Zealand eventing, also own uh, McLaren of Janelle Prices. That she rode at the World Championships in Protoni last year. James, really talented young rider, very much knocking on the door of her first senior team selection for New Zealand. And I'm sure will be soaking up all of the experience of Tim and Janelle Price, who he's on the squad with here this weekend. Lara de Lida Kirkenmeyer and uh, Huni Darville having a really good spin out uh, on course. Now, the first Belgian rider didn't complete, so this is a uh, counting score for the Belgian team, who have actually got a great chance here this weekend. And takes the flag, but very quickly away. Absolutely motoring Huni Darville. Sammy Birch, Utopia, coming to the Sunken Road. Utopia, a horse that uh, the whole team have very high hopes of for the future. She's been produced very, very carefully as uh, Cassie Sanger comfortably home. There's going to be a few time penalties for the duo. Round in 10 minutes and 17 seconds, but it's another good clear round on the board for Team USA. And uh, that will be 4.4 uh, time penalties for Cassie, 39.5 her score. Laura de Lida Kirkemeyer, who need our view. Oh, not the most comfortable of jumps in, but actually gave him plenty of time for the first of the skinnies. Oh, and uh, actually fitted the three strides in as well. So, not hanging around, Lara. 10 minutes and 6 seconds that optimum time and she uh, still looks like she's got plenty of horse underneath her as well Huni Darville full of running the only horse in uh, Lara's yard to have ticked off that Olympic qualification box and I'm sure will be uh, one that we are seeing a huge amount of more in the future So she goes through that final combination, but precedes the main arena and is absolutely flying as well. So away goes Karen Florin Le Guag for France and Embrelan Darino. This is a counting score for the French team. France in third at the moment, but they do need to count this score of Karim's. James Avery, Dallas 13 at the first water. Taking the left-handed direct route and taking it very well. It's jumped very positively so far this morning. Well, it should be said that actually only two teams have had uh, two riders complete clear after the first two rotations of riders. The United States of America and uh, Italy. So plenty more is going to unfold in terms of the team competition, I'm sure, over the next few horses. Dallas, clever footwork up through the sunken road. 
with James Avery on board. Ross Cantor, the one to beat at the moment, MHS 1728.6. As just getting news in that Lara de Lida Kirkamaya and Huni Darville stopping the clock two seconds inside the time. So that is a great round on the board for Team Belgium. Puts Lara into second provisionally at the moment as well. At 30.4 is the score that she'll be taking forward. Still a little way to go, but she could expect to be moving up into uh, the top 20 for sure. And Brandarino and Karen Florin Leguag. He just actually gave the horse a bit of a reminder, the second of those, just obviously having a little bit of a look in the ditch. And Sammy Butch, Utopia coming to the water jumped in really nicely there oh and just ducked her oh sammy i thought she was going to hold tight but unfortunately just popped out the side door jumped in really nicely and almost went to jump the fence but actually i think caught sammy a little bit by surprise there utopia looking uh, very surprised to see sammy on the floor and uh, you can see her air jacket has just gone off. It can really knock the wind out of you when an air jacket goes off. And you just need somebody sometimes to give you a little bit of help just to take the pressure away. But Sammy hopefully uninjured in that tumble. But unfortunately, that is a big blow for the Australian team as well. They will have to count the score of uh, Miss Pepperpot and uh, Kevin McNabb. Away goes Yasminingham. And Rihi DJ for Team GB. They have been top five here previously. They need to put a clear round on the board for the British team, who have just snuck ahead of Germany in the team standings. Karim Leguag and Brandarino nicely through the sunken road. So let's just see how things are shaping up very quickly. Team standings after two riders. It is Great Britain, 84.9, and Germany, 87.6. France, 97.0 in the podium positions. All three of those teams have had a rider with penalties or not complete, and therefore must be relying on their uh, final two riders to go. Belgium have moved up to fourth. Again, have two riders to go. They've had one rider home safely, one rider not complete. Uh, Sweden in fifth. They're probably the best of those teams in so much as they've got two horses home safely on decent scores at the moment. Uh, then it's Switzerland, the Netherlands, the United States, Ireland, Italy, New Zealand, Australia. Ooh, here's uh, James Avery, Dallas 13, coming to the water. This is where we saw Sammy Birch have a problem a few moments ago. Big jump in. But landed in good balance. Really well done through that. Yas Beningham, Rehi DJ, horse who was actually on the podium at Le Moulin this year. Piglet, as he's known at home. Just gets a little bit of a reminder from Yas. As he comes to the fallen trees at 5A and B. Yes, who was second at Blenheim in the uh, four-star long format recently with Banzai de Loire. Picked up an Olympic qualification ticket there. James Avery has had a super spin cross country with Dallas 13. This looks like a really, really exciting horse for the future was actually bred by uh, Amy Woodhead, his future sister-in-law, to be a dressage horse. But uh, the horse very much fancied to uh, take his career in a venting direction as opposed to pure dressage. And so James has taken on the ride. And uh, we now turn our attentions to uh, Paolo Torlonia, ESI Bethany Bay. 41.9 for the Italian team. Italy, one of only two nations to have had two clear rounds on the board, but this is one of their counting scores. Giovanni Ugolotti just picking up a few time penalties with Billy Hennessy, so they do uh, prefer to have not have to count those if they can help it. 
Yasmin Ingham Rehe DJ. Nicely done. Through the first water. And Blandarino, Callum Laguag, coming to the open corners. One, two, three, four. Goes really nicely through on a very direct four strides, in fact. Rehi DJ owned by the Sue Davis Fund. As that back to James Avery and Dallas 13. This has been a really, really impressive cross-country round from this duo. Dallas 13 looking full of running as he comes uh, towards the final fence. They're going to have a few time penalties, but it will have been a good round for them. And the horse comes home looking very, very pleased with himself. 41.5, the score that they will take forward to tomorrow's uh, jumping. Uh, the New Zealand team still have Tim Price and Jarillo left to go, but of course only fielding the three members. So they do count Janelle Price's uh, 20 penalties with Senor Crocodillo. Back to Karim Laguac. And Brandarino counting score for the French team currently in third. Oh, stands away off that uh, first skinny, but gets away with it. Bit of a safety position, but sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. And uh, he continues on his way. Paolo Tolonia. ESI Bethany Bay away at the early part of the course. And you can see the crowds really starting to build here. The hospitality area is really starting to fill up as well. only get busier and busier as the day progresses so here comes Ambrandarino Karim Laguac very quickly through the combination at the belt bank Ambrandarino actually uh, was third at Montelabretti in the uh, long format four star a little bit earlier on this year Top 10 in Jardi in the Nations Cup, the Home Nations Cup as well. As a way for Switzerland now, Robin Godel, Global DHI, 39.0, their starting score. Global DHI comes forward, was in 102nd place after dressage, but of course still plenty of movement to be had on that leaderboard. Paolo Tolonia worked hard at that brush corner, but the horse responded really well. So we have got uh, Karim Laguag, uh, Yazing and Paolo Tolonia all out on course. Karim Laguag will be very nearly home, but we go back to Yasmeningham and Rihi DJ coming to the open corners. Waiting down at the start is our leader after dressage, Yulia Krajewski and Nickel 21. Counting score for the German team, but the uh, leaders in the individual competition as well. Nickel just preparing to go under starter's orders. Yulia Krajewski, the Olympic champion from Tokyo, the individual silver medalist from the World Championships in Protoni last year. As Yazingham sets up for this influential final water. And Rihi DJ really showing his experience there because he popped in, didn't uh, give himself any more to do than he needed to, and didn't waste a second either. Robin Godel and uh, Global DHI are uh, safely over the first four coming to the fallen trees at 5 a and b first combination comes up at five so actually adrian ditcham has been quite kind in uh, ooh, just giving up riders a few fences to get their round underway global dhi just having a little bit of a look at the enormous ditches under that fence i think as here is yulia krajewski 
There's always nervous moments down at the start. The starter will be uh, giving you your two-minute warning, one-minute warning, 30 seconds. And then you've just got to uh, wait and time your entry into the start box. So, the overnight leader, Yulia Krajewski, nickel 21, nine years of age, owned by Sophia Russell, on a score of 23.6, is away. Counting score for the German team as well. And news just coming in that Yasmin Ingham, Rihi DJ have picked up 20 penalties out on course. So that is a big blow for the British. It will actually move Germany back ahead of Great Britain. It'll probably drop Britain a little bit down the leaderboard as well. We'll come on to that in just a second. Let's see how it affects the leaderboard in a moment. We'll stick with Julia Krajewski for now. Nickel 21, a horse that has uh, only stepped up to the four-star level this year, but has um, been unbelievably impressive. And actually had uh, a great win in Arville in the Nations Cup there. Was third in Le Moulin in the uh, German National Championships, the Mesmer Trophy. Well, here's Yasmin Ingham coming home. Her 20 penalties was at 24B, which was the uh, brush at the bottom of the belt bank. So uh, frustrating for Yas Ingham. So Yulia Krajewski, nickel 21 at the Fallen Trees at 5A and B. Pops through there very nicely. So that 20 penalties for Yaz Ingham means that uh, they actually have to count the score of a 20 penalties and it actually moves the Brits out of a podium position. They drop down to fifth Belgium, move up to second France in third Germany, lead the way. So... Plenty of drama here. Things not all going the British way. Paolo Torlonia, ESI Bethany Bay, really nicely clear through the uh, final water. We've also got Robin Godel, Global DHI, clear through 12. And Julia Krajewski, we see coming to the water for the first time. Very quickly away from that. 23.6. Okay. Julia can be three seconds over the time nothing more to stay as guaranteed overnight leader going into tomorrow's show jumping phase. She won here back in 2018 with the wonderful Samurai de Toe. Finished actually on a record at finishing score on that occasion. That score stands for another year. Nobody can catch it in 2023 20, because it was 22.6 very quickly away from the sunken road. Pop the uh, ditch and brush. Quick check of the watch. Would be uh, at the four minute marker just past that open ditch and brush as here is Robin Godel Global DHI coming to the open corners gets the first of those ah and just ducks out the left hand side of the second so frustrating the problems that we've had have actually been at the first part 
of those corners as opposed to the second. Robin Godel pops his hand up, elects to save the horse for another occasion. As here's Paolo Torlonia, ESI Bethany Bay. Coming up clear to the final fence. Just uh, picking up a few time penalties, 0.4 of a penalty for every second over the optimum time. And uh, they are safely through the finish. So 59.9, 60.3, the score that they will take forward. I just understand that actually Robin Godel, Global DHI, had had an earlier problem as well at the triple bar combination at 14, which we don't see. So that was their second refusal out on course. And uh, that was uh, perhaps why they elected to call it a day so quickly. But that means the only horse out on course at the moment is Yulia Krajewski, Nickel 21, our leaders after dressage. And then there will be a few minutes break before Ian Cassell heads out of the start box. So all eyes will be on the Olympic champion. Brilliant to see so many people coming in to enjoy their day out here. Always one of the busiest days in the uh, Dutch eventing calendar. 60,000 people due at Bukalo throughout the weekend. As here is Julia Krajewski and Nickel 21. Accommodation went really well for a top 10 finish at Blenheim in the eight, nine year old class as she comes to these uh, open corners. One, two, three, four. Actually has to hold for the four strides and pops through there very nicely. It's really interesting actually hearing Julia talk about her dressage test with this horse because they went to Blenheim for the eight and nine year old class and actually scored it. I think it was a 29.5, but she said that obviously that was done on dressage and he didn't quite understand why dressage was being done on grass and uh, thought that it was much more fun to be doing jumping on grass. So it was a little bit more wound up than usual. Whereas actually here he came in to the arena and was very comfortable, very settled. So, Yulia Krajewski. Remember, she can be three seconds over the time to guarantee herself the lead overnight going into show jumping. That will keep her ahead of Hallie Kuhn and Cute Girl, but she's got to jump clear as well. Oh, no! And unfortunately, the leaders are out! They have an absolutely enormous jump in to the water and her chances of another Bukalo title are over. Yulia Krajewski and Nickel 21. Let's take another look at it. Big jump in again, didn't quite get the landing gear out. And unfortunately, no alternative but an early bath. Yulia Krajewski frustrated with that fall. She looks to be fine. The crowd give her a round of applause. She'll be checked out. The horse will be checked out as well. But my goodness me, the Olympic champion is out of Bukalo. And that actually is a massive blow to the German team as well. Because they've had two riders fall in exactly the same spot. So what does that do for the team standings? Well, I think it's going to move Belgium up into top spot. It is Belgium, France, Sweden, the one, two, three at the moment. In fact, Belgium and France equal as things stand. At Belgium, still two riders to go. France only one. So perhaps they hold the slight advantage. But the big news here from Bukalo is that the overnight leader, Yulia Krajewski and Nickel 21 are out of the competition. This is how the leaderboard looks at the moment from those that have completed. Ros Cantor, MHS 17, 28.6, clear inside the time for Team GB. Laura de Lidekirkenmeyer, Huni Darville sits second. Nikolai Olding a third. Then Umberto Riva, Karen Florin Laguag, both really good fast rounds. James Alliston has uh, been the quickest round of the day so far, actually, with Karma. That sees him move up into the top 10 as well. Obviously, still a long way to go, but some high profile penalties for the likes of Caroline Harris, the likes of Yazingham, Janelle Price as well. And uh, that has proven to really 
take its uh, toll on the team leaderboard, which has been shaken upside down, tipped around a bit more. And uh, we're currently looking at Belgium leading along with France. Final rotation of team riders and the uh, final third team riders for a few of those teams still to come. That is Belgium and France out there at the moment. France actually only have one rider to get home, and uh, that is Nicolas Toussaint, Diablo Moth. Uh, Belgium have two riders to get home. They will be uh, welcoming Tina Magnus out on course a few horses after the break. My goodness me, Bookalo 2023 is not a disappointment. We are going to have a couple of minutes break. We'll be back in just over five minutes. Do not go anywhere except to grab a cup of tea, glass of water, whatever your drink of choice may be, maybe a biscuit. We'll see you back here in five for more fantastic Nations Cup action. Dames en heren, een moment van pauze is ook altijd een monument van de flexie. Naast mij staat meer oude Nederlands kampioenen, ook zeker hier in Boekelo, heel vaak aan de start. Alice, nou, we nodig dan. Alice, welkom. Hoe is het om hier te zijn? Nou, ik vind het toch leuker om op de straat te zitten hier. Leuk om mee te doen, hè? Gaat het nog een keer gebeuren, denk ik? Dat hoop ik wel, ja. Ah, kijk. Dus je bent nog goed, uh, je hebt uh, je rijlaag nog een paar keer aan en ook nog een fiets. Zeker. Ik wil nog vader en opleiden. Samen met onze dochters uh, hier in de stad. Kijk, dat is een mooie dag. Dus de familie die hier wordt doorgegeven aan de dochters, dat is de bedoeling. En zonder gekheid, uh, ik weet leider heeft de Europese kampioenschap twee in Italië. Uh, Jan Tien trok op de deur wilde dat ook. Uh, hoeveel, hoeveel, hoeveel tijd heb uh, je jaren al jaren hier alle drie bij? Dat is een goede vraag. Wat denk je? Nou, ik weet niet zo goed in de spelling. Uh, doe rustig door de vader op leiden. We zijn heel druk mee. We staan natuurlijk jaren vooraf voordat ik hier in deze stad zat te staan. En dat is een beetje 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 een Nee, daar houdt niemand van inderdaad. Het is goed, water en uh, de punten als scherprechters. En als je nu, uh, stel dat je nu een paard had, welke hit zou je liefst willen springen? Ja, natuurlijk allemaal hè. Dat is altijd een zin van de start op de finish. Dus alles van elkaar uh, rijden. Soms wordt een uh, makkelijk winnen is moeilijk omdat je de voren slecht op de hebt gehad. Dus het is de keuze om uh, cross van de start op de finish te zijn. 
Je hoort het dames en heren, de wijze woorden van de viervoudig Nederlands kampioen. Hier dus uh, aan het rondkijken, paarden en opleidingen met mooie ambitie. Alice, dankjewel en een fijne dag. So welcome back after that short break. The uh, team here just building in a couple of five minute breaks throughout the day in the schedule to uh, give the officials and volunteers on site, mostly the volunteers, I would imagine, the chance for a small comfort break. This commentator, very grateful for it as well. I've got a cup of tea to get us back restarted after the break because quite a lot has unfolded in the last hour and a half, if I'm honest. And... Uh, Lots more will unfold, I'm sure, over the final rotation of team riders as well. We are halfway through the third set of team riders. Here comes uh, for Ireland, Ian Cassells with Shanbo Superflex. It is Belgium and France at the head of proceedings in the uh, team competition, both on 97.8. Belgium with two riders, France with one rider left to go. Sweden have moved up to third, Netherlands fourth, Great Britain down to fifth, carrying a 20 penalties. Um, the US up to sixth and Germany out of contention with two falls from two of their team members, including, just before the break, the overnight leader Yulia Krajewski and Nickel 21, who had a fall in the water. And unfortunately, that ended their day early. So, Ros Cantor MHS 17 has moved up as, uh, at worst, sixth overnight. But she leads the way of those that have completed thus far, 28.6. Still a few that could go ahead of her. Uh, Hallie Kuhn, now the one to look for as the uh, potential overnight leader. Nicholas Tuzon, Diablo Month are going to be heading out on course fairly shortly as well. The crowd's really building here in Bukalo and the sun looks like it might be making an appearance. Also, it's uh, been a fairly overcast morning. Stiff breeze 
fairly good cross-country conditions, to be honest. As Ian Cassells and Shanbo Superflex get their round underway. 37.0 for this duo in the first phase. Horse owned by Francis Corkery. Nine-year-old mare by Flexible. And uh, pops through the combination at five. Adrian Ditcham, the cross-country course designer, 10 minutes and six seconds is the optimum time. 0.4 of a penalty for every second over that time. And the time has been pretty achievable today, but the jumping has certainly caused plenty of problems. We've seen a good number go inside the time, including James Alliston and Karma, who came home and stopped the clock some 20 seconds or so inside. So definitely an achievable optimum, but you've got to jump the fences as well. It's all very well being as quick as you like, but you've got to come home without jumping penalties also. And uh, that has certainly proven to be pretty challenging for some of the teams throughout the day so far. We've seen plenty of movement on that team leaderboard. The individual leaderboard is moving all the time as well. And uh, we will be with you every single step of the way for the rest of today. And then, of course, into tomorrow as well. So Sweden have really moved up the leaderboard thus far. And uh, they now bring forward Frida Andersen, Stonehaven's Baby Blue come forward on 32.9. Sweden actually on a team score of 104.6 in third at the moment. This is one of their counting scores. And they still have Louise Remarca, Caspian 15 left to go as well. Frida Anderson who uh, rode Box Leo to a great top 15 finish in Arken earlier on this year. Went very well at the Europeans as well. Ooh, Ian Cassells, Shambo Superflex. A very hairy moment coming out of the uh, first water at that big brush corner. pop up through the sunken road very neatly and nicely though islands at first two riders home safely sam watson with 20 penalties and uh, actually valley Lane, obs robbie kearns just with a couple of time penalties so uh, They've moved up the leaderboard, but they would be looking to count Ian scored. This is the moment that the leader overnight, Yulia Krajewski, nickel 21, went out of the competition. That enormous jump in and unfortunately couldn't get the landing gear out. And Yulia, you could see, frustrated with that. But uh, they both live to fight another day and I'm sure we will see them in the not too distant future. So frustrating. But unfortunately, their day ending early here. So, Frida Andersen, Stonehaven's Baby Blue for Sweden. Quickly away from the start. Only two teams have had their first two team riders home clear, the US. And uh, I've probably forgotten the other one, the US and... Italy. There we go. We got there in the end. Uh, Italy, though, picking up a few time penalties with it, a couple of their riders. So that has just hasn't moved them up the leaderboard as much as one might imagine. Next to get underway, Meryl Blom Holzman, Versailles de Viron for the Netherlands, 33.9, an accounting score for the Dutch team. Andy Heffen in there, just in the orange jacket, the uh, team chef to keep. And that, in the background, that grey, will be Nicolas Tuzon Diablo Month, who will be making their final preparations to head out on course fairly shortly. And a key combination for the French team and also for the individual competition as well. But Meryl Blom Holzman is underway here and would be a key player in the Dutch National Championship 
race as well because the highest placed Dutch rider this weekend will take the national title after dressage. It is Sanna de Jong, Global Fairly Flashy, who lead the way, 31.9. But, oh, and unfortunately, Stonehaven's Baby Blue and Afrida Anderson just uh, went the wrong side of the flags and got a little bit uh, wedged for a moment on top of the uh, box corner. So it comes round and the horse jumps the alternative really nicely. Just see that again. Just jumped on and just jumped actually right to the middle of the box brush and then ducked off out the left hand side. So that's 20 penalties to add for the Swedish team, which again is going to influence that team leaderboard. But really, really good riding there actually from Frida because just giving the horse time to make sure that he's got plenty of confidence back and uh, continuing on their way. So see what does that do for the team leaderboard it's going to drop Sweden down it's going to bring the Netherlands potentially up back to Ian Cassell's Shanbo Superflex the double of corners at 16 just a little tap down the mare's shoulder just to keep her straight for the first of those and she's a, a really cool feisty little horse very quickly away Meryl Blom Sive at Deviron are also uh, well underway. Merrill, who has uh, been a massive part of Dutch teams over the last couple of years, rumour has it, NOP and the Quizmaster, two of her most uh, well known horses. But actually, getting some nice horses coming up the levels. A little bit sticky at the second part of those fallen trees. Ian Cassell's coming to this water. Jumps in well. Holds his line for the skinny. And ooh, has a slight moment at the second one of those skinnies, but actually does a really good job in keeping the mare on her line. She's only a nine-year-old. And uh, there's a lot to look at in that part of the course for these horses. They continue clear. So here is uh, Meryl Blom, the side of Iron, taking that corner, the direct route. This combination that have actually won at this level previously took the top spot in Stragom a little bit earlier on this year, finished on a score of 35.7 on that occasion. And uh, have had some other very good top 10 finishes at four star level also so one of 10 horses in the fields that have actually won at four star long level others include the likes of de capo of laura collets global quest of georgie campbell's sunken road has jumped really well so far this morning as away from the start it is uh, jenny brannigan Jenny comes forward with Connery, 37.1 her starting score. The US uh, team had both of their first two riders home clear, Cassie Sanger and James Alliston. As Meryl Blom Holtzman, picture of concentration, jumps clear of the ditch and rush. Back to Frida Anderson, Stonehaven's uh, baby blue at these open corners and she's done a really really good job picking up after that early problem coming out of the first water keeping the horse's confidence as here is Jenny Brannigan Jenny who recently finished top 15 at Defender Burley Horse Trials with the FE Lifestyle has had a couple of top five finishes at Maryland Five Star as well and actually will be heading over back home to Maryland five star in a couple of weeks with Twilight's last gleam in the five star there. I spoke to Jenny actually on the USDA podcast a couple of weeks ago and uh, she was really looking forward to this trip to Buccalo. Ian Cassell's 54.2 is home with Shanbo Superflex. A few time penalties to add but otherwise a clear round in the cross country. 
So uh, that sees him go into the top 20 at the moment. 54.2 will be his score going forward to tomorrow. Frida Anderson and Stonehaven's Baby Blue just coming to this water and just jumps in so boldly and unfortunately Parts Company, you can see her sitting up in the water there, just a little bit quick perhaps, wide on the turn, the horse absolutely launched into the water and was taken by surprise by the drop slightly, great to see her walking away, we'll just take a moment and I'm sure you can see medics very quickly on hand. The air jacket, when it goes off, really does take your breath away. And uh, really, really frustrating finish to Frida Anderson and Stonehaven's Baby Blues round. As uh, back to Jenny Brannigan and Connery. Through the first water with no problems at all. Meryl Blom Holzman at the double open of court open double of corners on the four strides. That's actually jumped pretty well. We've had one or two caught out by it, but actually when horses are set up and given time to read it, it has certainly jumped well enough. Frida Anderson just being led off course there. And she will be uh, checked out, but uh, good to see her up on her feet. And Stonehaven's Baby Blue was on his feet after that fall as well. So, Jenny Brannigan. Really nicely through there. Jenny, who's been here to Bookalo a time or two previously, went very well here a couple of years ago. And it was a bit of a turning point for her in her career as well part of a US team that went very, very well here, off the back of a US team that had gone very, very well in Arken. And uh, she then went on a couple of weeks later to have a very good top five finish at Maryland back in 2021 with Stella Artois. And since then, she's been in really, really good form. Meryl Blom Holzman taking absolutely no chances. And do you know what? She took all of the speed out coming into the water there and the horse read the drop really really well and actually she did a very good job because she really rode through the skinny combinations that follow which is important as well showing all of her experience so next away from the start this is a really important round for team belgium tina magnus and dizzy van het lichterveld z on a score of 37.2 The Belgian team, well in contention here, but this is definitely a score that they need to count. They're 97.8 equal with France. That's Meryl Blom Holzman. And uh, the Soiv de Viron really working hard down the belt bank, but she makes it happen. And actually, going to put the Netherlands in a really strong position if she can get a good fast clear here as well. Sets up for this tricky little question. Right near the end of the course there's water in those woods in the tree line and you come out and jump another skinny. The brush wells at 26A and B. As uh, next away it is for Australia their final team rider Bill Levitt. Bill rides R and H Tom Tom R. That's Tina Magnus. That's the first water. Just had to work quite hard coming into the water there. But actually gets a lovely shot coming out. So as we head into this final rotation of team riders, it is all wide open because uh, every single team in contention for the top spot really is relying on their last rider because uh, Belgium, France, the Netherlands have all had one non-completion and they're all the top three at the moment. So they need to get their final riders home safely. Meryl Blom-Holzman is going to be very tight to the time. I think she's just going to pick up a couple of seconds over. 
but very sensibly takes a pull. She's got to jump the fences as well. Beside Javiron, a winner at this level already, is going to put in a strong performance for the Dutch team here. And she comes through the finish just 10 seconds over the time. Four time penalties, 37.9 is her score. And in terms of the individual standings, that sees her go into eighth on the live leaderboard. Still a long way to go in terms of the live leaderboard, though. Jenny Brannigan, Connery. It's also owned by Tim and Nina Gardner. Coming to the water. And, oh, didn't get the perfect stride. That mini middle uh, triple brush. But... Connery helped her out a little bit there. And uh, she kept uh, driving between the flags. Made it happen. Bill Levitt, R&H, Tom, Tom, R. The Australian team, unfortunately, with the non-completion of uh, Sammy Birch and Utopia and the uh, 20 penalties of Kevin McNabb, Miss Pepperpot, a little bit out of contention in terms of the team standings at the moment. Brian Wood, 42.6, the best of their scores locked in. Next to go will be for New Zealand, Tim Price, winner here 12 months ago. One of a couple of riders that have won this event twice in the last 15 years. Won it with Seca Tinker as well. Wife Janelle, just uh, watching on as he prepares to go under starter's orders. So, Tim Price, Jarillo, away from the start. And this is uh, one of the most exciting young horses on the circuit. Comes forward on a very competitive starting score as well of uh, 29.0. So, a clear round inside the time would see Tim in a top 10 position going forward to the jumping. This horse was actually on the podium at Blenheim in the eight and nine-year-old class a few weeks ago as part of their preparation for this. Of course, that spent a bit of time out on the Spanish Sunshine Tour with the prices a little bit earlier on this year as well. Owned by uh, Lucy Allison, Francis Stead, and Rachel and James Good. And they really do think a lot of this nine-year-old by Dantos as we go back to Tina Magnus and uh, Dizzy Van Lichtenveld Z really key combination for the Belgian team here very nicely done and quickly away so Tim Price early part of his round with Jurillo this horse can absolutely jump very much one to look out for fingers crossed tomorrow in the show jumping plenty of scope Tim who until recently was the FEI eventing world number one Maryland five star winner from last year individual bronze medalist from the world championships in Protoni as well actually got the top three individual medalist from Protoni here Tina Magnus oh she really took the pace away but then actually the horse did put in a really big jump but actually she was well prepared for it and really made it happen through the rest of the competition so game on for Belgium here they have been unbelievable in this Nations Cup series this year they have an unassailable lead, 600 points on the tally. If they finish on the podium here this weekend, they will improve on that points tally because they've actually only finished off the podium once. And that was in uh, Avanche in Switzerland where they finished in fourth place as a team. So uh, they would dearly love to finish the season with a bang. They've got some hot competition from France here. Nicolas Tuzon will be next away on course with Diablo Moth. And definitely going to be a dramatic finish to this team competition. And then we've got all of the individuals to come as well. Jurillo. 
very carefully clear of that brush corner. No problems at all there for Tim. Tim doesn't look like he's set out really quickly. It'll be interesting to get a clock check on him at some point. He's just waiting to get an update on Jenny Brannigan and Connery, in fact, as Tina Magnus, Tizzy and Lichtervildsi. Good work through the belt bank, making that happen. Just awaiting news on Jenny Brannigan. Can't see anything on the uh, live scores past fence 25. But we haven't heard anything else otherwise either. So we'll bring you an update on that as soon as possible. Uh, Bill Levitt, RNH Tom Tom R. Oh, going well. Here is uh, Tina Magnus heading towards home. So the time penalties are going to start to clock up now. 0.4 of a penalty for every second over the time. This will be opening the door for France. But it is still going to be a very, very good round for Belgium. She's just got the last to go. And of course, you've got to respect the final fence before she uh, heads on through the finish. And uh, a good round for Belgium. 46.4 is their total score. So, uh, Tina Magnus, Dizzy van het Lichtervelde Z, round in 10 minutes 29 seconds. Let's see what that does to the team scores. It's certainly going to open the door for France. Puts Belgium in second on 107.2. Great Britain have actually moved up into third here as Bill Levitt taking the slightly longer right-handed route. But actually, it's only marginally longer. And actually pops through there. Works very, very well. Here we go. Nicholas Tuzon, Diablo Month, the second highest rated 10 year old in the world right now. Nicholas Tuzon, former European champion, the only Frenchman to win badminton horse trials as well. His career is a whole list of incredible accolades. But one I have absolutely no doubt he would love is a chance to make. Um, history in uh, his home Olympic Games. Now that is uh, Frida Anderson debriefing with Chef to keep Fred Bergendorf after their unfortunate end to their round. Good to see her all okay after that fall. Yeah, so a big result here this weekend would bode very, very well for them for Paris next year. Long way to go though because they'd dearly love to add a Bukalo title in the mix along the way as well. Away goes uh, Laura Collett, former winner here back in 2019 with, De Cap uh, with London 52. She rides now De Capo and again well placed on a good score of uh, 26.9. So a few out on course at the moment that can really make their mark. Just getting news on Jenny Brannigan and Connery. They had a late refusal at 26B, the second of those uh, bird's nests out of the water and then elected to retire. So that was why we didn't see them come home. Tim Price was classed through the open corners there. Bill Levitt, RNH, old oh, Tom Tom R. Not the uh, smoothest of jumps at the penultimate. The time penalty is starting to clock up, but Bill will just want to get him safely over the last and home. And that's a good round for Australia. 37.0, the score that Bill will take forward to the jumping tomorrow. So Australia completes, and we'll be able to give you a final score for the team as well. They will be out of contention in terms of overall standings. 147.1 is their overall total. Now we turn our attentions back to Tim Price. Now, Drillo did jump in quite big, but actually landed with his head up 
in plenty of balance. And Tim just taking the slightly wider right-handed option, but it, it jumped very, very easily for him. Possibly costs a couple of seconds, but that would be it. And uh, obviously feels that it, it's a little bit of a safer option. So Tim Price, Jarillo going very, very well. We've also got uh, Nicholas Tuzon and Laura Collis out on course. So three horses on course at the moment inside the top 10. Tim really nicely done through the belt bank. That was where wife Janelle had a problem a little bit later on. And he gave what I think would be the definition of a tickle behind the saddle there. He didn't give the horse a, a hit behind the saddle in any way, shape or form. It was just a little bit of a tickle, a little reminder to say, come on, boy, we've just got a couple of minutes left to go. This horse first run at the four star long level and they do hit that sort of eight minute marker where they would traditionally maybe do a, a three star long and they sort of need to find that extra gear and realize that they're continuing to keep going. And Girillo certainly looks like he's got plenty in the tank. Laura Collett, De Capo. The first water. This horse has been top five here previously. He's uh, not always the most straightforward of characters, but Laura knows him unbelievably well now. As uh, next away, it is uh, Evelina Bertoli and Quick Joe for Italy. 39.9, their starting score. And uh, I think Italy, actually, the only team that could get all of their team members home with a clear round, depending on what Evelina does. So here's Tim Price, Girillo, coming towards uh, the last two fences. He's got 10 seconds to get home. He's going to be unbelievably close to that time. Might be one or two seconds over. He was on 29.0. And he respectfully jumps the last. So he's going to pick up a couple of seconds of time, but not a lot. And this certainly looks like a star for the future. Five seconds over, goes on to 31.0. That sees him go third at the moment. And uh, he just drops behind Lara Delida Karkamana and Huni Darville, who uh, currently sitting second 30.4 that is of those who have completed of course still a long way to go Laura Collett another that could really make her mark in the top top 10 she uh, as we go back to Nicolas Tuzon Diablo Moth clear to the open corners this horse finished second at Chatsworth in the four star a little bit earlier on this year Part of the winning French Nations Cup team on that occasion. And France in control of the uh, Nations Cup here as well. A fast clear from this duo. We'll see them go into tomorrow as the leaders. Diablo Month has uh, been at this level previously. Went to Linier last year, finished uh, second. Did pick up 12 penalties of time. But going the direct route at the final water. Really pushes those two strides and actually pops through there very well. As we go back to uh, Evelina Bertoli and uh, Quick Joe, 39.9 their starting score. Coming to the double of trees at five. Big, big ditches underneath both of those trees. Oh, and unfortunately, looks like a parting of company at the second of those. The horse is up all okay. And uh, it looks like Evelina is up as well. So a real shame, but Evelina Bertoli, Quick Joe, their day ends very early on on the course. And we'll both be checked out, but they were both up on their feet. Laura Collett, De Capo, pop very easily through the double of open corners. 
So uh, Laura could really start to uh, make her mark on the leaderboard. Here is Nicholas Tuzon, Diablo Month. And he punches the air with the light, stops the clock one second inside the time. France are going to be leading the Nations Cup going into tomorrow's show jumping. And this man will be second or better. Nicolas Tuzon, Diablo Month. A masterclass of cross country riding, and only one person can go ahead of him. He jumps the last, and he knows he's done what he needs to do. You can see the pure elation. That is what it means to these riders. And this is a horse that we are going to be seeing and hearing so much about in the future. So, France in control of the Nations Cup. Away goes uh, Felix Vogue, De De Lucien. Felix on a score of 29.4 in 15th place coming forward to the cross country. There's a horse that finished second in the Nations Cup in Avanche. Felix, a five-star winner. So let's just remind ourselves of how things are looking at the moment. Individual standings. Nicholas Tuzon, 25.4 ahead of Ros Cantor, MHS 17, 28.6. And then uh, Lara Delida Kakamaya, Huni Darvil are the top three. Uh, cute girl, Hallie Kuhn, could still go ahead of Nicholas Tuzon. She is on 25.0, cannot afford to be a second over the time. And we've still got the likes of Lara Delida Kirkamayas, Ducati Darville to go. Uh, Laura Collett De Capo, well on their way home. So what can they do here? It's going to come down to the final few fences and time. He certainly looks to be travelling pretty well out on course as she heads into the main arena. Capo, a horse that's actually very good in the jumping on the last day as well, generally speaking. Felix Vogue, Deo de Lucien. Really well done. That was a lovely piece of riding at that final brush element. So away from the start, it is the final rider for Team Germany, Christoph Wohler. And a core FRH coming forward on 31.5. This would be a counting score for the German team, but uh, with two non completions, they aren't in contention in the Nations Cup leg. Laura Collett, meanwhile, De Capo just coming towards home. She was clear inside the time here last year. She looks like she's chasing the clock. We don't have a time on her, but. How close can she be? She flies the last and kicks on through the finish. Laura Collett and De Capo are home safely. We're looking for their time to come in. It is a clear jumping round, though, from the three-time five-star winner, the European and Olympic team gold medalist. We'll see her a little bit later. And look at that. So, saying 30.9. We'll just get confirmation. And it is going to be a couple of seconds over the time. That is correct. Four time penalties. So, uh, round in 10, 16, 30.9. Does drop her a few places on the leaderboard. Goes behind Ros Cantor. Goes behind uh, Laura de Lida Kirkamaya. Tilly Hughes, Laura's head girl, very quickly on hand to uh, help attend to uh, Cal, as he's known at home, as Christoph Fawler. Decor FRH. Very quickly underway not hanging around this duo at all and he really rides for the distance in between those two big uh, trichanas so what does that do in terms of the team standings well France guaranteed top spot going forward to uh, tomorrow 97.8 is their score that is locked in Belgium with still one rider left to go on 107.9, currently sitting in second. The Netherlands with one rider left to go, 109.8, sitting in third. Uh, the US are actually in fourth, and they also have Philip Dutton left to go. Uh, Great Britain locked in fifth or better, 111.2. So time penalties for Belgium, Netherlands, and the US are going to be really influential. New Zealand actually moving back up to uh, 
sixth, courtesy of that very good round from Tim Price. Christoph Wohler, who was part of the German team, take Team Silver, the Europeans, in Haradapan this summer, also part of the German team that won Team Gold in Protoni last year. And it's good to see Christoph with, with some more horsepower coming up the levels because Karyatan S has long been his sort of top ride. As away from the start, it is uh, Claire Abbott and Julint, the final combination for Ireland, coming forward on 31.6. So we're in this final rotation of team riders before we uh, move on to the individual riders. Still uh, a good way to go. Hallie Kuhn, the only person that could overhaul Nicholas Tuzon on top of the leaderboard, due to go at 20 to 2 European times. That is 20 to 1 uh, British time. Felix Volk, Teo De Lucian, just got a little bit close to that box before the open corners. But actually, popped through both of those without any trouble at all. Plenty of scope, this horse. Claire Abbott and Julent. There's a horse that uh, was so, so impressive at badminton last year. Just 10 seconds over the time unfortunately wasn't able to present on the final day and actually has had a bit of time off since but so good to see them back big jump in but actually manages to get the landing brave from Felix Vogue Deo de Lucien and actually some clever footwork from the horse at those final two efforts and this belt bank comes up pretty quickly as well. This caused quite a few problems. It's had some notable scalps. And actually, Felix taking a slightly longer route. And uh, not the most comfortable of jumps at the brush at the final element, but he, he got away with it. A few spectators diving for uh, a safer spot. And there's so many people here in Buccalow today. The sun has come out. It is wonderful to see. It is a fairly breezy, wouldn't be the warmest day. Fairly perfect cross-country conditions, it should be said. And it's lovely to see so many people out enjoying the sport. So, Christoph Vohler. And a call by uh, Diorado. This horse, also the sire of uh, a number of others within the field as well, including Laura Collitz de Capo, who we've just seen come home. Lara de Lida Kirk and Myers to Cathy Darville also. Claire Abbott, who was a real stalwart of the Irish team for many years with the great Euro Prince, a horse who remains at many people's favourites, favourite uh, years on. Real horse that captured the heart of many. And it's wonderful to see her keeping hold of horses at the top level, as so often is the case in business. Sometimes you have to make the decision to, to sell a few along the way. Felix Vogue, Deo de Lucien, coming towards home. Just the one to go. Be interesting on his time. He's on 29.4. So uh, he could go into third on the live leaderboard, guarantee himself a top 10 place overnight. But we'll just have to confirm that time in a moment for you it'll come through and we'll bring it for you in just a second if you want to go and that looks like 29.4 that he is a dot on the optimum time 10.06 so he stays on that score to go forward to the cross country uh, forward to the show jumping tomorrow beg your pardon Christoph Waller very economically into the water again just ran into a little bit of trouble with the distance and the horse was very very clever 
as away from the start. This is Louise Romayaka and uh, Caspian 15, the final combination for Team Sweden. Coming forward on 31.7. Big, big ditches underneath both of those fallen trees and actually some really intricate detailing as well. The level of uh, craftsmanship that goes into producing a course at this level is extraordinary. Almost a work of art. Christoph Wohler, the uh, final rider for Team Germany, is uh, absolutely flying on towards home. He's on that score of 31.5. Did well to just hold the right-hand shoulder in there. As uh, waiting down at the start final team rider for the Netherlands and the leader in the Dutch National Championship race as well, Sanna de Jong, Global Fairly Flashy, will be due out on course any moment. And she is away. So this is uh, going to be a key round for the Netherlands who are still in contention in the Nations Cup competition and also a key round for the Dutch National Championship as well. So Christoph Waller and Accor, he checks his watch. Oh my goodness me. He could uh, trot home, I think, from here. He doesn't need to, but he's just going to take his time for the last very, very, very comfortably inside the time. And this looks like a really, really exciting horse for the future for him because uh, first four-star long format cantered home comfortably as one of the quickest of the day. And actually, the horse has only been to the four-star level twice previously, was fifth in Babarithko earlier on this year, and then was actually reserve national champion in the Mesmer Trophy and the German national championship class at Le Moulin. Uh, so look, definitely one to really keep an eye on heading into Paris 2024. And uh, he will be uh, on that dressage score of 31.5 going into tomorrow's show jumping. So... Sana de Jong, Global Fairly Flashy, are on course. Let's just see how the team competition is uh, shaping up. So, Great Britain are in third, 107.2. Interestingly, we're just going to get confirmation of this, but it looks like Laura Collett's time penalties have been removed. So... Laura Collett de Capo actually stopped the clock one second inside the time. There are no time penalties to add. And she sits in second, so 26.9 behind Nicholas Tuzon, which actually moves the Brits up to third in the Nations Cup. They're locked in on a score of 107.2. Good job done for Claire Abbott and Julent at the Belt Bank. So going back to the team standings, France locked in on 97.8, Belgium 107.0. They have Karen Donkers, Leapheimer van der Verhoff still to go, and she has to jump clear and inside the time if they are to hold that position. Uh, Great Britain locked in 107.2 in third, or will be better. And uh, the Netherlands... A key round for them out on course. Sanna Dion, Global Fairly Flashy, 31.9. Uh, Ireland actually sitting in seventh. This is a counting score for Ireland as well, with Claire Abbott heading towards the latter part of her round. That was really well done. Global Fairly Flashy, Sanna Dion. Owned by uh, Global Sport Horses. As that Global Prefix was a new ride for Sanna earlier on this year, formerly campaigned by uh, Brian Morrison. Rattled the first part of that uh, sunken road, but actually this fence has been uh, Pretty uneventful so far today. Jumped very well. Claire Abbott and Jewel Lint 
the Irish team will be very, very happy to have this duo back. And uh, they clear the last comfortably inside the time. 31.6 is their score going forward to the show jumping tomorrow. And they'll be uh, even happier tomorrow night if they can get that Olympic qualification ticked in uh, preparation for a tilt at Paris 2024. Back with Sana de Jong, global fairly flashy. Absolutely uh, no question of looking in that ditch at the big ditch and brush. Here is uh, Louise Ramayaka. Oh, big jump in, but keeps the landing. A very bold over the first part of the skinny. And actually finds the two strides quite short coming out, which uh, has not been the case for many. They've come up very long for most people. Here is a really key round for the Belgian team. Karen Donkers, Leap Pimer van der Verhoff. Woof, Caspian 15 rather taking control of the final element of that belt bank. So Karen Donkers has to jump clear and inside the time to hold Belgium in the team silver medal position going forward to tomorrow. But of course, They are in a, a pretty decent spot individually, potentially as well. On a score of 30.2, they sat just outside the top 20 coming into the cross country. But actually, they could easily move up closer to the top 10 with a vast clear here. So the individual standings at the moment Nicholas Tuzon, Diablo Month, 25.4. Laura Collett, De Capo, 26.9. Ros Cantor, MHS, 17, 28.6. They're the individual top three we still have uh, that could feature in that uh, top placings. Hallie Kuhn and Cute Girl, who are the only combination that could overhaul Nicholas Tuzon's hold on the top spot. Laura de Lida Kirk and Myers, De Cassie Darville. And... Uh, Felix Etzel's TSF Polotans one to watch out for as well. Really well done, Gobel Fairly Fashy, through the open corners. If you are just tuning in and you're wondering what happened to our overnight leader, Yulia Krajewski and Nickel21, they actually had a fall jumping into the final water. And unfortunately, that ended their day early. They both walked away absolutely fine. As, uh, Louise Ramayaka and Caspian 15 are home safely just a couple of seconds over the time, 33.7, the score that she'll be taking forward. And actually that uh, puts Sweden on a score of 140.9. Another to just take the right-handed option, actually, at that uh, final water and those that have done it that way it actually looks to have ridden really well for Sana de Jong global fairly flashy the leaders in the Dutch, na Dutch national championship class as well here and actually she's got a little bit of uh, leeway to hold her top spot very bold and quick in global fairly flashy we've seen one or two having problems in that water but actually goes really well clear around inside the time would see the Netherlands in fourth overnight and actually put them in a really really good position going into the show jumping there'd be three teams within a fence of one another So, Sana de Jong, Global Fairly Flashy, Philip Dutton and Denham, Karen Donkers, Leapheimer van der Verhoff, 
the three combinations out on course as we head towards the end of the team competition. Karen Donk is the last of our team riders to be out on course. We've still got plenty of action to bring you as the day progresses, mean, mind you. Global fairly flashy. Sana de Jong really, really pushing on towards home now. She's got the angled houses in the main arena. And then she can head back towards the finish. Karen Donkers. One of the world's most experienced horsewomen has represented Belgium at so many major championships, Olympic Games, Europeans, Worlds as well. And this is a horse that has been uh, so often in the shadow, it could be said, of uh, Fletcher van der Verhoff. Hasn't quite had the championship opportunities but it's still a very, very good one. So, Sana de Jong, Global Fairly Flashy. Is she going to hold on to that lead in the Dutch National Championships? She could be keeping the Netherlands well in touch of a podium finish here in the Nations Cup competition as well. Ah, the time penalties are going to clock up a little bit. 0.4 of a penalty for every second over. She's not going to be a million miles away. And she clears the last to come home safely. So 39.5 is her score. Let's see what that does to the standings. In terms of the Dutch national championship, she actually goes into second of those that have been cross country. Meryl Blom Holzman, Vasov de Vire on the one to beat there, 37.9. Philip Dutton, Denham. This uh, really exciting horse was actually produced by Meryl Blom Holzman up the levels. Went to Lillian Donger as a six year old with Meryl before Philip uh, bought the horse and uh, went back to Lillian last year as a seven year old. Had an absolutely phenomenal top 10 finish. So, coming forward in the horse's first run at the four star long level of competition. As away goes for Brazil, Marcio Cavajo Jorge and uh, Royal Encounter. 32.6, their score coming forwards. First of two rides for Marcio. Also see him with Kilcoltrum Kit Kat a little bit later on as well. So, Philip Dutton, Denham, heading on towards the final few fences. And actually, the U.S. have moved up to uh, fourth place, potentially. A fast clear from Philip Dutton here would see them go just behind Great Britain, would go ahead of the Netherlands, who are on 117.4. The U.S. on 110.6 at the moment. And that would be quite a meteoric rise from the U.S. team. 11th after dressage up to a potential fourth. Would be interested to see the time for Philip Dutton, though, because I'm not sure how quickly he's been travelling with this eight-year-old. Marcio George. Good work through the first water. As away from the start goes uh, Luke Chateau. You go to Capan. You go to Capan as uh, 33.8. Uh, dressage to start on. Marcio made really light work of that sunken road. So, Philip Dutton, Denham, clear as they come on to the final couple of fences. He's going to pick up a few time penalties, but what an exciting young horse this is for the future. And uh, Philip Dutton clears the final fence. No better man to go out as anchor for your team. He's going to have a few uh, time penalties, as I say, 47.2, the score that he will take forward. And I think that will probably be enough to have opened the door back open 
back for the Netherlands uh, in the team competition, but we'll confirm it for you in just a second. Yep, so the United States lock in 122.6, the Netherlands 117.4. They sit in fourth and fifth, respectively. This lady, though, is the one that we are watching in terms of Belgium score. Karen Donkers, Leapheimer van Tverhoff. Because uh, Belgium 107.0 in second, Great Britain 107.2 in third. Luc Chateau. Riding as an individual for France, the early part of his round. Jumps the uh, bar at four. Well done by Karen Donkers. Leapheimer van der Verhoff set sail for home now. As uh, next to go into the start, Ben Lur and Sitius. Combination put on a uh, 29.6 in the first phase yesterday. So we were, we're top 20 after dressage in that a fast clear cross country could certainly see the move up towards the top 10 because it has been a quite a dramatic day at the office here in Bukalo so far this morning. Plenty of drama. Some high profile na names falling by the wayside as well. Overnight leader, Yulia Krajewski, Nickel 21, parting company in the water, which ended their day early. Luke Chateau. Coming to the ditch and brush in the hedge. Adrian Ditcham has made some changes to the course this year that just make it flow a little bit more nicely. The optimum time of 10 minutes and 6 seconds is pretty achievable from what we've seen so far this morning. But still, the fence is there to be jumped as well. So, Karen Donkers, Leapheimer van Tverhoff. What does their time look like? It is going to be very, very close. Oh, a few seconds over the time. And I think that is going to see Belgium move down into third, Great Britain up into second. We'll get confirmation of that in a second. 32, 6.2. So Karen Donkers, Leapheimer van der Verhoff, still a very, very good round from them. And uh, they go into 14th place at the moment. So Karen Donkers, Leapheimer van der Verhoff, 14th at the moment. Uh, what does that do in the team competition? Will France secure the top spot going into tomorrow? 97.8. Great Britain, 107.2. They'll be ruined that they're counting one of those 20 penalties. Uh, but that is the way the cookie crumbles ahead of Belgium, who now sit in the bronze medal position, 113.0. The Netherlands hot on their heels and the USA hot on their heels as well. New Zealand not far behind either. It is going to make for an unbelievably exciting final day in the Nations Cup Series finale here in Bukalo tomorrow because any pole that falls in the show jumping is going to have real significance on the leaderboard. But France in the driving seat, they will be at the most comfortable two fences in hand across their counting scores ahead of Great Britain and Belgium rounding out the podium. So the team riders in the Nations Cup have all been. We now continue to focus our attentions on the individual classification. And uh, away from the start goes Fabio Fanny Chiozzi. And Satogo Georges on 41.7. Marcio Georges has had a really good spin cross country. The first of his two rides, Royal Encounter, just goes off to the main arena. That's Ben La and uh, Sitius.
carrying that very good dressage of 29.6 to the sunken road. Pop through there, absolutely no problems at all. Luke Chateau takes the flag at the first part of the open corners, but uh, no problems. And he really drives on towards home. He just checks back over his shoulder. Certainly looked okay from where we were looking. Marcio George. At the uh, penultimate. Going to have a few time penalties this duo, but actually I uh, imagine... The number one plan was to come and get a four-star long qualification result. And they've certainly put that in uh, across the country. So Marcio Georges will see a little bit later on with Kil Coltrum Kitkat as well. He's actually in a pretty competitive position, it should be said as well. 49.8 uh, Marcio's score goes into 28th at the moment. Luke Chateau. Oh! Really hesitantly jumping into the lake there. But he uh, goes the slightly longer route and actually regroups very, very well. Not the most comfortable of jumps in. We'll take another look at that. Horse just looking a little bit weary, perhaps. Had a jolly good look. Went, had a, another closer look and actually very clever with his footwork. And Luke made sure that his body position was in the right way place didn't lose his balance and uh, did a really good job there in picking things up whether that was always the plan to go the slightly longer route or not I'm not sure but even so he is safely on his way so here is our latest starter Storm Straker and Fever Pitch on 32.6 for Great Britain competing as individuals here this weekend Now, first person we've seen to take the right-handed, slightly longer route at the water. They've got the two brush corners. One. And then the second of them. Two. He makes it happen. That was uh, Fabio Fanny Chiotti and Satogo George. Obviously just preferred that right-handed option. Doesn't actually look a great deal easier in an extra jumping effort, but... You know, some horses prefer a right-handed corner to a left-handed corner. And he certainly made it look pretty straightforward. You can keep travelling through that combination, the, the sunken road. As uh, Luc Chateau comes towards the final fence... Point four of a penalty, remember, for every second over the time. Does see just a few time penalties to add to his score, but he gets a flyer at the last and is home safely. So, he uh, stops the clock and uh, finishes on a score of 42.6. Luke Chateau. His team very quickly on hand to help the horse cool off. Ben Lauer, Sitius. Oh, another to just uh, jump in really, really big into the water. Just stumbled slightly and uh, couldn't get his line for the uh, skinny on the bank. So we'll come round to represent whether he goes the uh, direct route or the slightly longer alternative he's going. Uh, jumps through it clear at the second time of asking but just unfortunately couldn't regather himself after that slightly uncomfortable landing Storm Straker and Fever Pitch jump the bar at four and the difference to this morning is quite something at this part of the course because very very quiet when the first horse headed out on course at 9.30 local time give it three hours 
and it's absolutely jam-packed with people enjoying all of the Bookalow hospitality. The Belt Bank, one of those feature events that we've seen here at Bukalo in the past on many an occasion. Uh, Storm Straker, fever pitch, very quickly at the sunken road. Because there's quite a lot to aim at there, and actually, it's quite an obvious fence in terms of colour. Does mean that they can just keep travelling towards it. Well, just a reminder, if you're tuning in here, then the one to beat is Nicolas Tuzon Diablo Month. 25.4 is the score out in front ahead of MHS 17 Ros Cantor. Now, interestingly, confirm this Laura Collett de Capo have disappeared from the top of the leaderboard so their time was amended and actually they have now dropped to third so Laura Collett de Capo 41.9 uh, we'll come on to what that consists of in a second she has been given 15 penalties for missing a flag. We'll find out where that was for you. Uh, 20... No, bear with me two seconds. Yep, 24C, which was the bottom of the bank. I'm trying to think if we saw her through that. I don't think we did. There's a couple of others that have been awarded as well there, actually. Sana Dion, Global Fairly Flashy, which is key, and Louise Romayaka, Caspian 15. We did see Louise Romayaka, Caspian 15 through there. Um, a fairly hairy jump, but I would have said on review would probably be okay, but I wouldn't like to say it again without seeing the footage back, which, of course, the ground jury will be able to do. So we'll keep you updated on that changing leaderboard all the time. But Laura Collett given 15 penalties as another to just really, really launch into the water. And he's done a great job there to get it back together. And the horse was unbelievably honest and helped him out a little bit as well. That was Fabio Fanny Chiotti and Satogo George. Ben La, you can see, just helping untack Sitius at the end of his round as uh, away from the start. Now, our latest uh, combination is Megan Jones, Arali Barina, 34.4, their starting score. So, uh, actually, it's not Arali Barina and Megan Jones have withdrawn, so they will not be coming forward to the cross country. Next away, Ben Massey. And uh, for Loud de Pearl. So, no Megan Jones if you're tuning in to watch uh, the very talented Australian rider. Don't have any more news on that, but uh, not coming forward to the cross country. So, Storm Straker had to work quite hard through the double of open corner. She's really attacking this cross country round, this young lady. And so far, so good. Storm looking for her first uh, four-star completion with the horse. Well, first four-star with the horse, I should say. And actually, first visit to Bukalo. Horse stepped up to four-star level last season. And best result this year was top ten at Blair Castle. Now taking the longer route at the Belt Bank. This is the fence that Laura Collett has been adjudged to have had 15 penalties, as has Louise Romarca, as has Sana de Jong. We're going to keep you up to date on that. We'll keep an eye on the scores and uh, we'll let you know 
with any news that comes through. But uh, that is how things are shaping up at the moment. Storm Straker. Very boldly into the water, but actually gets uh, a good landing gear out. And very positively through the rest of the combination as well. This horse looking very, very straight on his line. So news in on Megan Jones, our little Barina, our Ali Barina even. Uh, Megan just feeling that the uh, horse not quite herself in the dressage. She had a little jump on her this morning. She was perfectly sound, uh, but just doesn't feel something is quite right. And so uh, we'll save the horse for another day, showing great horsemanship. So disappointing. But ultimately, horse welfare always at the utmost priority. Ben Massey for Louder Pearl are on courses. Fabio comes towards the end of his round. A smile of joy of relief i think it's joy as he looks absolutely thrilled as he comes through the finish and uh, satogo george is home safely clear jumping just a few time penalties to add so storm straker and fever pitch very nearly the, at the end of their round as well ben massey for louder pearl also on course next away from the start in fact just having jumped away from the start is uh, Ducati Darville, Lara de Lida Kirkamaya, absolutely one to watch for the individual leaderboard because she's on a score of 26.6. So uh, still plenty of action here in Bukalo. Wherever you are joining us from in the world, a very, very warm welcome to you. Whatever time of day or night it is, we have got you covered with full coverage of all of the cross country today. And then, of course, tomorrow we'll be back with the live show jumping for you as well to see the conclusion of this Nations Cup team competition. And to see who will be stood atop the Bugalo podium for 2023. Oh, slightly uncomfortable jump for our latest starter. But clear. That was Lara Delida Kirkamara at the bar at four. Storm Straker. And fever pitch, Storm, four seconds inside the time. She'll be absolutely thrilled with that performance, and so she should. She goes into the top ten, and all to play for tomorrow. But a brilliant attacking cross-country round from this young lady, and definitely one to watch out for at the top of the sports in the future. So, Diablo Month, Nicolas Touzon, the one out in front, 25.4. The French also leading the Nations Cup competition as well. MHS 17, Ros Cantor second on the live leaderboard of those that have completed. Felix Vogue, Deo de Lucien in third. Laura Collett has been given 15 penalties, so that has dropped her down the leaderboard. It's also dropped Great Britain down into third. And uh, we'll keep you updated if anything changes there. But that is how things look at the moment. The, the Nations Cup, it is France, Belgium, Great Britain. Individual standings, Nicolas Tuzon, Ros Cantor, Felix Falk. Here is Lara de Lidica Kamaya, Ducati Darville. Lara, who had an absolutely phenomenal ride cross country a little bit earlier on as part of the Nations Cup team with Huni Darville. Huni, actually, who sits in fourth at the moment, will be uh, guaranteed a top 10 finish overnight. And Ducati Darville by Diorado. Same sire as uh, a number of others in the field, as we've said. Big uh, box to tick this weekend is a, a four-star long qualification result for this duo. 
as away from the start it is Marlin Josefsson another ride for Marlin this time she comes forward with Magan the fifth 37.6 her starting score already had one super spin with Golden Midnight on the cross country Ben Massey making light work of the double of corners as he comes to this really influential water she jumps in really carefully going the direct route we've seen a real influx of riders actually electing to take the right-handed option which does take you much closer to the hospitality tents it should be said but actually clear through that as uh, Marlin, Josefsson and Magan jump the bar at four Really uncomfortable jump at the first element of the uh, double of uh, Trichanus at five. But actually regroups and uh, after a bit of a reminder, jumps uh, the second of those clear. Next away from the start, Sarah Beckstrom and Dick to Aldrup. 36.1, their starting score. Combination who uh, come forward for Denmark, as I say, one of 14 different nations represented here this weekend. We've got uh, some... 12 nations in the Nations Cup with the addition of Denmark and Brazil across the uh, individual competition. Just see Louise uh, Romayka there in the background holding her uh, relatively new baby. Giving a great example of just how impressive these sports uh, women are in eventing. We take it for granted in the sport that actually mothers compete at, at the very, very top end of the game on a regular basis but actually it's only recently in other sports that that has really come into the headlines and become much more common eventing I think it is safe to say has really paved the way and showcased it that it is possible Sarah Beckstrom underway Dick to Aldrup first four star long format for this duo so wish them the very best of luck See Ben Massey for Lauda Pearl clear, clear through to the main arena. Laura de Lida Kakamaya clear through to 15 with Ducati Darville. As uh, we get a great shot of Sarah Beckstrom, my latest starter, that, that big, big vegetable table. Very comfortably done through uh, the belt bank. As here is Lara de Liedekirk and Meyer. Ducati Darville combination that were top 10 in Arken this year. Had a great result there. Had some really, really smart results at the four star short level as well. Lara already had one very, very good clear cross country round. Two seconds inside the time with Huni Darville. As Falauda Pearl comes towards the final fence with Ben Massey. He looks absolutely thrilled with that. He's so close to the time. One second over 36.1. And that will see him on a very solid score going into tomorrow. He goes into 13th at the moment. Cassie Darville. And Lara, again, another to actually just uh, take the pace away, come back to trot for a couple of strides before going into the water. And actually, as good as any that we have seen through there, then really, really straight doing the direct route through the skinny elements just not taking any chances her time is going to be really interesting as uh, next away from the start will be Alfie Marshall just have faith Tien so Lara de Ligue de Kirka Meyer heads on towards home she's only got a uh, half a dozen or so jumping efforts remaining
as we head towards the halfway stage of cross country here it's a marathon day of cross country 110 starters it is going to be christopher cease and megan jones both withdrawing before the start of cross country so away goes alfie marshall just have faith tn on a score of 38.3 them just inside the top 100 after dressage but uh, can absolutely assure you that a good clear here will see them move up the leaderboard oh and unfortunately Magan and Marlin Josephson running into problems at the second of those corners you could see she actually I thought might be in trouble at the first of them because just didn't quite have the line she wanted but actually the horse clocked on and then didn't because of that perhaps get the line she wanted to the second of those corners and unfortunately it's so difficult with fences such as that when you've had a run out to uh, actually come back and represent so Lara de Lida Kirkemeyer jumps the last fence she is kicking towards home she's going to be inside the time dot on it in fact she goes into second this could be an unbelievable moment in Lara de Lida Kirkemeyer's career here this weekend she's had two rides inside the time so far she's still got one to go she will be congratulated by her team because uh, that was some performance she had to work out there but she made it happen the team then very quickly on hand to look after the horse as well that is kai stefan meyer her husband her team coach and chef to keep here this weekend as well and uh, she will go into second so we'll definitely be in a podium position going forward to the show jumping still has another ride left to go a little bit later on in formidable 62 also over the tricaners at 5a and b alfie marshall just have faith tn Alfie Marshall steps up to the four-star long level for the first time in his career. It's four-star first time for the horse as well. They've had some good results. Top 25 at Bicton in the three-star long format earlier on this year. And good clear rounds cross-country at Blenheim in the eight- and nine-year-old class at Hartbury and Burgeon International as well. So... Uh, all to play for for Alfie out on course at some moment your first four star and uh, a really good job through the uh, first of the waters and that really did cause a lot of chat between the riders it comes about three minutes into the course but actually it's a tough enough question however it, it's caught well it's caught one or two out it's jumped pretty well today Away from the start goes Bo Posthumus and Smokey for the Netherlands. And the Dutch crowd really showing their appreciation for one of the home team. 35.2 their starting score. So Alfie Marshall. And... Uh, just have faith tn no problems at all at the ditch and brush tara beckstrom and dicta aldrup combination who have actually been at this level previously top 25 at mill street a little bit earlier on this year But a combination that have very much gone up through the levels together. Represented Denmark in youth and junior championships along the way. Bo Posthumous and Smokey 
setting out very quickly away from the start. It's a busy part of the course here and it can be quite intimidating for some of the horses to see so many crowds. But actually, great opportunity as well to expose them to this sort of atmosphere on the way up the levels. Oh, just clever footwork from Dick to Oldrop, actually. <laughs> Both of those elements there. And lovely expression on this horse's face because he had totally clogged where those flags were. And he knew exactly where he needed to go. So this is uh, Ros Canter and uh, Dasit Cooley Dunn just uh, making their final preparations down at the start. This little horse who actually scored a career personal best at the level in the first phase yesterday. Has just been given her final countdown from the starter. And this horse absolutely loves this phase of the competition. He may be yep, small in stature but he more than makes up for it in character and in heart and love for the job. So, that's it, coolly done. Ros Cantor away on course, owned by uh, Kate Willis and Mel Pritchard. And electing to take the longer route at the uh, belt bank, Sarah Beckstrom, Dick to Aldrup. Just playing it safe there. Didn't want to have a late problem. And they are safely on their way. As Alfie Marshall. His first run at the four star long level. Just have faith. Looks like getting a little bit strong. But actually really well done took the uh, flag at the first part of the corner but had a great line to the second element and he goes on now we'll see him at the water in a few moments time Dasit Cooley Dunn and uh, Roz Cantor 17 years of age now this little horse was produced up to five star by uh, Sarah Way. Sarah Beckstrom just has the two to go. She's away from the main arena. Those two angled houses in the middle of that all-weather surface where we'll be doing the show jumping tomorrow. You can see the time penalty is just starting to clock up a little bit. 0.4 of a penalty for every second over the time. But she's going to come home with a good jumping round behind her. Big smile on her face as she comes through the finish. And Dick to Aldrup looks pretty pleased with that as well. 62.5, the score they take forward to tomorrow. So just to uh, confirm, the individual leader at the moment, Nicholas Toussaint, Diablo Month, ahead of uh, Ducati Darville, Lara de Lidekirke Meyer, and MHS 17, Ros Cantor. Oh, Alfie Marshall sit tight. And... Uh, he actually looked like he made a late call there to just slightly take the alternative. He didn't totally present the horse to the skinny, just uh, slipped on past it. So he will get 20 penalties, but uh, also very happily on his way. Ros Cantor. And uh, that's it, coolly done. And it's so interesting as well because you see so many different types of tack and bits and martingales and breastplates and everything else. And actually, this little horse does like to pop his head up, um, but isn't in any way restricted by a martingale. They obviously found that that's the way he likes to go and they let him go like that. And ultimately, sometimes, you know, it might not be the, the copybook perfect way but if it works for a horse then ultimately that is the most important thing 
that they are happy and comfortable. And it's nice to see him going in what appears to be just a simple snaffle, no martingale, simple caverson noseband, and that's it. Ross had a super spin cross country a little bit earlier on with MHS 17, came home very comfortably inside the time. As uh, Bo Posthumous and uh, Smokey actually could be in contention here in the Dutch National Championship class as well. Meryl Blom, the one to beat that, beside De Viron. And she looks absolutely thrilled. As she goes on to the water in just a second. Great to see such a wonderful atmosphere here in Bukalo again. And families enjoying their day out. As Alfie Marshall coming home, it's been a, a really good round from uh, this young man. And uh, actually is uh, judged as clear through the water. So uh, he comes home safely. No jumping penalties at the moment on his uh, scorecard. And I'm sure he'll be thrilled with that uh, clear round and that cross-country performance from Just Have Faith Tien on the horse's first run at the level also. Bo Posthumous. Dropped quite steeply down into the water, but actually that brought up a really nice stride for the first of those skinny fences. So, uh, Smokey through that uh, tricky little water. It, it's not overly difficult. You've got two fairly narrow fences, both before and after it, but it really deserves respect. And actually, you don't want to be going too quickly. It's a bit of a speed bump as such. <laughs> Beautifully done from Dasset to uh, Cooley Dunn and uh, Ros Canter through the open corners. As I said a little bit earlier on, this horse beautifully produced by Sarah Way, who uh, can really take a lot of the credit for getting to this horse to where he is today because she took him all the way up to five star. They had a, a huge amount of fun before she passed the reins over to her very good friend Ros Canter. Having uh, had children, Sarah just electing not to compete at the very top level for a little while and so made the call to send the horse to Roz who of course has done a, a wonderful job with him uh, so just the two to go for Bo Posthumous and Smokey they could well have turned a circle in the main arena we're not getting any jumping penalties for them at this stage those fences separately numbered we just saw them in the back of the screen Looking like they had just uh, turned some sort of circle or something, but uh, importantly, actually at home, and she looks absolutely thrilled. You can see what it means to the team as well, because so many people put so much into getting these horses up to top level. And uh, back to Ros Canter. Dasset Cooley Dunn, who've got the course all to themselves at the moment, because actually then there's a short break for five minutes or so. Really clever, the way this little horse popped into the lake there. The oohs and ahs of the crowd as he uh, takes a flyer, but then the pony-like ability to just pop in a little stride. Very, very clever with his footwork. He looks full of running still as well as Roz heads on towards the final quarter of the course. Adrian Ditcham, the course designer here, 
10 minutes and 6 seconds that optimum time. Roz has already stopped the clock inside it once today. She's on 32.3. She's coming to the little nests in the water with a minute and 15 on the clock. Let's do a clock check on her. About where she needs to be. Possibly a couple of seconds down. Not a million miles away, but she wouldn't want to be hanging around as she comes on towards home. She's got to go into the main arena here. And you see they loop round to the right-hand side. And they're going to do a full lap of the arena and come back on those angled houses. She's about where she wants to be on the clock. She's very, very close to it. She'd need about 40 seconds to get home from the middle of the main arena. Roz Cantor, the newly crowned European champion. She won badminton with a record winning margin a little bit earlier on this year as well. She's already had one clear inside the time today. Is she about to have another with the absolute crowd favorite, Dasit Cooley Dunn? 17 years of age, still absolutely loving his job. And she is comfortably inside the time as well. You could see his little ears prick as he came through the finish flags. This horse means so much to so many people. And he is going to go into ninth at the moment, 32.3. We've still got a few to go, but all to play for going forward to tomorrow's jumping. And Roz will have two well in contention so it has been an action-packed day here in Bukalo. we're at the halfway stage of cross country and this is how the leaderboard is shaping up uh, Diablo Month leads the way for Nicolas Toussaint 25.4 ahead of Lara de Lidica Kamaya to Cathy Darville in second Ros Cantor's first ride in third we've just seen Tassic Cooley done go into ninth as well Nikolai Aldinger rounding out the top 10 with Timo in terms of the uh, team standings in the Nations Cup uh, team competition it is France who uh, lead the way 97.8 uh, Belgium on 113.0 in second and Great Britain at the moment, 122.2 ahead of the US, 122.6. It is very, very close. The reason I say at the moment, uh, Laura Collett has been awarded 15 penalties for a flag, which could well be reviewed. Who knows? We will watch this space. The uh, penalties didn't go on to start with. Then she had time penalties, then she didn't, and then the flag went on. So it's changed a couple of times. We'll keep you abreast of any changes as they happen as well we've got a couple of minutes break here the next step horse due to go at 1306 local time so if you come back in five minutes we can settle in for the next session of cross country don't go anywhere we'll be back soon Dames en heren, het is dan misschien pauze, maar zojuist gefinished voor Nederland. 
voor kostumes. Voorstel op het podium en voorlopig sta je weer op de derde plaats. Doe wat. Ik vond het echt een hele fase voor om te rijden, vooral voor de tweede keer. En de eerste vijf minuten doet het echt op top. Ter de straks bij de nummer 61, Tanner Kessels, op de kanier. De punt 37,5 punt staat naar de dressuur. Aan het gaat op de uitstap staan, en die koe uit Amerika. Scoren 72 op de startlijst en de koe. Staat op de score van 35,0. Heb dus de mogelijkheid bij het rijden van Pan voor zijn Toscantie op de leiding om het te nemen van de Nicola Toezet. We hebben nog maar één combinatie die weg is. Dat is zijn van de landschap. Dat is dus een goed en een goed Maar dan moeten we nog even wachten, want het is de nummer 72 op de startlijst. Op een paar opladen, dit jaar op de startlijst, in deze 52 stuk, met het nieuwe plan en zijn mooie prachtige deelname. Van de top de vijfde zijn er zeven aanwezig van de afdeling. De Europese kampioen, de Europese kampioen, de Europese kampioen. En niet te de Nederlandse kampioen.
we are back up and running here in the cross country in Bookalo as uh, Ty Cassells gets us back underway with the MC Parco Pete. Just uh, a few minutes, three times throughout this uh, cross country schedule, scheduled in to allow all of the volunteers a little break on site. It's a long old day of cross country. 110 starters today and we're about at the halfway stage. So Ty Cassell's MC Parker beat the horse's first run at the four-star level. Top 20 at Little Downham as uh, part of their preparation for this. And uh, clear cross country at both Burgeon and a heartbreak as well, having stepped up at the start of this season. Adrian Ditcham, the course designer, 10 minutes and 6 seconds the optimum time, 5,750 metres the total distance of this track. I understand it's uh, been wheeled relatively tightly, but actually he's made a few changes this year that just make the course a little bit more flowing. And uh, I think conditions out there are as close to perfect for cross country as we could ask for as well. This is the first water, which comes up at about the three minute marker of eight A, B and C. And actually, Ty does a really good job through that. We've seen one or two just getting a little bit spooky as they go into the water, particularly those that are a little bit less experienced, but actually no such problems at all that. Plenty of wonderful hospitality lodges situated throughout the uh, cross-country course. Bookalo just next door to the uh, Grolsch factory. As here is Pontus Hugesson and Zinfire as our latest starters. They uh, jump away from the start box with a score of 38.0, 94th place coming into the cross country. And we go back to Tyler Cassells, competing as an individual. Up the step, one stride to the rail the other side. That sunken road has actually jumped really, really well throughout today. very few problems what's caused no problems I should say and then they loop back round to this uh, ditch and brush you can see, see Ty there had almost slipped his reins in advance of the fence big jump at the bar for Zinfire Pontus Hugerson accommodation were actually part of the uh, Nations Cup team for Sweden. I think it was in uh, Strigom a little bit earlier on this season. And uh, really rides at that first combination. First combination doesn't come until fence five. Actually, Adrian Ditcham has been quite kind in letting horses and riders really get into their rhythm. Yeah, it was Stragon this combination went into uh, the Nations Cup team for Sweden. Actually, they've really improved upon their dressage here. One of their best tests at the level at 38.0. The just having a little spook at the water again as they come in. We've seen a few horses do that, probably the more inexperienced horses. A little look at, at what's just around on landing. So easy to forget, isn't it, you know, as riders, that these riders will have walked the course three, maybe four times. And yet the horses see it for the very first time. 
as they're heading out to jump it. through the sunken road. As MC Parco Pete, Tyler Cassell comes to these open corners. These have caused plenty of problems today. The right-handed corner, then the left-handed corner. And actually, Ty had left his whip in the right hand for the first corner. So using a stirrup there, Pontus over the uh, ditch and brush. As away goes uh, James Bond. James Bond with uh, Stefan Hazelager on board. 34.6, their starting score. And actually, again, the uh, Dutch crowd giving their home riders such a reception here. They did a good dressage yesterday for this duo. And actually, not a million miles away off the pace in the Dutch national title as well because if they are clear and inside the time they'll go to the top of that Dutch national championship race Tyler Cassell's MC Parco Pete actually popping really nicely and a couple of very clever little trot steps from the horse and a clever little third stride as well interestingly so uh, we saw a few horses actually uh, really pecking on landing going into the water just to reassure you the fence judges have been raking that landing pretty much after every single horse that has been through the course designer adrian ditcham has been down to take a look at it as well and everybody's very happy that all is as it should be which is great to hear so mc parco pete and tyler cassells Turning their attentions towards home now. And this is the point in the course that actually a horse that is stepping up to this level for the first time can sometimes be a little bit surprised because they'll have run for eight minutes cross country at a three star in a, in a long format. But actually, all of a sudden, they've got another two minutes to go and they sort of think, oh, we're we stopping yet. And you have to kind of encourage them on. And uh, it's just a bit of an unknown quantity for some of these horses. As Harm, Snook and Butterfly for the Netherlands are also underway. 43.4 this combination scored in the dressage. James Bond, Stefan Hazelager. It's a horse that uh, is pretty experienced at the uh, four star level of competition now. Actually, came here to Bukalo last year. Completed. Pontus Hugesson. It's in fire. Very easily done on the four strides through those open corners. There's quite a direct line between them there. As uh, Tyler Cassell's MC Parco Pete home safely just a few time penalties. 44.3 on the horse's first run at the four star level. I think Ty will be uh, pretty pleased with that. Look forward to seeing them in the jumping tomorrow, which of course we will have live for you on fei.tv and on clip my horse we do hope that you will join us for the conclusion of uh, bookalo 2023 and such lovely teamwork actually you saw ros canter there very quickly on hand to help cool ty cassell's this horse off There's such a community between riders oh as pontus hugerson runs into difficulty at the middle part of the combination in the water he's now got to find his way back round to the alternative 
and actually just felt something wasn't quite right so elected to call it a day and save themselves for another occasion so Pontus Hugesson and Zinfire to see them jump in again here got a good jump in dips forward a little bit on landing didn't have an ideal stride for the skinny on the mound but actually just wasn't to be and uh, 20 penalties and then popping the hand up to save it a day and Pontus just pops his hand up and acknowledges the ground jury that yeah he's gonna save himself for another occasion uh, so Alberto Juni Galway Bay talent is away for Italy riding as an individual comes forward on 37.4 this duo Galway Bay talent actually yeah, went to Kilil Keep for the four star long format there a little bit earlier on this summer Harms Nook really nicely done through the first water Jokes water at 8 A, B and C I think riders will be pretty pleased with how that's ridden really today pop-up hospitality here at Bukalo really is something else so much atmosphere all around the course and lots of people enjoying a very very fun day out oh just rattled the first part of that corner but it certainly uh, didn't damage the uh, safety device the horse got his balance back very very well James Pope is in built. James Pope, Gladio Dorgan, Stefan Pazenegger, and if you have So, if you're uh, just tuning in here, we are into the second half of cross country here in Bukalo. And uh, certainly an action packed day so far. Overnight leader, Yulia Krajewski, had a fall at this fence with Nickel 21, which takes her out of contention. Stefan Hazelager and James Bond actually showing us just how uh, it should be jumped but uh, yeah Julia Krajewski had a full out on course uh, the Germans didn't have the best day at the office in terms of the nation's cup standings and Alina Schaaf also having a fall in the same place which took them uh, after leading the dressage nation's cup out uh, of contention James Bond jumped and so uh, that, water at 20 and that unfortunately ended their day it has moved France up into pole position led by Nicolas Toussaint Diablo Month who lead the way 25.4 uh, Halle Kuhn and cute girl second after dressage could still go ahead of Nicolas Toussaint they will be heading out on course in Alberto around Gilles six or seven horses time so uh, plenty of action still to bring you as here goes Tara Dixon and uh, Master Smart on a score of 40.6 back with Alberto Juni Galway Bay talent this horse as I say jumped clear at Kalilki in the four star long format earlier this year but unfortunately not able to complete on the final day through the sunken road with absolutely no trouble Stefan Hazelager and James Bond coming out of the main arena here. 
They've just got the two to go. The time penalty is already clocking up. 0.4 of a penalty for every second over the optimum time. So uh, they will have a good number of time penalties to add, but it's otherwise been a really good round from this combination. And uh, just have the final fence to go. And a clear jumping here at Bookalo for Stefan and James Bond. He stops the clock in 10.43. 49.4 is his total score. And uh, that will see him go into 34th place on the leaderboard. Harmsnook. Oh, got him very close to the big table that precedes these corners and just ducks out to the right of that first corner. And actually, I understand also having had a problem at the arrowheads at 14, so that would be his second refusal out on course. Just looked to be uh, struggling with his brakes slightly. Had his line, but uh, I think the horse had a different line in mind, and unfortunately has a second refusal there, and that ends his day. So uh, they will be uh, walking home. So uh, Tara Dixon, very clever footwork from Master Tara Smart Dixon coming out of the, the brush corner and definitely gets a big pat to uh, reward him for his efforts there. Away from the start goes uh, Laura Burley, Bob Cotton Bandit. Laura comes forward on 37.1. away over the first two and they have four really nice inviting fences to get them into their rhythm Tara Dixon whose mum Karen Dixon represented Team GB at I think four Olympic Games Based now over in Ireland, and Tara actually uh, rides for Ireland from her father's side of the family. But really making her own way in the sport. As here is Alberto Juni. Galway Bay talent. Gave the horse a really, really lovely line at that double of corners set up beautifully for the first element was balanced had all the time in the world and then once he landed he could see the distance and could push on for the second of the corners which came up really well for him oh oh gets deposited back in the saddle and unfortunately then does just run into a spot of bother he looked like he was just going to regroup and very quickly represent the horse to the alternative, but actually didn't quite happen for him. He did a great job in staying on board though, and he'll be frustrated by that 20 penalties, I'm sure. it is and the horse did him a bit of a favor to be honest uh, because there was only one way that our poor Alberto was going to go until the horse popped him back in the saddle and uh, I might have a sore nose to be fair but uh, they can continue on with their round in just a second Laura Burley and Bob Cotton Bandit the early part of their round Bob Cotton Bandit horse that uh, was top 20 in Kalilki in that four-star long format a little bit earlier on this year actually uh, went clear cross country at Bramham as well in the long format four-star there back in June lovely stamp of horse Bob Cotton Bandit has a great great partnership with Laura 
they know each other absolutely inside out, having come up through the grades uh, very much together. As uh, away from the start, it is uh, Alexander Hewell with Elfield Voyager. 36.2 his starting score. He was pleased with this horse's dressage uh, yesterday. Laura Burley, Bob Cotton Bandit. We'll be coming round to the uh, Sunken Road, I think, in just a second. Very well done through that. Tara Smart. Uh, Tara Smart. Tara Dixon. And... Uh, Master Smart at the double of corners. This horse, a real cross country machine, looks like he's absolutely loving the stamina test out there. By uh, Satisfaction, owned by uh, Karen Dixon, who, as I said a little bit earlier on, uh, Tara's mum, who herself has competed at four Olympic Games for Team GB. I'm sure more nervous watching her daughter didn't have the easiest of lines into the water but actually it helped them a little bit and she's been very clever with her uh, line to come back to jump the alternative i think or not so that looks like a 20 penalties to me we'll uh, wait for confirmation from the fence judge but this is the line coming into the water and the horse just looking really, really keen. She got the turn and actually the horse just jumped in very, very carefully. And then I thought she was just gonna swing left-handed to jump this triple brush, but actually bypassed it and went back there. Just wonder if she might have doubted herself perhaps for just a moment, but anyway, she is on her way. She's been awarded the 20 penalties. And uh, I don't think the horse will realise that there'll be 20 penalties there. Well, everybody in Bukalo keeping well hydrated. I'm sure there won't be too many on the water. But that one's certainly enjoying a refreshing beverage. As away from the start goes our latest starter, Michael O'Toole. And first Obama for Ireland, 38.7 their starting score Tara I think sensibly actually just electing to take the longer route here Master Smart just getting very very keen and she hasn't perhaps got the level of control and accuracy that she would have liked to have taken the direct route so uh, just electing to play it safe And actually, just getting news in that Alberto Juni has retired on course. He had a problem, another problem at the 22nd after we saw his issue at the water. So that is the troll log and elected to pop his hand up and call it a day, which is why we haven't seen any more of him. Tara Smart. Tara Smart is absolutely getting in my head now. Tara Dixon. And Master Smart, second time I've done that. There won't be a third, don't worry. Uh, coming towards home. Tara Dixon just having to really make sure she sets up for these last couple of fences. Because the horse looking very, very keen at the end of his round. Safe to say, still plenty of fuel in the tank. And she has gone on to complete... Bob Cotton Bandit takes the direct route through the water. 
and uh, to the uh, delight of the watching crowd can head on to the final part of his round and uh, another just to elect to play it safe here it's caught one or two out and uh, including some big name scouts such as Yasmin Ingham and Janelle Price and Laura Burley just not running any risks So Tara Dixon and Master Smart's uh, 20 penalties just has appeared on their scorecard from the water. I was just doubting myself as to whether they had indeed done something very, very clever. But actually, the 20 penalties has just uh, arrived. So 20 to add for them. Uh, but they are home safely in a reasonably quick time as well. Michael O'Toole. And uh, first Obama on that score of 38.7 for Ireland. Sunken Road, cat like athleticism. And uh, taking the flag at the second element there, Alexander Huell gets away with it. And uh, not in any doubt to have jumped the fence. Laura Burley, Bob Cotton Bandit have had a super fun spin around this Bookalow track. They look like they have thoroughly enjoyed every single moment. They've just got the two fences left to go. There's going to be a few time penalties to add 0.4 of a penalty for every second over the time of 10 minutes and six seconds. But uh, I don't think she'll be overly worried about the clock to date. As she comes to the final fence, takes absolutely no chances, and rightly so. You can see the smile a mile away. Lovely finish to their round. 53.5 is the score they will take forward to the final show jumping phase tomorrow. And of course, we will have all of the show jumping action for you. Uh, live on FBI.tv and on Clip My Horse to see who will be crowned Bookalo Champion of 2023. First, Obama. Ooh, pops down the uh, drop into the water. And actually, very bold. Again, finds the two strides easy between those last two elements. As away goes our latest starter, uh, Megan Healy. And think it over, number 70, 34.6, their starting score coming forwards. And pops over both of the big fallen trees. Well, Alexander Huell. Oh, oh, just having to uh, get his line right back to that final element, which he does, albeit with probably a fence judge that might have had a slightly nervous moment. Megan Healy making it happen at the first water. So, in just a couple of horses' time, we are going to see our uh, challenger for the top spot, Hallie Coon and Cute Girl, head out of the start box next on 25.0. She will be going under starters' orders in just a few moments' time. We'll go back to Megan Healy, who... Uh, drives, think it over through the sunken road. Alexander Huell comes to the final fence and is going to be comfortably inside the time with Elfield Voyager here. This horse who actually went to badminton earlier on this year, things didn't quite go to plan there, but great to see them back. And I'm sure we could well see them with another tilt at badminton 
perhaps next spring as well. Alex, very experienced and actually getting plenty of mileage at the upper levels now as well. So, Michael O'Toole. Oh, oh. Ah, okay. So, he uh, rode his luck and I think got away with it at the first of those corners. But unfortunately, the luck ran out at the second. It, and uh, it's such a difficult fence to represent to if you have 20 penalties there. But also, it's one of those moments you just need to take your time. And again, he acknowledges, unfortunately, not his day. So, uh, elimination for Michael O'Toole, first Obama out on course. Here comes Katie Preston and uh, Templar Juno. Templar Juno is away, but that is the combination who will be next away from the start box. Hallie Coon and Cute Girl on that very good score of 25.0. They lead the way at the moment. They're the only ones that can deny Nicolas Touzon the overnight leader's position with Diablo Moth. They were second after dressage. It was a career personal best in the first phase for the horse yesterday. This is arguably one of the biggest rounds of this young lady's career. Riding as an individual for the US, but she'll have no doubt been speaking to her US teammates, got some feedback on the course. And she is away. So, Hallie Kuhn, cute girl, cannot afford to be one second over the time to hold on to her lead. Nicholas Tuzon has piled on the pressure. She's got to jump the fences as well. So, just getting news in, actually, that Katie Preston, Templar Juno, had a refusal at the third which is the footbridge, and then two further refusals, which I think we're going to see here at the Fallen Bridge. And Templar Juno just popping the brakes on and saying, not today, thank you, Mum. So uh, a second refusal there that will unfortunately end their day early. and does get it at the second time of asking. I think it's the second one that they have them problems with because she then turns a circle in between the two. And as they are a A-B combination, that is a technical 20 penalties. Uh, but then I think has, again, a problem at the second of those. So not their day. I'm sure we'll see them back here in the future. As uh, let's focus our attention on uh, Hallie Coon cute girl combination that eyes all over the world will be tuned into for the next 10 minutes it's a horse that uh, was the seven-year-old that gives you a really good view actually of just how enormously gaping those ditches are they look relatively straightforward from the first camera shot they absolutely aren't megan healy Electing to take the right-handed route. And then just got to get herself sorted out here for where she needs to go next. Did a good job to regroup. I think she was going to get herself back on the direct line, but actually then felt she didn't have enough time to do so. So uh, hastily went on to plan B or C by that point very quick thinking it's so important to know exactly what your options are at these combinations often have a few different available options for you so Hallie Coon and cute girl soon to come into view this horse, the seven-year-old young horse world champion a couple of years ago, ridden by Kevin McNabb. Ali took on the ride the following season, brought the horse over to the US and actually has been back over in the UK this year, based at Kevin's yard this summer and had enormous help from him and his team. Megan Healy, think it over, did a really good job there to clock the flags. And 
Megan just coming to the uh, fairly innocuous looking, but uh, definitely need to be well respected brush wells. So we're away from the start, latest combination to join us. It is a Rebecca Joanna Gherkin TSF to Lara. So Megan Healy, just the last to go, and she clears it well. Few time penalties to add, but she comes through the finish flags and stops the clock in 11.01, 56.6. So Megan Healy is home safely. Let's catch up with Hallie Coon and Cute Girl in just a second. They are clear through to 12. Arguably one of the biggest results of Hallie's career has come here at Bukolo when she was seventh back in 2021 with the horse that really kick-started her career, Global X. So many people out enjoying the sunshine here at Bukolo. We've had many a wet cross-country day here in Bukolo. But thankfully not today. Back you, Anna Gherkin. TSF. Solara on that score of 33.3. And that left them in 50th place coming out to the cross-country. But... News just coming through that Hallie Coon and Cute Girl have run into problems at fence 14. There is the uh, triple bars. So 20 penalties to add for them there. That is going to take them out of contention. Nicholas Tuzon will be our overnight leader with Diablo Month going into the show jumping tomorrow. We'll wait to uh, hopefully catch up with Callie around... Uh, has continued on. Halley, who came here on a first full star long run with the horse. Becky Mana Gherkin. TSF Solara. So quick and easy through that sunken road. It's like an exercise in the school, isn't it? Here is Halley Kuhn. So continuing on after those 20 penalties. So frustrating for her. Brilliant through the double of open corners. But uh, unfortunately, not going to be the day that they're leading overnight. Enormous ditches underneath both of those trichanas. Some horses have definitely had a little look in the bottom. That's Ali Coon. It's like peck on landing with cute girl into the water, but actually really commits to taking the variation of the long route that actually isn't a huge amount longer. Does run quite close to the hospitality area. And I think maybe that's put one or two off going quite so uh, directly to it because it definitely comes up nicely on the distance and actually as I say only wastes a couple of seconds perhaps 
there's a lot going on in the course. Plenty of crowds, plenty of, as I say, hospitality areas. And some horses will have seen crowds such as this before. You know, horses that have come up through the Le Leon Danger Young Horse World Championships, others that have perhaps run at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials in the past. But others, it might be the first time that they're really exposed to this level of atmosphere and this level of crowds. There's a lot for them to take in. Here is uh, Jennifer Cooney and uh, Sammy Davis Jr. Really well done through the combination at eight. Hallie Coon looking to take the direct route at the bank. And actually everything we've seen of this combinations round has been absolutely brilliant. We didn't see the 20 penalties out on course, but uh, frustrating for her. Here's Nicholas Bashkora back in time two. Nicholas, who uh, perhaps most well known for that great partnership he had with Tom Tom Go Three. Sammy Davis Jr. has been a, a great horse in Ireland for a number of years was formerly campaigned by Cottle Daniels but Jennifer's taken over the ride with some good success as well. We'll come back to them in a moment. As TSF Zalara absolutely motoring through the double of open corners. It's really quite breezy in Bukalo today but the sun is shining. Conditions as close to perfect for cross country as we could ask for. quickly away from the uh, early fences to get his round started as uh, Hallie Coon and Cute Girl coming home with 20 jumping penalties a handful of time penalties as well and they clear the final fence it might not have been the dream cross country round but it has certainly been a cross country round that I'm sure they will take great great confidence for in the future because uh, they certainly jumped a lot of the really, really tough combinations very, very well. Just one small problem. It takes them out of contention for the top spot today, but I've no doubt their day will absolutely come. And it means Nicolas Tuzon is the leader going into tomorrow as unfortunately a parting of company at the double of Tracanas, both very quickly up on their feet, it should be said as well for uh, I think it's Nicholas Bishkora and back in time too. Good to see them both so quickly back on their feet and they will as ever be checked out by the incredible teams that are on site at Bukalo walking away from that fall. But unfortunately their day has ended. So uh, back to uh, Rebecca Joanna Gherkin, TSF Solara. Very quickly. Oh, just perhaps, dare I say it a little bit too quickly, into the water. Just ran into a spot of bother at the first element there. She's very quickly to come back and uh, jump the alternative. And she can now get back on the direct line, but just didn't quite have the uh, stride or distance she was looking for. And the horse just ducked out the side very very keen as the course uh, progresses so unfortunately 20 penalties to add for TSF Solara there away from the start will be Selena Mills in just a second as we go uh, to Jennifer Coonley and uh, Sammy Davis Jr in a moment, first of all, Rebecca Joanna Gherkin, catch up with them coming into the main arena. Get a real shot of the incredible infrastructure here, just on the edges of the town of Enschede in the Netherlands. We're about 100 miles west of uh, the capital in Amsterdam.
So uh, just the last to go and safely through the finish flags. TSF Solara, Rebecca Joanna Gherkin will have been frustrated with the 20 penalties at the water, but uh, still coming home safely. So just uh, waiting for uh, Selena Mills. Here she is. And Cooley Snapchat to come back into uh, sight at the start of their round, very quickly away from the first four. This combination had a great top five finish at Blenheim in the eight, nine-year-old class. Also won the Defender four-star short at uh, Bramham a little bit earlier on this year. Selena, very, very excited about this horse's future. Only a nine-year-old. Was top 15 at Blenheim, actually, as an eight-year-old as well. That's Jennifer Coonley and uh, Sammy Davis, Jr. So looking pretty keen into the water. Jennifer, who had a really, really good top four finish on this horse at uh, Hartbury, actually, in the uh, three-star long format. Selena Mills. Cooley Snapchat. Looking very comfortable the early part of their round. Patrick Martin Byrne. Uktra Diva away on course. Getting their round uh, off to a speedy start. Combination come forward with a score of 37.9 as we go to Jennifer Coonley and Sammy Davis Jr. coming into the main arena. Sammy Davis Jr. on a pretty competitive starting score of 32.8. We'd see her go just outside the top 12 if she's clear inside the time. It's all zoned by Carl Daniels alongside Margaret Kinsella. Jennifer, who has had some really good success coming up through the uh, junior young rider teams and the pony teams, it should be said, actually, for Team Ireland. It's a former pony European champion. Taking a few team medals along the way as well. And great to see her making a name for herself now at the four-star level. This horse pretty experienced and we'll be giving her a lot of great experience great mileage as well going to be a few time penalties to add but otherwise a good round from this pet and they will come home safely with uh, just a few of those time penalties to add to their total score 46.8 see Cahill actually running after Jennifer will help her uh, pull the horse off along with the rest of the team I always think it, it's much more nervous moments for the team watching back in the stable yard there's nothing they can do apart from watch on as to how the action unfolds so Gerard Diva Patrick Martin Byrne away on course 37.9 their starting score remember as they come to the uh, two big tracanas just got in a little bit tight to the second didn't look to be uh, at all worried about the ditch as such draw diva by puissant spread by uh, gerard lynch As away goes uh, Stephen Smith with new Ferry Jägermeister. 38.1, the starting score for this combination. Stephen, who uh, actually represented Ireland at the Olympic Games in LA back in uh, 1984, recently celebrated his uh, 60th birthday. Well, Philip Dutton 
also did the same a little, a little bit earlier on. He had a super storming round at cross country here. He has been one of the most constant and impressive figures in Eventing Island. Stephen Smith, he tops pretty much every table there is to top on the Eventing Island Stats Centre, powered by Echo Ratings. Quite an incredible career. Selena Mills and Cooley Snapchat looking very comfortable and confident out on course. As uh, Patrick Martin Byrne just having a bit of a conversation with Uttara Diva coming to the sunken road. Uttara Diva, uh, this mare, a full sibling to that of uh, Uttara Kuli, actually, who Will Zoakton rode to a top 10 finish at uh, Defender Burley a few weeks ago by Buisson's house of the same mare, Uttarad Sky Cruise. This would be the younger of the siblings, it should be said. Uh, Selena Milnes, very, very good through the water. And Stephen Smith. And uh, new Ferry Jägermeister, 38.1 his score coming forwards. problems at either of the uh, two big tricaners going the direct route at the bank belt Selena but does take a slightly wider line at the bottom just electing to play it a little bit more safely as waiting down at the start the next combination you to get underway will be uh, Georgie Campbell and Global Quest, one of 10 horses in the field to have won at this level previously. This horse won the four star long format in Linear last year. Husband Jesse there in the uh, grey baseball cap just at the other side of the horse. Just a few final words of luck. Georgie is uh, safely on her way. Stephen Smith, new very Jägermeister. A little way off that uh, final brush corner, but actually the horse really locked onto the flags and uh, was never in any doubt. Come up quite a bank to that big brush corner. Actually, it has jumped reasonably well today. Just caught one or two out. So the leader at the moment, Nicolas Tuzon, Diablo Month, 25.4. His score cannot be caught. Uh, currently sitting in second is Lara de Lida Kirkamaya, Ducati Darville, 26.6. .6. We will just keep an eye out. Laura Collett, De Capo, 15 penalties for a flag under review. She would go into second if that 15 penalties gets removed. It would also move the British team back up into second in the team standings. At the moment, I would imagine we're looking that that is likely not to be reviewed until the end of cross country because obviously the ground jury would need to consider the footage and they uh, would be concentrating at the moment on the cross country that is still taking place so we'll keep you posted as Selena Milnes and Cooley Snapchat come to the final fence this has been a very very good round from this combination who I have no doubt we will see and hear a lot more of in the future three seconds inside 29.9, she goes into fifth. She will be at least top 10 overnight. But nothing to add to that dressage score. Uptra Diva. Oh, big jump in. But uh, holds the line. Oh, 
did hold the line, then she just went down on her nose, which was a real shame for her. Just stumbled on landing and actually is going to get a technical 20 penalties for having had to turn a circle. And he did a really good job to sit tight there because actually got the uh, jump in, got the first of those skinnies, which are the two most influential parts of that water fence just stumbled we're going to see it again let's watch it through so big jump in lands quite steeply but still gets a good line to the second of those brushes goes into the water just drops and actually just trips slightly and uh, did very well to stay on board the horse did very well to keep herself upright as well so uh, an unfortunate 20 penalties for technically crossing their tracks but they uh, will continue on. Global Quest, Georgie Campbell. Beautifully done at the first water. Picture of concentration. Georgie, who... Uh, I'm sure has five star aspirations with this horse in the future. As now, Chris Verka, Guantanamo van Alsingen for Belgium. Our latest to get underway. Belgium have had a good day at the office, in fact. Currently sitting in second in the Team Nations Cup standings. Oh, new ferry Jägermeister just ducks out to the left-hand side with Stephen Smith at the second of the open corners. And actually will come round to represent. It's such a difficult fence to represent to here. Um, yeah, ducks out again. And unfortunately, I think Stephen going to pop his hand up and decide to call it a day. So, Chris Vayaka goes on to the uh, double of Trakanas as uh, very nearly home. Patrick Martin Byrne, Uttarad Diva, just have the final fence left to go. And uh, they pop it very nicely. So, come on safely through the finish flags. All still looking full of running. So we've still got a few combinations that could challenge in terms of top 10 positions overnight. Felix Etzel, TSF Polar Tans, one to look out for. Laura Collett, Sportsfield Freelance, another. Marcio George, Col 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 Coltrim Kit Kat could also slot into the top 10. And Bastia de la Bay, Luc Chateau, another. Arn Bergendahl, Chekovic. Away on course. It's just uh, getting confirmation through that actually Patrick Martin Byrne, Uttrad Cooley being awarded 20 penalties down at the water. Continue to check that. The live scores continuously updated. Do check the official scoreboards at the end of today for the final scores on the board. Breck and Stella have uh, the individual standings, the uh, Dutch National Championship standings, and of course the Nations Cup team standings as well. There's a couple of 15 penalties under review which may also change things a little bit later on. Of course, if anything happens throughout the day, we will keep you up to date. But let's focus on the competition in hand at the moment. All of the individuals coming forward throughout the rest of today. This morning's focus was on the team riders. They all take place. They all take part in the same competition as individual riders. But the team riders actually 
have just drawn at the start of the order. And so they came forward in the early part of the draw. Georgie Campbell, Global Quest. have been having a really, really fun cross-country round. Boldly into the water. Clever footwork. A couple of horses just have been a little bit surprised, actually, to come over the mound and see the water for the second time. It's quite a, an unusual and unique obstacle. But Georgie did a really good job through there. She's on a score coming forward of 33.5. Here's a replay of Georgie coming to the water very boldly in. She did a really good job to keep her balance as well. Kept the reins long, but kept the contact. And actually the horse, very clever, just chipped in an extra little third stride. And it's interesting, you know, sometimes cross-country riding won't ever be perfect. It's got to be reactive and... Uh, Sometimes, like that, it does look pretty perfect. Um, couldn't really have done that much better, to be fair, Georgie, if she watched it back. But you've got to ride what's underneath you, what's in front of you, and uh, as things happen. So Chris Viaka and Guantanamo van Olsingen through the first water, 8A and B, as away from the start. Mathieu Chambard, Big Boss Milo. For France. 30.5 this combination starting school. Well, 30.5 yesterday had you just inside the top 25. A 30.5 right this very moment would have you pretty close to sitting inside the top 10 overnight. That is how much the leaderboard has shaken up during cross country day. Back up, Google Guantanamo van Olsingen. As Georgie Campbell going to be uh, very close to the time, possibly just sneak one or two seconds over. Global Quest comes through the finish. It's been a really class round from this duo. Some uh, four seconds over the time, 35.1 her total score. And uh, that will see them go into the top 15 at the moment. So Good job done here on cross country for Georgie Campbell. Matthew Shomba and that big boss Milo. And the uh, two big trichanas. Absolutely enormous great ditches under both of those. world-renowned equestrian journalist Tilly Berent will be delighted that she has been caught on camera on her phone no doubt sending important updates back to eventing nation HQ slightly uncomfortable jump the first of those skinnies Really nicely done there for Chris Vayaka. As about to come under starters orders. Number 83, Adrian Smulders and Ikau for the Netherlands. 39.2 their starting score. And the Dutch crowd so enthusiastic but particularly for their home nation riders. You can hear the whoops and the cheers already. I think the whoops and the cheers also get louder as the day progresses here in Bukalo. It's wonderful to see so many people out enjoying a day's sport. The sun is shining. 
plenty of Buffalo Cross Country days. The sun has not been shining, but thankfully this weekend, the weather absolutely on side. Stiff breeze, warm enough weather, but not too warm. Pretty much ideal cross country conditions. Quick check back over his shoulder for uh, Arne Bergendahl, just to make sure that the pins or the mim clips were safely in their place, which they were. So, Chris Viaka and then Guantanamo Van Olsingen coming towards home. There's going to be a few time penalties to add, but it's otherwise been a very good round from this combination. Just be uh, 26, 27 seconds over the time. 43.7 is the score that they will take forwards to tomorrow's show jumping, which of course we will be showing live for you. So Guantanamo van Alsingen and Chris Vajaka continue a very good day at the office for the Belgian combinations here in Buccalo. Arne Bergendahl. Djakovic. Drop down really neatly into the water. And actually, if you don't get a huge jump into the water, your distance comes up for the first of those skinnies really well. And he did a good job there. Lovely pat down the neck for the horse as well. As we get a lovely overview shot of um, big boss Milo, Mathieu Chambard, heading at the early part of their round. Just getting confirmation, actually. Chris Vayaka, Guantanamo, Van Olsingham, being awarded uh, 20 penalties. As Arne Bergendahl is still on a clear. So, next away from the start will be Declan Cullen with ultimate quality. 36.1, this combination scored in the first phase. Way from the start box, daughter Kitty has been making some waves in the international eventing scene this year as well, really making a name for herself. Declan, who's enjoyed some good days here at Buccalow in the past, with horses such as Sivaganash and others. So, kicking on towards home, Arne Bergendahl. He's got some um, 20 seconds to get back. Still two fences to go. He's not going to be a million miles away from the time. Actually, with Chekovic. Just has the last to go. Pops it very nicely, comfortably inside. Stops the clock, 10.03. 32.4 is his total score. It's just another update for you, actually, on uh, Chris Vayaka, Guantanamo, Van Olsingham. They've been given clear at the water in terms of jumping, but have been awarded a missed flag. There was a slight moment that the ground jury probably going to be looking back on later. So we'll keep you updated with that. But Declan Cullen, ultimate quality, coming to the two big Tricanas. I'm sure he spent... A uh, few days on the hunting fields in Ireland over the years that those uh, two ditches probably look relatively small. And that, let me assure you, they absolutely aren't. Matthew Chomba, big boss Milo. Lovely drop down into the water. Really well done through there in the crowd, absolutely showing their appreciation. So, Declan Cullen and uh, Ultimate Quality 
the early part of their round. Adrian Ditcham, the course designer here in Buccalo, has uh, made a couple of tweaks to this year's track that just make it a little bit more flowing. The cross-country time of 10 minutes and 6 seconds has been very achievable, actually, throughout today. But I would say, as well, that's helped by the optimal conditions. It's certainly been a course that's caused plenty of problems. Takes the flag, loses a stirrup for that brush corner, but should be okay there. Big boss Milo. Mathieu Chambin. Ooh, that horse did a very, very, very clever job of getting them out of a spot of bother at the bottom of the bank. Cross country riding, as we say, it's rare that everything goes perfectly. Sometimes you need to react and adapt, and that horse absolutely did. Declan Cullen. Through the sunken road, absolutely no problems at all. There's Adrian Smulders. Andy Cow. Through both elements of the uh, big double of corners. Mathieu Chambin is heading towards home with Big Boss Milo. And actually, this has been a really, really smart round from this combination. They uh, come here having had some good form this year. They won the three-star long in Linear at the end of last season, stepped up to four-star this year third in Cronenberg on the four-star short debut then uh, jumped a great double clear in Cronenberg actually in the uh, long format four-star at the beginning of March second in Orp Le Grand as part of their preparation for this would be one of the best show jumpers in the field on a clear streak of uh, seven clear rounds in a row so look out for them tomorrow 43.3 is their score that they will be taking forwards. So, Adrian Smulders coming to the final water. Actually, that extra little stride the horse put in before the big brush drop was uh, not unhelpful. Just to give you an update on the Dutch National Championship as well. Only one person to go on course that could overhaul Meryl Blom Holzman in the top spot. She currently leads for Saiv de Viron on a 37.9, ahead of Yannicka Boonschkei. I'm special N on 40.0. Marta van Riel is the one to look out for with Epo, who will be heading out on course a little bit later on in the final session of cross country. There's Max Warburton just uh, waiting down at the start and uh, is away with uh, Deer Park Revelry. Should have as well Raphael Koshé, Difter Duveri out on course. We'll look out for them in a second. They are clear of the first four. and Cullum and Ultimate Quality also on course. So four combinations actually out on course at the moment. Adrian Smulders a cow the furthest round. This is uh, Difta Duveri, Raphael Koshé, the winners of the Nations Cup in Avanche. Good job on keeping his line for that final brush corner. Adrian Smulders and a cow heading towards the final fence. He's looking not a million miles away from the clock as well, actually. Just possibly going to sneak a couple of seconds over. But it's been a really good round from this duo in the cross country. And I'm sure he will be absolutely thrilled with that five seconds over 41.2 and a casual fist bump. The supporters less casual in uh, their celebrations. Don't you love to see it? So much 
hard work, blood, sweat and tears goes into every single horse and rider competing up the levels. And it's such a, a cause for celebration, as we all know with horses, not everything goes to plan all of the time. You've got to celebrate the good times. Max Warburton, Deer Park Revelry, on a score of 33.1. Max really making a name for himself. He's got a, a good team of horses, very, very busy yard as well. And there's a horse that was originally bought out by Leila Pasque. Declan Cullen. Oh, oh, another to just run into a bit of bother. Actually, in the second of those waters, did very well to stay on board. And he's coming round to represent to the slightly longer alternative. Now, those fences are separately numbered. So that's 21A and B. It would obviously be up to the uh, fence judge to judge as to whether he had presented. We will watch this space in terms of the live scoring. We'll take another look at it, though. Jumps in very well. Economically and cleverly. Gets a lovely shot over the middle brush. And then just stumbles as he goes into the water. I think sometimes the second bit of water just catches a horse by surprise. I have a feeling he shouted going long. Now, that's quick thinking from him. We'll wait to watch the live scores. And actually did a good job there at the bank. So, next away from the start, it is a combination that could challenge the top few on the leaderboard. Can't challenge the very top, but could go third with a fast clear. Felix Etzel, TSF Politans, they were top 10 overnight. 28.4, the score they bring forward. But given today's dramas, they could uh, capitalise and move up the leaderboard with a fast clear. If you're just tuning in and you're wondering what happened to Yulia Krajewski, our leader after dressage, well, Nickel 21, unfortunately, they took a tumble in the final water, both up on their feet unhurt after the fall, but that did end their day. And with it, actually, the day of the German Nations Cup team as well, because uh, two of their riders not completing meant that the German team who led off to dressage actually dropped away from contention. Uh, France are the team to beat at the moment in the Nations Cup. They lead going in to tomorrow. So Max Warburton, Deer Park Revelry. Combination who went so, so well at Blenheim in the eight, nine-year-old class as part of their preparation for Buccalo. Oh, slightly uncomfortable jump at the last for Declan Cullen, who uh, looks like he uh, enjoyed that round. Big cheers from the family. And uh, we'll update you with details of the scoring Control the water when it does come through but Declan Cullen is home safely with uh, ultimate quality so heading to the uh, three-quarter mark of an absolutely marathon day of uh, cross-country action here in Bugalo we do hope you're enjoying all of the coverage so far we will be with you again tomorrow don't forget for the final show jumping phase and uh, we will see who will be stood on top of that Bucalo podium. Nicolas Tuzon and Diablo Month is uh, the one out in front overnight. Hallie Kuhn and Cute Girl, who were second after dressage, they also had a problem out on the cross country, just picked up 20 penalties. So, uh, unfortunately, not their day. But I'm sure their day will come. actually uh, had a French winner here in Buccalo for a little while. The last French winner was Thomas Carlyle, Sirocco de Guerre, back in uh, 2014. Donatian Scholey also won here back in 2010. Nicolas Tuzon could add his name to the list in 2023.
so getting news in that Difter Duvernay and Raphael Koshi have uh, called it a day out on course. Had a problem at the water and Declan Cullen has also been given 20 penalties at the water. This is Felix Etzel, TSF Polar Taps. Felix comes forward on this horse uh, with the first time at the level for the horse, but actually comes here having had some really, really good form. Very interesting combination. They won Stragon the four star short as their final preparation for this. They were uh, top 20 at Le Moulin in the German National Championships. They've had a couple of wins at three star level this year as well. One Montelabretti four star short at the back end of last season two as away from the start uh, Cedric Liard Song de Magai no problems for them at the uh, double of Trichanus at 5A and B Max Warburton Deer Park Revelry Very good job through that final water. Max showing every bit of class. Well, huge credit must be given to the entire teams of course builders who are going to very quickly measure up and replace a small part of uh, 21A but also the volunteers, the fence judges. We've seen a number of them on our coverage throughout the weekend as well. Very grateful. Oh, Deer Park Revelry just ducks out the right-hand side. Sam Warburton did very well to sit tight, actually. Lost both his stirrups, but held on. And uh, possibly just showing a little bit of an experience there, but gets a nice pat down the neck as they jump it at the second time of Arsky. Wouldn't be the only uh, name to have been caught out at that particular fence today. The likes of Yasmin and Janelle Price both picking up 20 penalties there. As, uh, next away, it is the turn of Julian Vergifoss and Florin 06. They come forward on 36.4. We understand Raphael Cochet Difter de Vere. It was actually a fall at the water, at the fence going into the water. So unfortunately, that was why their day ended early. Cedric Liard. No problems at all at the uh, sunken road. While well, Felix Etzel and Politans still looking full of running as they come to the open corners. My German's not very good, but I think that was a good boy. Very pleased with the horse through there. As uh, Max Warburton coming home, he'll be uh, frustrated with that late 20 penalties because he looks like he was on track to make the time as well but Deer Park Revelry has taken pretty much everything else Bukolo has thrown at him in his stride and certainly looks like a really exciting horse for the future and uh, just uh, an unfortunate 20 to add to their day today so Max Warburton 62.7 sees him in 55th place overnight as we have just a couple to go before the final short break of the day in the four-star long format here in Bukalo. TSF Politans, very smart jump in to the water. Really clever with his footwork, this little horse. And I think it's safe to say Felix absolutely loving this round and so he should because getting a great feeling 
punches the air with delight as he goes away from the water. This looks like a really, really cool horse to watch out for for the future. And it is so interesting. Buccalo has thrown up some great horses over the years. The likes of Nicola Wilson's Bulana actually went very, very well here and then went on to get an individual medal at the Europeans in Stragom the following year. Andrew Nicholson and Kimbo went well here and then went on to win Kentucky the following spring. Uh, Tim Price and Happy Boy, who uh, won here last year, are headed to Poe in just a couple of weeks' time. Who knows? Could be uh, on track to make a very, very happy story there. Here is uh, wife Janelle about to head out on course. Her second ride of the day. She had a good spin earlier with Senor Crocodillo. Another to have just picked up 20 penalties coming down the belt bank. And the brush at the bottom just catching her out. Clever Louis, a horse that uh, has actually been second here previously with Australia's Chris Burton on board. But hasn't had uh, so much international exposure over the last couple of days. Here's Felix Etzel coming towards home. TSF Politans just got to set up for the final two fences. Quick check of the watch on a very good score of 28.4. Could go into third on the leaderboard. Comes through the finish and looks to be comfortably inside. What a very, very exciting combination for Germany these two are because they have put in one of the rounds of the day on the cross country three seconds inside the time and Felix Etzel looks like he enjoyed every single moment of that TSF Polar Tans did a super job as well the team quickly on hand to help Felix but uh, we'll look forward to seeing them in the jumping tomorrow Julian Vergefoss, very comfortably through the sunken road. As uh, Cedric Liard. Oh, had to work hard to get his line to the skinny element there, but the horse saw the flags and jumped them. So important at home in training, no matter what level you are training at really to try and use flags as part of your training because you want your horses to learn to look for them to look and jump between them that's clever louis 13 years of age by Sircon, owned by cheddington equestrian mr and mrs guy who actually own the base cheddington where tim and janelle moved to at the start of this year and this horse had a bit of time off at the back end of last season. It was campaigned by Bobby Upton after Chris Burton went to a pure show jumping. But Janelle has taken on the ride this season. So Cedric Liard, Song de Magai. Good work through the uh, tricky brush wells at 26A and B. Just over a minute left on the clock at this stage of the course. And it's a bit of a tricky part of the course as well because you sort of gallop past the finish area as such and then you come back to it. So horses could just get a little bit confused. Clever Louis very nicely through that. This horse hasn't done two international runs this year with Janelle. Clear cross country on both of them, south of England, Little Down, but very, very slowly on both. I always think it's uh, quite an achievement when your cross country time penalties manage to overtake your dressage penalties. But that's obviously been a very tactical decision. It's Julian. Really nice straight line through those double of corners. Cedric Liard just going to pick up a few time penalties. Clears the last. And uh, will be some 
14 seconds or so over 40.6 the total for him and looks pretty pleased with that cross-country round so uh, it's been a good day at the office for the French here actually moments ago we just saw Julian Vergifoss and Flora 06 popping very neatly over the uh, double of corners and actually looks like he's just elected to pull up and call it a day decided something isn't quite right very quickly to attend to the horse and big pats for him they'll be uh, checked out by a brilliant team of vets that they have on, on site at Bukalo and uh, will very, very quickly get the help that is needed. But huge horsemanship from Julian to enable to get the horse uh, off the track and the help that is required as soon as possible. And we wish them all the very, very best for the rest of the day. Julian showing great horsemanship. And it's always difficult, isn't it? You know, the heat of the moment, you're in the middle of a cross-country round. And uh, just knowing your horse, knowing that something might not quite be right. Members of the crowd stepping in to help a little bit as well. But the horse really calm. And they'll have everything they need I'm sure very, very quickly as Janelle Price and Clever Louis. He's a really strong horse, Clever Louis. Oh, first part of the MIM device does get activated. So that has changed the formation of the fence. And so will be 11 penalties to add to uh, their total score. We just get a chance to see that again. Just left the front leg, front left four. We're straight for the second of those. You see Janelle just checking back over her shoulder. She'd have heard the pin. The mim clips can really jangle. They make your nerves jangle, I think, as a rider as well. But ultimately, they're there to do a job. They're there to make sure that this course is as safe as it possibly can be and on the corners you have yellow pins so depending on the type of fence that you have and you can see they're very quick and easy to put back in place but depending on the type of fence that you have um, it depends on the type of pin and it's all to do with force and physics and some very 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 clever science as to what activates them but ultimately it's to keep the sport as safe as it possibly can be but you see the yellow pins on corner obstacles and you see the red pins on more of a vertical or an oxer like I think we just saw in the background there of that oxer before Janelle came to the water oh and another to have just unfortunately stumbled in the second part of the water and brilliant to see both horse and Ryder up on their feet. Janelle is a very, very tough cookie, but she is a great horsewoman as well because she was all about making sure Clever Louie had all of the attention. And you can see there as well, actually, the uh, appropriate help has got to Julian Vergifoss out on course also. So, this is how the competition is shaping up. Nicolas Toussaint, Diablo Month, 25.4 is the score that will be leading going into tomorrow's show. Jumping Laura de Lida Kirkenmeyer, Ducati Darville, 26.6. And Felix Etzel, TSF Politans, in third. But look at that a little bit further on down the leaderboard. There has been massive movement all the way through this uh, very dramatic cross country day. And uh, the Belgian team have had a good day at the office. They currently sit in second in the uh, Nations Cup. Germany, unfortunately, falling away from contention, having led the dressage. And France have dominated the cross country today. They uh, stand on the top spot in not only the individual standings with Nicolas Touzon, but also in the team standings as well. So we have got a couple of minutes break now. 
chance to go and grab a drink, a cup of tea, have a lie down in a darkened room for 10 minutes, whatever you need. But do join us because we will be back with the final session of Cross Country. Marcio George and uh, Cool Coltrum Kit Kat will be out on course at in around nine minutes time. So we'll be back with you very soon.
Voor al die tussenstanden, wij krijgen zo dadelijk weer de stad in beeld van het internationale welwinstel. We wachten op de start van de Jaguar Prensen weer, Axios Carvalho, Jarge, die op 14 uur 31 van start gaat. Het is de goede wedstrijd voor 29,2 en het stopt aan de wedstrijd op plaats van 14, maar dat is het resultaat dat gaat de Lille in de klas te brengen. Als u hier in het landschap praat, in de wijk van de Nederlandse loopt, loopt dan ook in Zinkers richting het Hofstadion voor de eerste ver plaats te zien en te beleven. Even kijken op de shoppen, even kijken op de praten. Wij wachten op de volgende start op een minuutje, dat is het zover, dat start op de deelneming. Voor de laatste onderdeel van het stuk van Groeien, dus van Gelder is de Corfie Zwijder en de KBR. Het is dan altijd tijd voor de laatste van Groeien weer zijn op de grote band tussen de aanvallen. En weer verschuiving en twee stappen in het klassement. Wij hebben nu altijd wat we aan toe zeggen, de band die je in 2006 hier al de ontvoer van Gelder en de RSD op zijn naam is te schrijven. Toen nog bij de Tatsjou. Dat jaar het belangrijke van de Nationaal Club en de Nationaal Club voor het Duitse team. Dat hebben we dus op 2006. So we are back up and uh, running here at Boogaloo for the final session of Cross Country. Great to um, be back with you for these final few competitors. Another probably an hour and a half just under of Cross Country action to bring your way. And it has been a day full of drama, full of thrills and full of spills as well. Plenty of action over the last few hours means that the leaderboard remains uh, is well is largely totally different to how it started the day our overnight leader Yulia Krajewski and Nickel 21 they had a, a fall in the water right at the uh, latter part of the track and unfortunately that ended their day uh, and it also took Germany out of contention in the Nations Cup because they had been in the lead after dressage but uh, two of their riders not completing dropped them well down the order France however have capitalized Nicolas Toussaint leads the individual competition Diablo Month 25.4 and France also lead the Nations Cup so 
what does the last hour or so of action have in store for us? We're about to find out. Marcio Georges and Kilcoltrim Kit Kat on a very good score of 29.2. And actually could go into fifth with a fast clear this combination. Owned by uh, Alistair and Helen Mordaunt. Alistair and Annabelle Veer Nickel alongside Marcio himself. 29.2 their starting score. And actually Marcio heading out to Chile for the Pan American Games to compete for Team Brazil in a few weeks' time. We'll be riding Castle Howard Casanova there. The uh, Pan American Games now uh, takes place with a four star long format dressage and show jumping. And then a three star long format cross country. Brazil still looking for a qualifying ticket for Paris. There are two on offer in Chile. And I understand some 10 or so teams looking to make their mark. The United States of America, they've already got their team ticket. So. Uh, the other two big nations that will be, I think, among the favourites to take the qualifying tickets, Brazil and, of course, uh, Canada as well. Well, I have to say, huge credit goes to the wonderful, wonderful crowds who have helped with Florin 06 and Julian Vergafoss, who unfortunately pulled up out on the cross country because plenty of people have gone out of their way to make sure they had all of the help that they needed and uh, rest assured that the horse will be in the best possible hands now. But uh, great horse people coming to Bukalo. Wonderful, wonderful members of our community. And uh, we are very, very fortunate to enjoy such a fantastic eventing community that it is. So... Who are the ones to look out for in this final session of cross country? You've got the likes of Laura Collett and uh, Sportsfield Freelance, Izzy Taylor, SBH Big Wall, and uh, Laura Delidekirk and Myers, third round. She's had two rounds already, both inside the time. Can she make it three from three? And quite a day to remember. We will certainly be looking forward to seeing her out on course a little bit later on. Marcio George at the moment on his way to the water which we will come to here and this was a fence that really caused plenty of discussion among the riders coming into the the weekend because actually it comes at about three minutes and it's probably the first major major question well it will be the first major major question but actually it's jumped really well you've got that run down into the water the left-handed option is the direct route, and that's definitely been the most popular. We've only seen one person take the, the right-handed route. They jumped it very well, but you have to jump two big brush corners as opposed to just the one. And that brush corner at the exit, which we'll see in a second, does come up a fairly steep ramp. Perhaps doesn't quite do it justice on the camera screen, and, and certainly how well people have been jumping it just a hold at the start. Robbie Kearns, Pisco Sour will be the next to get underway. Marcio George and uh, Kilcoltrum Kit Kat clear through to six. That's uh, all of the information that we've got on them. So in theory, they should be coming into sight in just a couple of moments' time. And actually, he's been held on course as well. I wonder whether that might be because uh, Julian Vergifoss's horse is being transported off course. It could be that they perhaps need to get the trailer back across the course. And the easiest way and the safest way to do that is to just hold the course imminently. Of course, I pure speculation just an educated guess as to what might be happening but we will of course keep you updated as far as we know nothing has happened with kill culture and kit kat marcio george they've just been held at fence seven so what happens in situations such as this is actually robbie kearns has been held down at the start so there's a traffic light system in so much as cross-country control have a red light and a green light and essentially cross-country start also have a red light and a green light. Now, if there is a green light, then cross-country start can continue to send horses out of the start box. If for any reason there's a red light, then 
they do not send horses out of the start box. And what normally happens is if there is an incident on course or for any reason the course needs to be held, uh, the cross-country controller will hit the red light, first of all, and that quite often makes a buzz down at the start just to draw the attention to those around. Um, and basically, when a red light is on, it is essentially the same as a traffic light. No horses can leave that start box. As soon as the course is safe to be reopened, the cross-country controller who is in charge of this situation will then put the green light back on. So Robbie Kearns is waiting down at the start. Marcio George, who's been held out on course, has been held at fence seven. Uh, which I would imagine is one of the pre-selected stopping fences, which is selected by the cross-country control team alongside the officials coming into the event. And what happens for every single horse that approaches every single fence, regardless of the level at which they are competing and regardless of uh, where in the world they are competing at, the system remains largely the same all over the world. They fence judges actually take a time for every single horse that approaches their fence coming past a, a point of reference so it might be another fence it might be a, a natural element like a tree and they take that time for every horse if they are then given the instruction from cross-country control to stop that horse they make sure that they have taken the time while the horse has passed their marker in front of their fence it's normally 50 plus yards away at full competition speeds, they've taken that time. They then flag the horse down and the horse is held on course. Now, when a horse is held on course, they're out of the competition, essentially. The rider can dismount, they can chat, they can have a drink, they can loosen their girth, they can talk to the fence judge, whatever it may be. Quite often, if it's a lengthy hold, members of their team will make it out to the fence as well. Uh, and the first thing that is done is really the fence judge will give the rider an indication of how long that hold is likely to be. More often than not, it's only a short hold. Uh, but sometimes it can be a little bit more lengthy and um, basically they will then be out of the competition until the course is safe to be restarted and when they can be restarted they're sent back past their timing marker at full competition speed and they will have been given time to warm back up by cross-country control and everything before they restart. They then take a restart time, the fence judge, and that time they've been held for out on course is then deducted from their total time out on course in order to give a held time and in order for their appropriate cross-country time to be calculated. So it's a pretty good system and it's one that all of the fence judges will be very well trained in. It's one that plenty will have had lots of practice in as well. The riders will always try and stop their stopwatch if they see themselves being pulled up uh, and then they would restart it at roughly the same point that they stopped it at. Obviously there's a little room for error there in so much as how quickly they can stop it and how accurate they are but uh, as a fence judge's process it is very very accurate and very reliable in terms of making sure that the competition is fair so that is what is going on at the moment ultimately at the end of the day horse and rider welfare always the utmost priority and uh, that really will take first priority and the course will not restart until everybody is uh, ready for it to be restarted. Uh, so that is uh, a number of chef de keeps all uh, having a chat about what is going on and uh, I'm sure we'll be feeding information back to their riders who will be waiting in the warm-up, unsure as to whether they continue on with their warm-up or just really trying to figure out exactly how long this hold is going to be. We don't know, so we will confirm it for you if we find out any more information. But in the meantime, let's just remind ourselves of the leaderboard as to how things are shaping up because we had such an action-packed morning with the riders from the Nations Cup teams coming forward early on in the draw. Uh, so this morning was uh, mostly the team riders coming forwards and it is France who are out in front. Nicolas Touzon and Diablo Month lead the individual competition 25.4. That is because Yulia Krajewski, Nickel 21, who led the dressage, they had a fall in the water. And Hallie Kuhn and Cute Girl, who were second after uh, dressage, they had picked up 20 penalties. So look, we are restarted here. Marcio George and Kilcoltrum Kit Kat for Brazil are uh, back underway. So it was just a short hold out on course. The uh, green light has gone back on at the start. So Robbie Kearns will be underway as well. And it, it's always one of those moments, it's never ideal to be held 
on course of course it isn't but actually for for riders of any level of competition it's imperative that you know exactly what what to do what you can do what you're allowed to do and also in terms of knowing actually how your horse responds it's a very useful thing actually to have happened at some point to be able to react to it in the future laura collett when she won badminton in 2022 with london 52 was held on course had never been held on course in the horse's entire career so there's that unknown quantity whereas you can be sure that marcio george will have uh, logged that away as to how kill culture and kitkat has come back after that short hold albeit very early on in their round so robbie kearns just uh, having a chat down at the start with Dag Albert who uh, looks after the Irish team he will be heading back for a final bit of warm up just before he starts his cross country round we've got pretty much perfect conditions here for cross country today it has been dry, optimal ground conditions as well, it should be said. Lots of people enjoying their day out. They expect around 60,000 fans to come to Bookalo. The majority of them would be here on Cross Country Day. So uh, Marcio George will come back into sight in just a second. He disappears after that water off to the uh, triple bars at 14, which we don't actually get a vision of on our screens. But has only caught one or two out so far today. He is clear through there, so we'll see him come back into sight at the open corners. the enormous network of officials of volunteers do an incredible job in putting on this event every year as they do with so many other big events there's always an organizing team and a volunteer committee who absolutely go above and beyond so for brazil marcio covalho jorge and kill coltrum kit kat Found the four strides there actually came up quite easily for him. You could almost see Marcio just in the middle of that combination, just took a half halt and said, whoa, a second, because actually the distance came up very, very quickly. So Robbie Kearns just making his final preparation down at the start with Pisco Sauer. And actually the horse looks like stayed pretty calm, pretty relaxed. These horses know exactly what is about to unfold. And you can see him just poised, ready to press his stopwatch. As the starter prepares to send him out on course. And away he goes. So, Robbie Kearns, second ride of the day for him. And Pisco Sauer comes forward on 35.0. This horse owned by Avery Klunick. Robbie represents Ireland as Marcio George. To kill Coltrim Kit Kat. At the final water. Easily done through that. So it comes 
to this bank that we've seen in many forms here, the Belt Bank at Buckalow over the years. But it always catches a few people out and it's had some pretty high profile scalps today as well. The likes of Janelle Price, Yaz Miningham, Laura Collett actually has been awarded 15 penalties there. That is uh, no doubt going to go under review by the ground jury, I would imagine, at the end of the day. But it is still very much on her card at the moment. Robbie Kurtz. Again, does not even blink at those two enormous ditches underneath those tricanas. As waiting down at the start for the United States of America, it is Tiana Coudre and D'Artagnan. Tiana comes forward as number 315 in terms of her bridal number, 93 the number she wears on her back. 32.5 her starting score. So Robbie Kearns and uh, Pisco Sauer are away to the first water in just a moment. Just see them have to make that loop back the early part of the course. And actually just getting news in that Marcio George Kilcoltrum Kit Kat have been stopped out on course and it is now showing as eliminated. So that is at fence 25. The officials well within their rights to uh, pull a horse up on course if there's anything that they feel they need to take a closer look at. I won't speculate on what that could be, but uh, I'm sure all will be uh, looked at. And uh, certainly they look to be going very happily when we saw them. So Tiana Coudre and D'Artagnan is uh, away. It's a really, really smart young horse. As I say, he comes forward on 32.5 as we go back to Robbie Kearns and Avery Clunix, Pisco Sour for Ireland. Very well done through that sunken road, which has caused absolutely no problems to date. Jumped very, very well throughout. quick check of his watch as he lands over the uh, ditch and brush at 14 that's where the four minute marker would come up so perhaps watch just beeped at him uh, d'artagnan tiana kudre for the united states of america this nine-year-old by diamond de Semily, owned by tiana alongside annabelle james they were in 41st place after cross country a fast clear now would see them go into 13th on the live leaderboard that is just how influential the cross country has been today. So Robbie Kearns, the furthest round with Pisco Sour. He's clear through to uh, 12. Tiana Kudre and D'Artagnan more at the early part of their round. So many people out enjoying all of the hospitality on offer in Bukalo this weekend. And it's a really, really intense venue for lots of these horses because there is so much going on in cross country day. Next to get underway will be Lexi Killfeather and Lord of the Morning for Ireland. They come forward on 36.7. that uh, as I say bring forward 36.7 and left them in 84th place after dressage this 12 year old by Sandro Hit, owned by Everina Kilfeather just 24 years of age Lexi and she is away so uh, 
Sees a good stride, a positive stride to the first. And then very quickly wind their way out towards the countryside. Hear the whistles in the background. The whistles, of course, are blown to warn people of an approaching horse and rider combination. So that quite often warns the gate crossing stewards as well track crossing stewards as well I should say as here's Tiana Kudre D'Artagnan first water make light work of that Tiana who represented the United States at the London Olympic Games back in 2012 had that wonderful horse Ringwood Magister but she's actually got some really really smart horses in her string at the moment Kankara's girl at the five-star level. And then this, a young horse that she has very high hopes for. Top 25 at Blenheim in the eight and nine-year-old class. Having just stepped up to four-star level this season. Robbie Kerr's picture of concentration. With Pisco Sauer. Is clear of the open corners. Lexi Killfeather and Lord of the Morning finished second in the three star in Liz Garvin. Really exciting new international event in Ireland in Carlo back in August. Actually went to Ballon Dennis for the long format four star last year finished at top five there oh and another oh sit tight Robbie Kearns goodness gracious me now what does he do here so he is going to come round to the other B element which he gets some very quick thinking now, we will wait to see how the fence judge judges that as to whether he was judged to have presented. Uh, I would presume he wouldn't. So uh, he would have, uh, I think. So Lexi Killfeather puts the first of those waters behind her. Robbie Kearns marked as clear through the water. So that was, uh, well, I say marked as clear, was marked as clear. Now some of those boxes have uh, been left empty. We'll come back to that to confirm in a second. Lexi does a really good job through that combination as Robbie Kearns, Pisco Sour, heading on towards home. Robbie, really, really talented young Irish rider. Ireland actually have a plethora of really smart young riders coming up through the grades. The likes of Robbie, the likes of Ian Cassells. Putting lots of competition on for team places as well. And he's going to come home with a few time penalties to add. But uh, a very, very good round from uh, Pisco Sour. And he is home safely. So we've probably got 20 or so combinations left to start the cross country here. 44.2 Robbie Kearns has been judged as clear as things stand at the moment. 
so 20 or so combinations left to go but still a few places inside the top 10 that uh, need to be filled out so lots to play for lovely bold jump in from d'artagnan of tiana kudre got in very close to that skinny but actually the horse was very very clever and got themselves out of any potential bother right away from the start now rose nesbitt for great britain rose rides eg michael angelo on a score of 31.7 a 12 year old by Chelthago Z, owned by Rose alongside John and Francesca Nesbitt. Fourteen different nations represented in total here this weekend. As Tiana Kudre and D'Artagnan kick on towards home. Robbie Kearns has been confirmed as clear through the water there so very quick thinking from him probably just cost him those few penalties of time oh, as uh, our latest to get underway is Brandon schaefer Garau and Freiland Frieda so just wasting a couple of seconds at the start there and Frieda keen to get on with the task at hand coming forward for Germany on a score of 34.6 riding as individuals all of the combinations now coming forward this afternoon coming forward as individuals because all of the Nations Cup team riders rode at the start of the draw earlier on today of which you can go back and watch it all on demand at your fingertips so Tiana Kudre, D'Artagnan Point four of a penalty for every second over the time, but what a smart nine-year-old this horse is. She's going to be some seven seconds over the time. So that is uh, 2.8 time penalties. And uh, that gives her a score of 35.3. Still sees her go inside the top 20 as things stand at the moment. Back to Rose Nesbitt for Great Britain. Kill Feather, Lord of the Morning. Really neatly done through the double of uh, open corners. This comes up at fence uh, 17 A and B, and it certainly caused plenty of problems. Froilem Frieda. That score of 34.6 in the first phase to come forward to the cross country. <laughs> very, very confidently clear of those big ditch trichanas. Lord of the Morning, quite clever in jumping into the water there and actually Lexi want to take the right-handed route but then go direct at the other couple of fences did a good job there as here is Izzy Taylor underway for Great Britain with SBH at Big Wall this an eight-year-old by Puissance owned by Jane, Jane Timmis Just dropped back to trot and uh, unfortunately Lord of the Morning just said no at the top of the bank that's a real shame for Lexi Kilfeather she's gonna elect to take the longer route still has to jump a similar fence on top of the bank and actually does get it this time just uh, Heading on towards home. They've got six or so jumping efforts left to go.
lovely expression on this mare's face. Absolutely loving her job. As we go back to Rose Nesbitt riding as an individual for Team GB. E.G. Michelangelo, the horse that has taken her up to the five-star level. So, Lexi Kilfeather and uh, Lord of the Morning looking to complete uh, the cross country of their first bookalo. They are carrying 20 penalties from that stop at the top of the mound, but uh, they've put that behind them. And just have the last to go. Clear of the final fence. So come through the finish flags to complete. They are safely home. So, three combinations out on course. Rose Nesbitt, E.G. Michelangelo, Brandon schaefer Garau, and uh, Froilem Frieda, and Izzy Taylor, SBH Big Wall. They're the three uh, on course, and we're going to join Rose Nesbitt. Coming to this influential water. They know each other so well, these two. They were top ten at Little Downham on their final preparation for coming here. They were top 20 at Bramham this year as well. Completed badminton last year. As away from the start goes uh, for France, Luc Chateau, Bastia de la Baie on a very good score of 29.8. So one definitely to keep an eye on in terms of the leaderboard here. Could go into sixth with a fast clear. 12-year-old uh, by Propriano de la Baie, owned by Alhara de Chateau and uh, Laurie Sadro. Luke rode this horse's sire to the uh, top level of the sport as well, Propriano de la Baie, as Rose Nesbitt. Just has two jumping efforts remaining. Ten minutes and six seconds the optimum time. She's not going to quite make it. going to be a few seconds over. Not going to be a million miles away. Pops the final fence. And we'll come home to complete. So, round uh, 10 seconds over the time. Four time penalties, 35.7. And that will see her stay inside the top 20 on the leaderboard at the moment. Froilem Frieda. And then Schaefer Gural. Very keen. Athletic at the water. I think it's safe to say this mare absolutely loves cross country because she knew where the flags were there and she was going through them. Brandon along for the very, very, very cool ride. I'm sure working very hard as well, but she just absolutely loves her job. Bastia de la Bay and uh, Luke Chateau with them as they come to the double of Trocanas. Oh, almost put the brakes on and uh, just got right underneath the second of those. But he got away with it. And unfortunately, another to actually run into problems at the top of the bank. That's two that we've seen in as many horses. And actually, we haven't seen a problem at the top of the bank pretty much all day. Froilem Freida and... Uh, Brandon Schaefer Grau, unfortunately, just uh, grinding to a halt. So 20 penalties. They'll come round to represent at the alternative. And does get it this time. So 
So away from the start is our latest combination to join us out on course. Lara de Lida Kirkenmeyer for Belgium with formidable 62. Comes forward on 31.7. This horse owned by Irene Takel, nine years of age by four edition. It's back to Luke Chateau. So athletic up that step in the one stride. Izzy Taylor, SBH Big Wall, this eight year old who finished uh, just off the podium in the eight-year-old in the seven-year-old young horse world championships last year the pin has gone at the first of those corners so just caught a knee on the way in over that first corner and actually that has changed the formation of the fence so we'll get 11 penalties there Izzy continues on her way she would have perhaps heard the the jangle of the mim as it went but she didn't look back over her shoulder there's a lot of other noise going on as well. Froilem Frieda 10. And Brandon Schaefer Gorel for Germany. Just the one to go. That frustrating late 20 penalties for them. But they are home safely. And a first full star long format completed as well. Seventy three point four sees him in seventieth on the leaderboard. And of course we'll have all of the jumping for you tomorrow as well. SPH Big Wall. Very mature jump down into the water actually. And is he electing to take the right handed route? Lovely horse this. And very clever to fit in an extra third stride and Izzy gives him a pat down the neck. Waiting down at the start, Laura Collett preparing to get her round underway with uh, Sports Field Freelance. This set uh, a new ride for her, just taken on at the very end of the season. Aoife Clark, who normally pilots Sports Field Freelance on the uh, sidelines through injury, so Laura's taken on the ride on a few of her horses. And just for the last couple of runs of the season on Penny, as she's known at home. Sportsfield Freelance, so Laura riding for Great Britain. This horse, normally a horse that would be piloted in Irish colours. But uh, Laura had a really, really successful season, actually. More international wins than any other British rider so far in the world this year. A very good dressage yesterday of 29.0. Now, a fast clear could see her go into fifth overnight. We'll come back to her in a moment. As SPH Big Wall just starting to get a little bit keen right at the end of uh, his round with Izzy Taylor. She had to work quite hard there just to get her line. Picture of concentration to the uh, final couple of fences. Not going to be a million miles off the clock either. She has those 11 penalties for the uh, frangible device, the corners, and she's going to be some 10, 11, 11 seconds over the time, 45.8. But actually this horse only an eight-year-old, and I think Izzy will be pretty pleased with that, certainly with what might be in store for the future really really smart young horse so back to Luke Chateau really positive attacking ride through all elements there and Bastia de la Bay gets a big pat down the neck Field freelance would only be a 10 year old.
as electing to take the uh, route around the outside of the Christmas trees. It just makes that brush shoulder a little bit more straight on as an option. It's a, not the more comfortable line, but it's a little bit safer. Bastia de la Bay, as there is at Wilbury Wonder Pony, strapped on for a ride with Morgan, not with Morgan Yeriat. That is Morgan Yeriat. Number 101, Baccarat Dargon. Next tip to go. Morgan just preparing to go under starter's orders. Baccarat Dargon gets a reassuring hand down the neck from her supporter and is safely on their way. So, a first uh, four-star long format for uh, Sportsfield Freelance, whereas Baccarat Dargon comes forward with Morgan Yeriat having actually had some good success at the level. They won in Liniere a couple of years ago. They were uh, sixth at Brabham in the under-25 class uh, last year as well. Back to Laura Collins, Sportsfield Freelance. Easily done through there. Laura, who was clear, and well, I say clear, she was inside the time. She's got a 15 penalty flag review. She jumped the fences um, a little bit earlier on. As Laura Delina Kirkamaya sounds like she's enjoying her round with Formidable 62. This is a horse that she thinks so much of. Well, Bastia de la Bay, Luke Chateau is home safely. So they uh, have completed 30.2. That is a very, very good score. And uh, just one second over the time. So. Uh, that sees him on a score of 30.2. Just drops below Cooley Snapchat, Selena Mills, who move up a place. But he will be eighth at worst going forward to the show jumping tomorrow. So Bastia de la Bay, Luc Chateau into the top 10 for France. Oh, and Morgan Yeriat did well to sit tight as Baccarat Dargon just ducked out. Perhaps saw the ditch last minute. And... Uh, didn't fancy taking on the first of those Tricanus. And actually jumps it beautifully second time round. Lara de Lida Kirkamaya, formidable 62, this horse at the level for the first time. And she did a really good dressage test yesterday, actually. Would have been frustrated. I think a flower pot fell down halfway through her test, which just unsettled the mare. So the second half just was a little bit costly but there's obviously a lot there for the future and so far having a good spin cross country as well next to go it is Marta van Riel and Epo for the Netherlands 34.7 the score that they bring forwards and actually in terms of the Dutch national championship class as well they could go out in front if they are fast and clear. They've got a couple of penalties in hand. Ahead of Meryl Blom-Holzman, Vasoiv de Viron on 37.9, who lead the way. Uh, Marta on uh, 34.7 for the Netherlands. So definitely one to look out for in the Dutch National Championship, which is taking place alongside the uh, competition here this weekend. Lara de Lida Kakamaya, formidable 62. Do a good job at the uh, belt bank. And Laura Collett and Sportsfield Freelance motoring as they come to the open corners. And actually, Laura really using her voice as an aid there as well. But felt like she was a little bit off on the distance for the four strides. Asked the mayor to pick up for her. 
and they absolutely did. It's always tricky with a new partnership because you just don't know each other that well. So Laura de Lida Kakamaya is uh, picking up a few time penalties, but is clear jumping as she comes to the final two. Just got the last to go. And uh, clears the final fence. I think she'll be pretty pleased with that. She's going to be some 30 seconds almost, 29 seconds over the time. So 43.3 is her score, 11.6 time penalties, but she... Uh, has gone out and got the job done for a clear round cross country. Still got plenty to do tomorrow, but I'm sure eyes on qualifying the horse for the Olympics next year. Martha Van Rijl for the Netherlands. And Epo. At the Trikanas at 5A and B. Now, these two fences would be relatively straightforward fences, but actually there are huge ditches underneath, and there's just been a couple of horses that have really been caught out here. Laura. Really clever jump into the water from Sportsfield Freelance. Naturally just steadied herself. Actually, Laura, it looks like she's taken the longer route there. She went down the right-handed side, which just means she's going to have costed herself a little bit of time, but she's very quickly back on her way. Next away will be Dark Desire GS Emma Brasso. 34.0, this combination scored coming forwards in the dressage. Emma gets her round underway. It's back with Martha Van Riel. And again, another to make this first water look really straightforward. We said a little bit earlier on, it was definitely a fence that caused a good bit of discussion among the riders, but actually that corner has come up really nicely on the exit. So in terms of the uh, Dutch national championships, the leader at the moment, 37.9. That is uh, Meryl Blom-Holzman, Vesuva de Viron. 3.2 penalties in hand. Could actually afford to have all 3.2 time penalties as well. Eight seconds in hand for Marta. If she wants to go to the top of that Dutch national title leaderboard. As Laura Collett and Sportsfield Freelance coming towards home. Just the last to go. And uh, the Mayor's first four-star long format. They've only had a couple of runs together. And I think they'll be uh, pretty pleased with that. 41.4 is the uh, total score. And uh, that will see them. You see Aoife there, just the blonde hair, just jogging to catch up to uh, Laura I'm sure uh, it's very very difficult for her watching on as her horses go and do so well but a huge huge credit to her training program and how well she's produced these horses that uh, they're able to go on and be uh, on by admittedly one of the best jockeys in the world but go and have so much success Emma Brussel Dark Desire GS through that uh, combination at five. As uh, Morgan Yeriat. Look at that Dargon. Really clever footwork from the horse coming into that water. And again, rather slithered over the uh, second of those skinnies. But actually, you need a horse that's clever on their feet because you want them to be able to react accordingly. So how are things shaping up at the moment? Well, Diablo Mont, Nicolas Tuzon in the top spot, 25.4. Ducati Darville, Lara de Lida Kakamaya in second, 
26.6. TS Politans and uh, Felix Etzel third, 28.4. Then you've got Brass Counter Felix Vog rounding out the top five. Taking the uh, bigger part of the brush there. We've had a couple of flag reviews for uh, missing the flag the other side. We haven't had one for jumping the bigger part of it. The flag did go with her. I would say she's probably okay. We'll update you if anything appears on the live scores, but I'm a Brasso. Very easily done through the sunken road. Thoroughly enjoying their spin round the uh, Dutch countryside. Marta van Riel and uh, Epo having plenty of uh, vocal encouragement as next away. It is Rachel Rendell and uh, Bally Valley Bay. Rachel, who rides for the Netherlands, she based over in Ireland. Really easily clear of those trichanas. As uh, Epo very quickly coming to water. Just must be careful not to be too quick here. But actually, the horse was very clever. And she sounds like she is thoroughly enjoying her spin cross country. Looking for her first finishing score at, at the four star long level. We'll be ruining that uh, frustrating 20 penalties at the first of those trichanas at five. They didn't have their foot down for the rest of the round, so plenty of time penalties as well. But otherwise, a very good round from this duo. home safely that's Izzy Taylor's SBH Big Wall just relaxing after his cross country round so Marta just choosing to take the longer option here playing it safe and then she can kick on towards the final half a dozen offences or so she's got eight seconds in hand remember to go ahead of Meryl Blomholtzman in the Dutch National Championship as next away it is Ben Massey, Esprit de Boussac, come forward on 34.8 for uh, France. Esprit de Boussac owned by Anne Philippe alongside Ben himself. Just some six horses or so still to leave the star box as we head towards the end of what has been a bumper day of cross country here in Buccalow. Emma Brasso, Dark Desire GS, the open corners. Does a good job through there. Just getting news actually in that Rachel Rendell and uh, Bally Valley Bay have parted company at Fence 6. That is the barrow in the barn. Uh, first, uh, fence, first time that fence has caused any problems today. Don't have any more news on that. But Ben Massey is underway. So I uh, don't believe we've got a hold on course as Marta van Ryl heads on towards home. Ben Massey jumps the bar in front of one of the many bars here in Buccalo. So Marta just comes to the final couple of fences. Combination looking for their first completion at the four star long level. She's going to pick up plenty of time penalties, but what an enjoyable round this young lady has had. Jumps the final fence, and she comes through the finish flags. Clear jumping, just a good handful of time penalties, some 54 seconds over the time, so 21.6 time penalties to add. 
but otherwise a very, very good round from that combination. Emma Brasso. And Dark Desire GS. Emma, who has... Oh, unfortunately, gone the same way as a couple of her teammates today. Parting company going into the water. You can see her air jacket has gone off. We're going to take another look at this. Well, she just doesn't quite put the landing gear out. Doesn't maybe read the drop. And unfortunately, a uh, early bath for Emma Brasso, who's very quickly on her feet. The horse looks to be okay as well. They'll both be checked out by... Uh, the medics and by a vet and I'm sure we'll see them back here at Bukalo in the future but unfortunately not their day they get a round of applause uh, and interestingly that fence just if you were wondering the uh, fence judges have been raking it very very regularly in between competitors on the landing and actually Adrian Ditcham the course designer has been down taking a look as well uh, just to make sure everything is okay and they're happy that the ground underneath the water is holding up very, very well. So, Ben Massey and uh, Esprit de Boussac goes very well clear of the Sunken Road for France. Riding as an individual, 34.8 their score coming forwards. away from the start goes our latest starter Buta de Clean and Quintana 32.4 this combination bring forward for Belgium 32.4 actually saw them after dressage in 39th place the 32.4 if they stay on that score now would see them go into equal 13th so that is how things have changed on the cross country owned by Bart Germany. 11-year-old by Quintenda. As we have just uh, five combinations left to leave the start box. We do hope you've enjoyed what has been a brilliant uh, day of cross-country action here in Bukalo. We've still got a, a couple of... Uh, scores to come in that could well feature inside the top 20 so still some to keep an eye out in terms of uh, making some movement on the leaderboard and it certainly is going to be an unbelievably tight leaderboard going into tomorrow's show jumping round it takes place in the main arena the all-weather main arena that the dressage took place in over the last couple of days and also a couple of cross-country fences in there on the way home right at the end of the course here today Next to go from the start, it is Jona uh, Bolk and Svorovsky get their round underway. Jona comes forward for the Netherlands on 41.7. Very stylishly through the first water through to Declean Quintana as that Ben Massey Esprit de Boussac with that open corners at 17 A and B gets the line through there that's just uh, past the six minute mark of those open corners
Jana Volk and Swarovski. Very keen at the early part of their rounds. The last of our Dutch riders to come forward. We've still got two for France, one for the United States and one for Germany. Jana steps up to her first uh, four-star long format. So we wish her the very best of luck. Actually spent some time over in England this summer. It's ben Massey, careful. Jump down into the water. Esprit de Boussac makes light work of those skinny elements as well. Next away from the start, Camille Lejeune. Good size, De Quatrechin. 31.8, their starting score for France. So definitely two French riders uh, that could really make their mark in the top 20. Camille Lejeune, one of them. Sebastien Cavaille, still to come another. Good size, De Quatrechin. 11 years of age, owned by Catherine de Foy. Very calm and relaxed. Just waiting down at the start. That's Ben Massey. Esprit de Boussac goes through the water in the hedge line there. It's an interesting fence, that, because the water isn't actually an obstacle. It's, it's more of um, a passageway as such. Uh, it's not a numbered fence. You've just got to go through it to get between your fences. Camille Lejeune, good size, de Quatrechin, is uh, underway. Easily clear of the first couple as we go back to Jana Bolk. Swarovski on that score of 41.7. No problems at the sunken road, which comes up at fence 10 A, B, and C, just at about three and a half minute mark of that. Ben Massey. Esprit de Boussac is uh, very nearly home. Going to be just a couple of seconds over the time for the Frenchman. But he comes through the finish, stops the clock, three seconds over, goes on to a score of 36.0. And that will see him just outside the top 20. But has been a good cross-country round from Ben Massey. Esprit de Boussac just four seconds over the time. So, Camille Lejeune, good size, the Quatre Chat. Again, another one, a very good starting score, 31.8. So, a fast clear here inside the time would see him go into 12th. Oh, oh, sit tight, Yona Bulk. And unfortunately, Yona, not uh, the easiest of jumps over that ditch and brush. Carefully dropping down into the water. And safely through. That is uh, Vuta de Clean and Quintana. And you see, just see Yona Bolk has pulled up out on course, just feeling something not right with uh, the horse. So just getting off the track, but actually going to dismount. And uh, the horse will get, of course, all of the appropriate veterinary attention. And we do wish them the very, very best. Peter Dickley. Jumps clear through the combination. At the belt bank. It's caught plenty out the belt bank today. Will have gone off a few people's Christmas cards list because um, the likes of Janelle Price, Yaz Binningham, both running into issues there. So, 
away from the start for the United States of America. It is Cosby Green, Jos Uso de Kadam. 35.6, the score that they bring forwards. As Camille Lejeune. Good size, de Cotrochin. At the sunken road. Really easily done through that. Just two more combinations left to go under starters' orders. Sebastian Cavallon for France and Asima for Germany. Uh, so Vuta de Clean heads towards home. Just the last to go for him. Quintera comes to the last. Pops it very nicely and safely on through those finish flags. So they are home with no jumping penalties that we're aware of. And we'll just have a few time penalties. 42.4 their total to take forward to the jumping tomorrow. And here is Cosby Green. Yosufo de Kadam Cosby, who's been based with Tim and Janelle Price at Cheddington Equestrian down in Dorset for the last couple of months. Made the trip over from her home in the US to spend some time training with arguably two of the best event riders in the world. Next to come forward, this will be Sebastian Cavallo and Lipso de la Vigne on that very good starting score of 30.6. Could uh, well challenge for a top 10 placing here going into tomorrow's show jumping because could slot into ninth with a fast clip. Still a good bit to do and a good bit of jumping to do as well as Cosby Green. Zufo to Kadam. Very confidently through the first water. I'm sure we'll have picked up some words of advice from both Tim and Janelle who've uh, been out on course a little bit earlier on today. Just see her trying to adjust something on her boot perhaps. It's just outside the uh, top 10, Blair Castle in the long format four star there at the end of August. Jump clear across country. Back to Camille Lejeune. Good size de Quatrechin on that uh, very good uh, starting score of 31.8. There is Sebastian Cavallon. Looking very cool down at the start of cross country. Wilbury Wonder Pony strapped to his back for the ride. Wilbury Wonder Pony worn in memory of the wonderful Hannah Francis who very sadly lost her battle with osteosarcoma back in, I think it was 2016. But since then, the charity has raised well over two million pounds helping to grant Wilbury's wishes, help support people and their families. being supported out on course. Wishing her all the very, very, very best. Swarovski will be uh, well looked after. Uh, so. Sebastian Cavallo on that very good starting score of 30.6. Next to get underway. Be waiting for starters' orders. Sun shining here in Bukalo. Actually, right over to the west of the Netherlands. Not 
far from the border with Germany, about 100 miles west of Amsterdam, the capital. So we understand Camille Lejeune, good size de Contrechamp, picking up 20 penalties at the water. We haven't seen that. Looks to be the B element, but that will take them out of a placing position. Sebastian Cavallon gets his round underway. Ellipso de Levine, remember, on that very good score for France of 30.6. Owned by Syndicate Ellipso Paris 2024. real buzz, a real chatter in the air here in Buccalo. I'm sure you can even feel it at home. Ah, so this is Sebastian Caval. And that is where he ran into problems. So they were the 20 penalties he picked up. making sure he's got plenty of time to come back round to represent. He does a good job in making that happen. So we can now get back on track for the direct route here, which he gets very easily. Take another look at that hesitant coming in but actually lands quite well was probably on a little bit of a tricky distance and almost needed to sit and push um, for the stride to come up whereas just didn't happen unfortunately but they live uh, to continue on no problem at all then able to uh, continue having just had the one refusal it is three, clu three cumulative refusals even at this level of competition out on course that results in elimination. So he'll just pick up the 20 penalties there. Slightly uncomfortable jump at the first of the Trucanus for uh, Sebastian Cavall, Ellipso de Levine. As uh, Camille good size dick for Trachin just has the last to go just a shame picked up those 20 penalties at the water but otherwise a really good round from this uh, Frenchman Cosby Green Josufo de Kadam is also enjoying a very good round she is uh, safely through that uh, second water as here is uh, Anasima and FRH Bucks Avondale next to come forward for Germany the last to go of the day Cosby. Actually, again, found the two strides between those final two elements almost quite tight. Really made up the distance there. That was a few moments ago. We catch up with them in the main arena. no problems at all there. So Cosby Green enjoying a very, very successful first visit to Buccalo. She just has a couple of fences left to go as our last of the day. Anna Seema is away for Germany. FRH Bucks Avondale comes forward on a score of 34.0. Combination that represented Germany in the European Championships in Avonche. Finished top 20 there. Actually have won at this level previously at the full star short level, I should say, on a couple of occasions. And had some good placings. At a couple of top 20 finishes at the Moulin, the Europeans in 2019. And also Sopot as Cosby Green and Jos Ufo de Kadam is home safely and I think stopping the clock two seconds inside the time as well so 
really good from the young American and she'll go forward to tomorrow on 35 point six so just two combinations out on course to conclude uh, today's coverage of the uh, FEI Venting Nations Cup series finale here in Bukalo just situated the outskirts of the town of Enschkede uh, lovely to see representatives of the local hunt chatting to members of the public all being uh, beautifully behaved the horses that is I'm sure the members of the public have all been beautifully behaved here in Bukalo as well enjoying everything that is on offer we've had such a fantastic few days of competition so far and of course we've got so much more to come for you tomorrow because uh, attention will turn to the uh, show jumping phase as we look to see who will be uh, on top of the podium in the individual competition the nation's cup and of course the dutch national championship class as well sebastian Cavall, ellipso de la Ville quickly putting the sunken road behind them Anna Seema FRH Butts Avondale great to see them back uh, at the top level completed Kentucky a couple of years ago So the open corners caused problems from early on this morning. We've seen a couple of pins. We've seen plenty of runouts. An absolute masterclass from Sebastian Cavall. Elipso de Levine gave them a good foot and a half of clearance each, I'm sure. And popped through them very nicely. So Anna Seema. Looking very comfortable with FRH, but Savendale for Germany. It's the horse owned by Dr. Volker Steinkraus. hard at the middle part of that water but he got away with it and actually did a really really good job in keeping the line for the final few skinny elements as well so Sebastian Cavall remember on that uh, very good score of uh, 30.6 could go into ninth with a fast clear would push Christoph Waller de Cour FRH into 11th, just out the top 10, if he does. That's, uh, really well done, Sebastian Cavall. The French have been very, very impressive here this weekend looking uh, unbelievably strong in the nation's cup but with a, a number of very very strong individual performances as well from the likes of Luc Chateau, Bastia de la Bay who sit inside the top 10 and Massey had two very very good rounds with Esprit de Boussac and Filao de Pearl and of course we're just watching Sebastian Cavallon heading towards home Still plenty of people out enjoying the competition as Anna Seema, FRH Butts Avondale. 16 years of age now this horse. And uh, ears pricked. It's a good girl. And she goes clear of the second of those open corners. 
into the main arena. And Sebastian Caval, Ellipso de la Vigne, comes to the angled houses separately, number 27 and 28, but jumped very much on the direct line between the two for the most part of the day. And he is quickly away from them. 10 minutes and six seconds, the optimum time. We have had 19 combinations go inside the time as things stand at the moment. We're not going to see a 20th in Sebastian because the time penalty is clocking up already. 0.4 for every second or half second over. But this has still been a really, really good round from this combination. Just the last to go. And he sees a flyer for the final fence and is home safely. So 38 point six the total score for Sebastian Caval for France and uh, Ellipso de la Vigne which will see him just drop down the leaderboard a little bit it still has been a very good round from him so one accommodation left out on course at the moment Anasima FRH Bucks Avondale on that score of 34.0 if Anna is clear and inside the time she will go on to a score or she'll go into 18th place on the leaderboard a huge credit must go to all of the teams who work so so hard with these horses day in day out but particularly the end of cross country, always one of my favorite places to go and watch at a horse trials. Because the amount of, of love and teamwork and care and attention that goes in is just extraordinary. Anna Seema, FRH Bucks Avondale. Oh, and they've just had a problem. Did not see that coming. Ran into difficulty at a fence that has caught plenty of people out today. The final water. But that is really frustrating for Anna Seema and FRH Butts Avondale. And uh, jumps clear on the second attempt. Let's take another look at it. So jumps in nicely. And actually wasn't there on the perfect distance. But almost... didn't quite understand the question was to be jumped who knows really frustrating late problem for Anna Zima and FRH but Savendale it's interesting the the water actually if you have had a good jump in some have just sat quite quietly for the skinny because actually the water jump in has been a really influential part of the, the course and almost sat a little bit too quietly perhaps and then have been caught out later on in the combination. It's been a really, really interesting one today. But Anna Seema and FRH Butts Avondale still finishing full of running. It's a wonderful partnership who know each other so, so well. I'm sure they will have thoroughly enjoyed their spin around the countryside today. And she would have been inside the time as well, it should be said, because uh, just a handful of seconds over with those 20 penalties. So that brings an absolutely marathon day of cross-country coverage here in Bukalo to a close. If you've been with us from the very start this morning, then uh, thank you. Huge well done for making it through the whole day. We hope you've enjoyed all of the coverage. But whether you've dipped in and out or whether you want to watch any of it back on demand, you certainly can do so. So enjoy. It has been full of thrills and spills and the Bookalow crowd have thoroughly enjoyed it. This is how the individual leaderboard is looking at the end of uh, the cross-country phase. Nicolas Toussaint for France, Diablo Month, 25.4. Lara de Lida Kirkemeyer, Ducati Darville, 26.6. Felix Etzel moving up from 10th to 3rd with TSF Politans on 28.4. Ros Cantor and uh, Felix Fogg were out the top five. Selena Milne's Cooley Snapchat, brilliant from her to stay sub 30 on 29.9 and move up to 6th. Another for Lara de Lida Kirkemeyer inside the top 10. And Ros Cantor also with two inside 
the top 12. Cosby Green, Yosufo Dukadam, the young American making a really impressive uh, clear round inside the time here, sitting inside the top 20. Uh, Meryl Blom Holzman, Vasoiv de Viron, 37.9. They lead the Dutch national championships as well. So look out for that as that comes to a conclusion tomorrow. Uh, Laura Collett, De Capo, 41.9. They have got 15 penalties on their card. That could be reviewed. They could go into second. Do check the official scoreboards later today to see if anything changes. It would affect the Nations Cup standings as well. And we'll remind you of the Nations Cup standings too because that was a seriously close competition this morning and is actually France who lead the way. 97.8 ahead of Belgium, 113.0. Great Britain on 122.2. Uh, the United States in fourth, 122.6. New Zealand in fifth, 128.5. And then Ireland actually pretty close behind, as are the Netherlands. So look out there because actually there could be a bit of movement if anything does change with the reviews. I think there's one for the Netherlands under review as well. So look, there could be a couple of changes check the official scoreboards uh, we can only give you the information that is available for now but we hope you have enjoyed an absolutely scintillating day of cross-country action here in Bukalo the most enormous thank you for tuning in and we do hope that you'll be back tomorrow to join us for the final show jumping phase who will be stood on top of that podium will Nicolas Tuzon be the first French winner in nearly 10 years. Thomas Carlyle won it back in 2014. Nicolas Tuzon bidding to do so in 2023. Come and join us. We'll be back tomorrow, but thank you very much for tuning in today. <laughs>